I wish that I didn't choose to spend my ever so fleeting time on this earth endlessly marathoning TV shows. Now really, this is one I've been excited about for a long time. The Fairly Odd Parents. Definitely my most beloved childhood cartoon. I don't know what it was, but there was just something about this show that always amused me whenever I was little. Your average kid Timmy Turner having such a mundane and crappy life with his parents neglecting him, leaving him in the arms of his evil babysitter Vicky. So much so that he's granted a pair of fairy godparents. Cosmo and Wanda, who are here to make his everyday more exciting and fun by granting whatever wish he so desires. You know, as long as they abide by the rules. The show was a smash hit, airing on Nickelodeon all the way from 2001 until 2017, making it the first time in this series that I'm actually covering a show that ends. Perfect, this video won't immediately become outdated. What do you mean there's a reboot? The Fairly Odd Parents 182 episodes vastly vary in quality due to a plethora of factors, such as staff constantly coming in and out the show getting cancelled and brought back multiple times during its run, with the last few seasons becoming infamous for just how badly that bastardized the IP, introducing questionable characters left and right. Now, despite being such a massive part of my childhood, I haven't really seen much of anything in the show past season 7 or 8. At a certain point, I'd watch new episodes and just feel kinda embarrassed about ever liking it. So let's see just how much my mindset changes today, as we review and rank every single episode of The Fairly Odd Parents. Starting from all the way back at the beginning. Wait, what is this? Yeah, I figured we'd throw in the Oh Yeah cartoon shorts as well, commonly known as Season Zero. Did you know that Powermind Plus randomly inserts some of these episodes into Season 7 on their listings? It's so bizarre, I can't imagine being a little kid and just going through the episodes one by one, going from the slick HD stuff back to this Hanna-Barbera looking ass shit. Even worse, they all start with this random commercial segment that aired on Nickelodeon. Cool for preservation and all, but it looks like a fucking Flash cartoon. Why aren't these on some, some extras menu? This would have blown my mind as a kid though actually getting to see the origin of how Timmy met Vicky, and subsequently got his titular Fairly Odd Parents. And thankfully, it still holds up very well with a lot of funny moments. When will my parents get back from the movies? Titanic? Director's cut! I love how Cosmo and Wanda interact, they're so obsessed with each other, and Timmy, interestingly, has a different voice at this point. Yeah, if you watched my South Park ranking, you'd remember I talked about Miri Kat Bergman, who sadly took her own life in 1999, resulting in them having to replace the voice actors for all the characters she played. Well, coincidentally, she was also beginning a role as Timmy Turner around that time, and so a lot of these shorts feature her voicing the character over Tara Strong, who eventually replaced her. Interestingly, they actually redubbed every single one of these with Tara over Mary. People are gonna get so annoyed over my Irish pronunciation of those names. Maybe this was done for making sure his voice stayed consistent throughout the whole run, but honestly, I think in a lot of cases, Miri has the better delivery. What do you think, Timmy? I think I'm calling the cops. It's really sad. One of the reasons for her taking her own life was out of fear and anxiety that she would start losing her talent, ending her career. But despite that, she could have gone on to voice the main character of what would become the second biggest kids cartoon ever. I also recently found out she was the voice of Daphne in Scooby-Doo Zombie Island along with those other VHS movies. Which is another big coincidence, as she was of course replaced with Greg Delisle, who still voices Daphne to this day, and also plays Vicky in The Fairly Odd Parents. This got depressing real quick. Cosmo's voice is also super deep and manly here. I like how he signs as the shorts go on, him finding the perfect balance between this sort of tone mixed with something higher pitched. But the Phil Hartman impression is a perfect fit for his character here, not so much as the series goes on though, as will unfortunately see. But even still, this is an incredibly strong start to the series. I can see why they gotta make 10 of these. Too Many Timmies does a pretty obvious idea I'm shocked the show never did as far as I'm aware, with Timmy making clones of himself to do all of Vicky's chores for him, causing her to go crazy. It's not as good as the last, but that might just be because the last one does so much work to establish everything, so it feels like so much more is packed in, along with it being a literal origin which gives it much more impact. But still, this one is also very charming, love the art style of this early season. Timmy looks a lot more like a little shithead here. I actually own a cell from this episode that I have framed on my wall too. So that's neat. Surprised it's only taken three episodes for us to leave Timmy's house, going to a location which I'm pretty sure we never see anywhere in the whole show, that being Vicky's high school. Still though, despite the new setting, we're still doing the same formula. Some rule comes in the way that prevents the trio from reaching whatever goal they have. In this case, it's that Vicky accidentally takes Wanda's wand with her to a costume party, so they've gotta try and get it back. 
I want to take a moment to once again reiterate that I love the way Cosmo and Wanda are written here, with both of them being a couple of hopeless idiots. They both have extremely similar personalities, which makes them bounce off each other in a way that's just really fun to watch, even if not particularly funny. It's a side we never really get to see in the mean show, which sucks because it works so well here. This is definitely my favorite so far, going at the top. Timmy's parents are going out, right, and Vicky is once again his babysitter. Oh wait, no, never mind, I didn't think they'd switch up the gimmick this fast. This time Vicky comes over, only to see that Timmy's parents are trusting him to take care of himself, and so she tries to catch him out in front of his mom and dad so they'll rely on her forever. I like that Butch just drew himself and his wife as Timmy's parents, really showing how much he loves himself from an early stage. This is a great one, I like it a lot. Really funny, too. What's the meaning of this, young lady? But! 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 Yes, that's my tush. Now explain. I'm surprised to see they actually incorporated Tootie into the series this early on, being Vicky's little annoying sister who has a massive crush on Timmy, although her design fucking sucks here, it's super generic. Cosmo and Wanda join him for a birthday party, but with Cosmo having the fairy flu, he keeps causing accidental random wishes. I like this one too, but it's super short, which results in it not really getting to fully realize this concept. Again, makes me so surprised they never tried to revisit this in the full series. But all the wishes are nice and creative, all of these have been super solid so far for being so early in the show. I'm not noticing that it's really strange how they only sometimes have animated title cards. Wish they kept that for the full series, but oh well. Oh yeah, this one kind of sucks. It introduces us another main character, Jorgen von Strangle, who Cosmo and Wanda have to return to in order to renew their fairy license. It's so weird seeing them actually use him for army stuff like his design implies, whereas the main show just uses him as some kind of leader for fairy worlds. Until that don't, we'll get there. Uh, well, uh, where are your wings? Too girly. Jetpack. <laughs> That's a funny idea, why didn't they keep that? He gets a new godparent to temp in the meantime, it's revealed it's actually an elf. Big laughs, haha, <laughs> whatever. Tell others about me! Don't forget what you saw here today! Tell my story! Tell my story! Slavery! Cosmo and Wanda are nominated for a Zappy Award in Fairy World, up against Jorgen von Strangel who forces the judge to give him all the awards. This one's okay. I like the ending a lot where Timmy explains how much he loves Cosmo and Wanda for being his best friends. It does a good job at showing us how unique their relationship is against all the other fairies in Fairy World. My favorite thing about these early episodes are the way they all bounce off each other, it's so charming. I'm also just not realizing that uh, this is a full video where I'm gonna get endless comments about the way I say fairy. Ending has a nice reveal of the Tooth Fairy too, who's in a relationship with Jorgen. I can give Butch a lot of shit, but he had a lot of this figured out so soon. Really admiral how much involvement he had in a bunch of these. Although, I'm sure he does give himself a lot more credit than he may deserve. From what I've been told from writers on the show, if he even contributed one line, then automatically it became written by Butch Hartman. But who knows, either way, another solid one. I never cared much for Scout episodes of cartoons. I didn't even know if there were Scouts in Ireland or not until I looked it up just 30 seconds ago. They do. Why, I remember when I was a Squirrely Scout. I could stuff 40 nuts in my cheeks. Here we see Timmy with his dad at the Squirrely Scouts trying to complete his badge collection. Meanwhile, Vicky is across the forest counseling the girls' camp, with her deciding to screw with Timmy. It's interesting how much they use Vicky in the early ones, but the new setting allows it to stand out a bunch. And you can really feel them defining Vicky's character around this point. She's pretty one-to-one -one with how she'd end up in the full show. For being a Scout episode, I didn't really mind this one at all. It's solid. I like the gorilla's design at the end. So this is something exclusive to the shorts. Apparently, it's part of the rules that every few thousand years a fairy gets to be evil for a day. Weird rule, but okay. This time it's Cosmo's turn. And so Timmy and Wanda have to teach him how to be bad with inspiration from... I wish we could meet the baddest dude in history and have him give you lessons. Ooh, he is bad. I could make a very easy joke right now. It turns into him becoming a Mongolian of all things, and overall, it's pretty good. Probably around the middle tier of the season. If there's one thing we're gonna learn together over the course of this video, it's that Butch Hartman loves comic books and drawing buff guys, and this one is fucking full of it. I like the cameo of the Frederator robot too. I wonder if this is a reference to it, or if this is what inspired the Frederator robot. Who knows? Google probably. Awesome! Congratulations!
congratulations! You now have the power to talk to- There it is! It's Garfeldi! I know what that is! I recognize internet memes! Overall, Season Zero of the Fairly Odd Parts is incredibly impressive for being worked on by such a small team. Butch Hartman likes to take credit claiming that this was mostly a one-man job, but I highly doubt it. You can really feel the show start to come into form over the course of these ten episodes. If those last few were a part of the Mean series, I don't think anyone would bet an eye. Even still, I'm looking forward to seeing the progression from shorts to 11-minute episodes. Could the series stand out and become successful on its own? I mean, just what do you think? Look at the video length. But first... You ever been looking to find a way to break your bad habits? Then may I recommend Fume? This video is sponsored by Fume. Fume looks at the problem a different way, providing you with an innovative, award-nominated device that replaces that habit with this. With an adjustable airflow dial, it allows you to de-stress from this anxiety. I'm telling you, they sent me this like two weeks ago and I've been using it daily. It works just as well as something for your hands to just fidget with, I love it. When you twist it, it makes this little clicking noise, perfect. They come with all these great flavors. I like the raspberry lemonade a lot, but they're all good. With over 100,000 customers and thousands of success stories, there's no reason one of them can't be you. So head to tryfume.com slash lsmark, or scan the QR code and use lsmark to get 10% off when you get the journey pack. And thanks, Fume, for sponsoring this video. Okay, here we go for real this time. The real episode one. It's good. Honestly, not much has been changed after the shift from short to series, other than the extra minutes of runtime and the thicker outline. Less Hanna-Barbera and more UPA. Although you can see them starting to lean more into that by the end of the Oh Yeah cartoon shorts. We also see Timmy's parents' faces for the first time, with them being presented as much more blissfully unaware and ignorant towards their kid. Guess they realized they didn't want to commit to keeping up the faceless thing for a full show. For the better, honestly. I love Mr. Turner's dumb smile. I like the plot here too. Very good idea for a first episode. I wish a lot of kids would make. Simply just being older. Only for Timmy to realize the band older fucking sucks and he's just enjoy being a kid a bit more. It always fucking terrified me how dark the world is presented here. When I'm big, I'm gonna do what I want, what I want. I'm telling you, he really likes Buff Man. Well, how do I look? Yeah. I have vivid memories watching this episode while doing homework at my grandmother's house after school, so I'm pretty nostalgic towards this one. But even on its own, I think it's pretty iconic. Great episode to start on. This episode was so fucking cool to me as a kid, I always loved when cartoons would have episodes about characters going inside video games. This looks like shit, but it blew my seven-year-old mind. Timmy wishes for a tough video game that will challenge even the most hardcore of gamers. And after realizing his best friends Edgy and Chester have snuck in, he's gotta go in after them. As if they die in the game, they die in real life. Besides, I have three lives. Love the visuals of this one, it looks great. And I really enjoy all Cosmo and Wanda's shenanigans too. Already better than the last. I respect our differences and your right to say it in the way you want. Eh, uh, Babalu? That too. <laughs> You know what? Never cared all that much for the Alien episodes of this show. Like, Mark Chang must have been a fan-favorite character given how much they continue using him in the future, but me personally, never loved him or anything. Timmy wishes for an Alien prop to reenact the Crash Nebula show with his friends, but Cosmo and Wanda just wind up barring one, angering his home planet and causing them to plan on blowing up the Earth. They already start stretching the rules pretty thin here, with them being unable to wish Mark back home because he's... uh... Falling in love with Vicky, whoa-oh, can't do that. Killer crash suit, dude! Yes! Wherever did you get it? Internet? Definitely not bad or anything, but certainly the weakest of the batch so far. I can see other people liking it more, though. I can't believe it took them four whole episodes to introduce Timmy's insane teacher, Mr. Crocker, who's obsessed with proving fairies are real. You're gonna see they fucking love using him later on, even to the point of introducing a me and kid version of him, just as an excuse to put him in every scene of the show. Timmy has to train Cosmo and Wanda into being his parents, in order to trick Crocker into not finding out they're fairies. I'm noticing now how quickly they're starting to make Cosmo the butt of the jokes. He shared just as many dumb moments as Wanda back then, but they're definitely gravitating more towards it being exclusively him now. Not a bad thing or anything, he's actually pretty funny here, has a lot of the best moments. It's just hard to see because, you know, I know what's to come.
A Wish Too Far is one of the best episodes of the entire series in my opinion. At least from what I remember, again, I haven't seen it all. But I think by far, it is the quintessential episode of the series. It takes the concept of the show, applies it to a super generic and common wish, and explores it well enough in the time they have to add on a nice lesson that while sure, isn't the most unique for a kid's show to explore, is important to learn. Here we're introduced to Timmy's main love interest, Trixie Tang, who's popular and wants nothing to do with him, resulting in Timmy wishing for all this cool, expensive stuff to win her and her friends over, while at the same time neglecting the friends he made by just being himself. I love how they tie this back to Cosmo and Wanda too. I really like how they're presented as mentor figures for him, trying to teach him how to be a good person. It's something the series sort of forgets about at times, but it's at its best here. Seeing Timmy turn into such a little selfish prick that he's at threat of losing them all together, and having to admit how much of a dick he's been to the people who truly care about him. And because he's able to do that, Trixie now respects him. Something they never really do anything with, but oh well, things haven't gotten that flanderized yet, so I want to just enjoy this while it lasts. But I want friends who like me for who I am, not what I have. I'm sorry I didn't figure that out earlier. The art for this one always stood out to me too. Personally, I think season one is when the series animation is at its best, which isn't a good sign, I know. I like how they're willing to break some of the rules here. You know, you'll see characters making faces that you couldn't imagine them doing now. Like when they give Trixie these lines on her face to make her expression stronger. The score is great too, I haven't talked about it yet. But they used to know when to let these more sad and somber moments play out completely straight without some wacky ass music in the background. With all that in mind, I wish Too Far is without a doubt my favorite episode so far, and I highly expect it to be near the top of the whole ranking by the end. But, I don't know, the plot kinda just makes no sense when you think about it though. Like if Timmy really wanted to look cool, then he should've just headed over to sharkrobot.com slash lsmark to get some of my brand new merch. That's right, I just launched a new merch store that I plan on updating pretty regularly with fun and cool shirts and other neat stuff. Really wanted to try my hardest to make sure it didn't just look like YouTuber merch, and so the small selection I have right now I think is pretty fun. My favorite is obviously the Brian Lookout shirt, I've been wanting to make that for years. I have a bunch of other way more ambitious ideas for merchandise, like we want to do this ranking one that references all the videos I've done so far with the timestamps of each on the arms, and I want to do a cool Hawaiian shirt based off the geometric shapes from my banner, but those will only happen if these first few do well. So be sure to check them out over on Shark Robot and at me on Twitter if you end up buying some, I'll retweet it. With these ranking videos taking so long to produce and me not having a Patreon or anything, this is the best way to support the channel. Thanks! Cosmo and Wanda give Timmy a shrinking suit that allows him to get up close and personal with all the bacteria for his school report. It's alright. I feel like these sort of plots where people get shrunk down and go inside a person's body has been done a million times without much variety. But the ticking clock element with Timmy having to figure out how to be big again before his parents get home and see all the shit Vicky broke and blamed on him at least adds some tension to it. There are also a lot of other funny moments that bring it up. I like how random they got with some of the jokes like Vicky's body containing Walt Kidney and Voice in the Box. I don't remember there being so many pop culture references in this show. My name's Timmy. I have a short attention span and... Tiny Timmy is going near the bottom of the list, right above Transparents. Oh wait, why is that the name? I love a good race. Well, we think all races are good, man. We don't judge. Okay, I know I give a lot of praise to A Wish Too Far, but actually, I think Father Time might be the absolute best of season one. There is just so much jam-packed here into a measly 11 minutes, with Timmy accidentally breaking one of his dad's old trophies, and so he uses a time scooter to go back in time to the 1970s to stop his dad from winning it in the first place, which unknowingly creates this dystopian future where his dad went and seen him became the world's dick eater. I love how Timmy's dad is drawn here too. We're peaking early, I'm aware, but it really is his best episode with so many iconic moments. This is where I put a trophy. If I had one! I adore everything about this one. The slightly more earthy colors they use for the past, Cosmo and Wanda's 70s designs, and just how fucking crazy his dad gets by the end. It's definitely the funniest episode so far while still managing to end on a sweet moment between the two. One of the rare times Timmy's dad actually feels like... his dad. Also, keep in mind that Timmy wished for heat vision at the start of this one because it for some reason comes back into play five seasons from now. I'm not joking. Cool, we're gonna stay here and find ourselves. Hey, there we are. Let's dance. Damn, this sure we're on a fucking roll here. A partnership is one of my favorites, being our first episode to focus on Cosmo and Wanda and the relationship, with a mix-up on their anniversary, resulting in Cosmo going back to his mother in Fairy World, who now wants to split both of them up. 
It's cool getting a proper look at Fairy World for the first time. They really open up a lot of storytelling possibilities for themselves by allowing them to explore both the real world and where Cosmo and Wanda come from. There's a lot of fun new characters here too who we'll see used way more later on like Mama Cosmo or Cupid. I'm glad they still give us episodes like this despite Cosmo and Wanda's relationship getting a lot less focus ever since the series went from oh yeah cartoon shorts to full series. You can tell this series has a really big heart and I love when they revolve these stories around their relationships. The magic is like a fun little dressing, you know? Like why should any of this magic stuff matter if I didn't care about the characters using it? You haven't heard the last of me! I'll be back! I'll... Why did she say it like that? What happened off screen? A partnership is going near the top, right under a wish too far. And I love your mom! <laughs> but I can wait! Here's one I barely remember. Featuring the first appearance of Timmy's favorite comic book superhero, the Crimson Chin. Voiced by special guest star Jay Leno. After wishing for him to come to the real world, he starts having an existential crisis upon finding out that he's merely fictional. Kind of depressing, honestly. Everything will be just fine in the world of the Crimson Chin. Everything is not fine in the world of the Crimson Chin. Get ready to hear a million of those kind of jokes. While I don't love this one or anything, I really do like how much they commit to the comic book art style. The backgrounds are amazing when Timmy goes inside the book. And again, watching this show as an adult made me realize just how frequently Butch Hartman inserted himself into these things. It's a fun idea, going around the middle of the list. I honestly prefer a couple of the Oh Yeah cartoon shorts to it. Timmy's pissed off about how much attention Vicky gives to her dog that she always brings over. Every single time. He's been in every episode so far, don't question it. And they can go to the bathroom anywhere they want! So can I! I'm just polite! Because of how much attention he gets, Timmy wishes he would swap places with Doidle. But the worst is about to come. Because tomorrow's your special day! The day you get fixed! That's right, the threat here is that if he doesn't switch back fast enough, he's gonna have to experience having his balls cut off. He's so worried that it makes his arms come above his collar, oh no. This one is super tense, I love it. Just a really funny episode all around, I like that the ending reveals that the dog is just a massive prick. And I like Cosmo and Wanda's whole drama about being apart from each other. Although why the fuck did she call him Big Daddy at one point? Here we learn about Dim's Deal's mascot, Chumpy the Beloved Goat. After Timmy feels bad for the thing being locked up all the time, he decides to let it out into the wild, which Vicky then gets blamed and arrested for. They introduce an element here that never ever gets brought up again for the rest of the series, with him making dangerous wishes in his sleep without even knowing it due to guilt. I always thought this one was weird, like sure he did start to revel in being a hero when he wasn't really, but he still did the right thing by letting the goat free. You'd still love me even if I wasn't a hero, right? Bottom of the list, I never really thought this one was all that interesting. A complete 180 here. The Seam Game is a stellar episode. Can't believe it, we're only 12 episodes in and they're already tackling the subject of discrimination. Timmy is made fun of by the town's dentist, voiced by Gilbert Gottfried of all people, for the size of his teeth. And so he wishes that everybody in the world looked the exact same so that everyone could be treated equally. I like how there's no build up to Timmy's logic feeling here, it's immediate. With the dentist and his son still thinking they're better than Timmy, even when everybody is literally the exact same. Timmy? Chet. Timmy? Chet! Now are you Timmy? I like that they show how this is affecting Fairy World too, with none of the fairies being able to find their god kid. Love the implication here too that Timmy, Cosmo, and Wanda are some kind of outliers among Fairy World, wishing for shit that no other kid does and screwing stuff up for everyone. They also introduce a new rule here too, where if a fairy doesn't grant a wish fast enough, they'll have magical backup and explode. It's not important or anything, but I do like how they bring this rule back from time to time. Get ready guys, later on, they get fucking obsessed with adding rule after rule just to create conflict. Either way, I adore this one. The message that what's on the inside is what counts, and that people are gonna be assholes no matter what, is a good lesson for kids, near the top of the list. Also one of the only cases where we see Timmy's mom stick up for her son. Cool! So, I think originally the series was picked up for only a six episode season, each one containing two 11 minute segments. But it was such a big hit that Nickelodeon picked them up for their first 22 minute special to end out the season. A Christmas special. Having this super long animated opening featuring the staff's names going by really reminded me how much overlap there is between Fairly Odd Parents and Family Guy. You can tell why Seth and Butch were such good friends at one point in time. This opens sounding exactly like Road to the North Pole, featuring this orchestral version of the special's main theme. 
Christmas every day sees Timmy, accidentally, wishing it could be Christmas every day, who would have thunk? Which at first seems fine, but obviously has immense ramifications on the world, with society basically collapsing. I don't know, I loved this one as a kid, but when revisiting it, eh. There's a lot I like. The wish makes the most sense to go with, the song is super catchy and funny. Santa Grant's wishes while we relax, and Timmy still can't get a girlfriend. Stop! And I love how Timmy's wish comes from a place of wanting to spend more time with his family rather than just being selfish. But near the end, once the other holiday mascots are introduced and Timmy has to travel to the North Pole to see if Santa, I just kinda stop caring. It's not bad or anything, just kinda loses steam. Still though, a solid end to the season. The ending is a nice culmination of the whole thing in a way. With Timmy's wish being so bad this time that they had to list a new rule after him. <laughs> What a strong start to a series. I guess they kind of had the advantage of the Oh Yeah cartoon shorts being like a mini test run, but it's evident why audiences fell in love with the series so much, becoming arguably the only other Nicktoon past 2000 to rival SpongeBob. I guess until The Lighthouse came out, but I try not to think of that show though. Season 1 of The Fairly Odd Parents, well, sure has a couple blunders here and there, is mostly made up of some of the best, most iconic episodes of the whole series. With this, Nickelodeon picked them up for a second season, consisting of almost double the amount of episodes. So let's see if they continue to improve, or if it was simply lightning in a bottle. Season 2 opens by introducing us to another fan favorite character, the hip teen boy singer Chip Skylark. Voiced by none other than Chris Kirkpatrick from NSYNC, they're really getting some fucking heavy hitters for this show. I really think that Chip had a different design at one point, which is why his poster props look so bizarre. What's so special about Chip Skylark? Open your eyes, son. That team's delicious. <laughs> anyway, season two right off the bat shows us that the quality of the first has not been lost, with it being another great one. Timmy is pissed that everyone is giving Chip attention when it's his birthday, and so he wishes for the worst non-lethal thing to happen to him, which winds up being to be stuck with a Vicky. I really like how Timmy and Chip work off each other, him finding out that Chip isn't just some vain celebrity, and is instead... Just a nice guy all around. Also fun to return to the conflict of not being able to come between love to see if Chip since Vicky is not in love with him. Cool way to have some slight continuity while still doing something new. Icky Vicky is also no shiny teeth but is still a certified banger. So far season 2 is looking to be... more of the same. Which, hey, I'm all down for. <laughs> It's a skateboarding episode, with Timmy having to take Vicky on in a competition to see who gets to control the ramps. It's kinda it. Nothing all that deep going on here, which is fine, you know, it's an entertaining one. It introduces the rule that Cosmo and Wanda can't help Timmy to use magic to win a competition, which is a pretty important one, I'm surprised it took them two seasons to get to it. Having the rules for something as endlessly creative as magic was a really smart idea on the writer's part. It makes it still feel like there's a struggle with the conflicts, and isn't too easy for the characters to get out of any situation. Hex schemes is a word that sums up a majority of fairly odd parents episodes. Okay. Boy Toy brings back Tootie with an all new, much better design in my opinion. I don't know, it's just a lot more unique compared to this shit. This one has a super fun plot too, with Timmy feeling as if he's too old to play with toys, and so wants to spend one last day with his crimson chin action figure. Sure, standing next to a lifeless doll would have been boring, and yet... I did not realize how creepy that joke was until now. Cosmo and Wanda get stolen by Tootie, and so it's up to him and his toy to rescue them. It's great getting to have Jay Leno back as the Crimson Chin so soon, and it being an action figure version of him makes it stand out a bit comedy-wise compared to his last appearance. The ending is good too, with Timmy actually sympathizing for Tootie for having to spend so much time with Vicky when she's not tormenting him. I like it a lot. Boy Toy is probably the second best of the season so far, but nothing yet has really come close to the best of last season. Yeah, this one doesn't change that. Timmy's been wishing for a lot of extra spectacular stuff recently, which causes his parents to suspect him of being the wall to Walmart thief. I love non-copyright infringing brands. This is a cool, action-packed episode with Timmy on the run from the cops and having to prove his innocence, that it was actually Francis doing all these misdeeds. And the side plot with Cosmo and Wanda trying to stall Jorgen for their very exam also adds some nice tension to it, but overall this is probably the weakest of the season so far. Whoa. Uh -oh. 
Okay, I know we're like 30 minutes into the video at this point, but I fell for the same mistake as the Spongebob video, where because each episode is made up of two 11-minute segments, it means that, while well, sure, there's 182 episodes, but I thought that meant 182 11-minute segments. Really, it's actually around closer to 300 segments. Joy. This is a solid episode, thankfully. Directed by my good friend John Fighton, as a matter of fact. He even gave me a couple original boards from this episode, including a deleted scene starring wow. Fat Chester. Check out the podcast we did with him where he talks about making it. Timmy wishes his life was interesting like an action movie, which completely changes the style and tone. It's super impressive how the series was entirely redesigned just for one episode. I appreciate the smaller details like the sheen they put in Timmy's hair and the way more hectic, fast-paced boarding. Twist with Jorgen being the villain is great too. Prepare for your doom! Really likes Buff. Not the funniest episode or anything, but the commitment to the one joke and ability to show how diverse the plots of this series can be has to be commanded. Timmy wishes to gain the knowledge of literally everything after getting outsmarted by Edge all day, but realizes that it makes him an insufferable prick. So you're smart for a day. You think anybody's impressed? Wow, Timmy, I'm impressed! I really enjoy these more down-to-earth school episodes. They're mostly forgotten about by the end, in favor of the wishes becoming more and more outlandish, but it's also nice when they take a more grounded approach, showing Timmy using his magic to eat him in his normal every day, and how it affects the people around him. Smarty Pants won't be anywhere near the top of the list by the end, but it's solid. This one just gets right into it, no title card or anything. Timmy's dad builds a shitty bike for the father-son bike tournament, and so Timmy decides to wish for a super bike instead. To Cosmo and Wanda's utter dismay, as their worst fears come true. The bike is a massive dick. I enjoy this episode a lot. The bike stuff is alright with him wanting to keep Timmy all for himself, becoming more and more insane and clingy, but I mostly like it for the ending, where Timmy learns to appreciate what his dad did for him, even if he didn't do the best job. And that just because he can wish for something doesn't mean he should. You love me enough to make one yourself. That's what makes it cool. Aw, uh, you're just saying that. So? Timmy's dad gets it the worst by the end, I think. He becomes completely brainless. So I always appreciate these nicer moments between them early on. Super bike is going near the top. Super nostalgic for this one. Okay, it makes sense these two are paired together. I remember getting really excited when both of them would come on. Timmy gets pissed about Cosmo and Wanda not being there for him one day, which results in them arguing about who has the tougher life. And so Timmy becomes a godparent, and Cosmo and Wanda become kids. Fairy World? Harry World! Ah! Dairy World? Harry World! Oh darn it! Ah! The concept alone was so cool to me that I forgot about all the other funny stuff about it. Like how Timmy's dad is just randomly building a giant car robot throughout the episode, just because the neighbors had one. A Mile in My Shoes doesn't have the most interesting story or anything, but it shows how these episodes can stand on the concept alone. Like seeing Cosmo and Wanda talk to Vicky, or Timmy being able to grant wishes. Fun stuff. I always forget about Tim Visible. Maybe it's because the concept doesn't go much further than Timmy wants to be invisible. I think you're cute. Mm -hmm. You can't really make jokes like that anymore, can you? A lot of these early 2000s shows have that same problem. So many jokes back then were just weird physical appearance, laugh. It's interesting to see that they've almost been entirely written out of these shows now. Oh yeah, this is a pretty obvious moral episode, where Timmy needs to learn that he can't hide from all his problems. But there are some highlights, like Cosmo and Wanda taking Spanish and Timmy's parents only ever being seen inside of their car. It's alright. Cool! You can see right through me! Uh, you're ten, sweetie. You're not that hard to figure out. <laughs> When do we get to the ride? This is the ride! Yippee! It's Friday the 13th, and here we're introduced to the Anti-Fairies, who come out on that day to spread bad luck around the world. It's cool seeing them try to expand the magic world so early on, but I can see why they would later remove the Friday the 13th rule. Like, why would you introduce a group of antagonists you can only see, like, once or twice a year? Anti-Cosmo and Anti-Wanda are great introductions, too. I can see why they wanted to use them more as they went on, especially because they don't really do much here. This one's going around the middle of the list. I like it a lot. If I don't make it out of here, tell my dad he's weird. <laughs> 
It's one of Chester's only starring episodes, where we find out just how shitty of a life he has, living in a poor trailer park with a dad who can't even show his face in public anymore. These Chesteros are a great part of any winner's complete breakfast! Don't you want to try some Timios? Did you know that for the first few seasons of the show, Chester was voiced by Frankie Muniz for Malcolm in the Middle? Cool, right? Timmy wishes Chester would be the greatest baseball player ever, so he can restore his family name. But Timmy gets jealous because Chester starts to... gloat too hard, I guess. I don't know, I think I'd understand Timmy. It's okay, I don't love it or anything, but it's another one of those... okay episodes. Another tricksy one, with Timmy needing to find out the perfect thing to get her for her birthday, and so against his will, Wanda turns him into a girl so he can think like one. Oh yeah! Well, we know what I think! Who cares what you think? You're a girl now! <laughs> I love this one. It's probably my favorite of the season so far. I think it marks the only time in the entire series where they actually try to give Trixie <gasps> some depth. You're my new best friend. He finds out that Trixie is actually into boy stuff, which results in Timmy needing to destroy gender norms all around the world. Not really, but it's sweet. Him realizing that if people accepted boys can like girl things and girls can like boy things, the world would be a lot simpler. Nice little lesson. And while sure it is annoying that things have to reset by the end, them never ever revisiting this side of Trixie, they at least end by giving Timmy something small but effective, for remembering his name for once. Going at the top of season 2 as of now. It's the return of Mark Chang, space alien from Yugo Batonia, who's still missing Vicky from last time, and so Cosmo tries to get him to come kidnap her and junk. I also forgot this is where they introduced Flappy Bobs and the counselors who work there. They're gonna get a whole special dedicated to them later on, so it's cool they were brought in this early. It's interesting that they don't bother explaining the rules this time. It's a neat bit of continuity that Timmy doesn't need to be told about Mark's love for Vicky preventing him from using magic on them, because he's been told like five other times. Totally Spaced Out is probably about on par with the last Mark Chang episode episode to me. If anything, they kind of blend together, honestly. It's just a little bit better from how they managed to combine the alien stuff with the Floppy Bob stuff by the end. I love this one. It's like a mile in my shoes, where Timmy wishes to swap places with someone. This time, it's for him to be Vicky's babysitter, which turns her into a five-year-old. I just like how simple it is. Timmy slowly realizes that he doesn't want revenge on Vicky because he has empathy. After spending the whole day basically torturing a five-year-old girl. This is one of the best of season two for the concept alone. Really fun getting to see Timmy just be an asshole. And seeing Vicky getting control over Cosmo and Wanda to get back to Timmy is a great place to take it. More superheroes. Oh boy. Timmy gets tired of his parents overworking themselves, and so gives them every superpower known to men. Now they really don't have time for him, because now they have to do super stuff. And so he learns to just let them overwork themselves, I guess. Oh look, it's our first time seeing Dinkelberg, as far as I recall. This is one of the parents' stronger episodes, which is surprising because I remember not liking it as a kid. But it's nice seeing them actually realize that Timmy is a pretty good kid. And they're not yet at the point of being mindless and brain dead, so you can still take them seriously and not want to blow your brains out watching how dumb they are. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, it's alright. I still don't like Renfair episodes. At first, I thought I was just being weird, but no. There really is a surprisingly large amount of episodes of TV shows about the Renfair. Maybe it's just because I've never really been to one, I could care less. Timmy is so pissed about how lame the Renfair is, that he wishes to be in the real Middle Ages, where he's tasked with taking on a dragon to save his parents. Love the art style for the world here. The colors are more simple and earthy, and the lineless backgrounds remind me a lot of something like Sleeping Beauty, such as King Arthur being a scrawny wimp and winding up being the one to save everyone by the end, literally dying and having to be revived by Cosmo and Wanda to do so, but for the most part, it's just fine. Pretty forgettable. I can see! I can fight! Like... Re... Here we're introduced to another one of Timmy's many antagonists, Remy Buxaplenty. They sure love their puns. He's unique compared to a lot of the other characters in the show, mainly because Timmy finds out that he also has a fairy godparent, who just so happens to be Wanda's ex-boyfriend, Wandissimo. The handsome fairy has failed to rescue his godchild! 
but he is still very sexy. Yeah! It used to blow my mind that they were able to say that in a kid's cartoon. It's interesting having them challenge each other to a fairy godparent challenge, where the loser loses theirs forever. But I remember there being better episodes featuring the two as we go on. This one's just decent. Timmy is so desperate to see Crash Nebula, on ice, that he opens up a lemonade stand, using Cosmo's magic to make a beverage that grants its drinker a magic wish. This has obvious ramifications. I always liked them adding the detail that he couldn't simply wish for the tickets, as it would mean stealing them from others who already had them. As a kid, I always thought, who fucking cares, I'll do it anyway. It's weird of them to make this another Vicky episode of all things, with her running a rival stand outside Timmy's house for some reason. But hey, at least we get to see Doug Dimidome for the first time. That's right, Doug Dimidome, owner of the Dim Steel Dimidome. This is another alright episode. I like it more than the last, at least. <laughs> Oh boy, it's your mandatory school presidential election episode. If you've got a show with a school, you gotta have the debate episode. Chad and Ted are yet another pair of characters who only exist to make the same joke over and over again. They're rich. Fairly Odd Parents reminds me a lot of a comic strip in a way, where most of the side characters have one trait or gag that they repeat constantly. It's funny because the character is saying slash doing the thing that their character does. And while sure it doesn't always work out, it's not bad here. They just exist to be an obstacle in Timmy's life, so it works. If anything, I think it helps more in making the world feel so dead set on putting Timmy down. He's the ultimate underdog, his life really does suck. Field of the Chief is fine, not bad, not amazing, I like that Timmy's solution is to try and impeach himself. Timmy's got to do a history report in the Finding Fathers, and so brings them to his treehouse to find out more about them easily. I never cared for this one for obvious reasons. It's neat seeing them bring back the time scooter and acknowledge the events of the previous time travel episode, but like, never grew up in America, don't know much of anything related to these guys, and all they ever do with them is tell the same joke on repeat. He likes wood, he's a writer, he invented electricity. Those are the only jokes. The only other funny aspect is how their version of Timmy fucking up is America never becoming independent, and so everyone now just talks with British accents. The horror. Either way, Twistery is going near the bottom of the list. Nothing special. I can see others enjoying it more, though. Fool's Day Out brings back the April Fool from the Christmas episode, him basically just being an obvious Jerry Seinfeld parody. Also, this episode starts with a little montage of Timmy being fucked with. I only say it because I'm starting to notice the average Fairly Odd Parents plot structure, where we see Timmy facing the same problem in three different ways which leads to his wish. This time it's to prank everyone back who pranked him, so they call on the April Fool, whose pranks get more and more extreme to the point of wanting to blow up the planet. He's going to destroy the Earth! For the funny! This one's alright enough. I feel like season 2 has got into this sort of rut you expect from a lot of episodic shows, where it's just at a point of being a string of fine ones. Not the best, but still not bad. The kind of thing where while watching it on TV as a kid, it's fun, but when viewing them all in a row highlights how forgettable they are. Weird byproduct of every episode of every show ever being at your fingertips now. Okay, great, things have picked up again. This was another one of my favorites as a kid, with Timmy wishing for a watch that allows him to redo life events at the click of a button. It's just a lot of fun. Like him finally winning one over on his parents or having Vicky steal to use for herself, which results in the two of them having an all-out war over who can fuck over the other most. Why won't you redo? I only work for Timmy. Deja Vu is going near the top, especially when compared to the last few. I like it a lot. Especially the ending where they go back to the pilot. <laughs> the fuck did they play that flatline sound effect for? Did Vicky die in hospital? Look in the top right corner, it's Timmy's model from Nicktoons Unite that fucking blows me away. I can't write a good letter! Well, forget the mushy stuff, try a threat! <laughs> It's very easy to see this is dated by today's standards, probably even by when it aired standards. An episode all about Timmy going inside his old ass computer to retrieve a love letter he accidentally emailed to Trixie, filled with all his dated imagery and lingo. But I don't know, call me hypocritical, but I don't mind it here because I grew up with it. And they formed the whole episode around it, so I think it works well. Oh yeah, this is also their second 22 minute special, and I can definitely say that extra time is warranted. I don't think this would have worked nearly as well in half the time. A lot of the best moments here are just random jokes that probably would have been cut if 
if that were the case. Like Timmy finding out Trixie's friend Veronica is creepily obsessed with her and is in love with Timmy. Or all the parents and their iconic line. I'm respecting your privacy by knocking, but asserting my authority as your father by coming in anyway! Information Stupor Highway is a very good episode, despite all the crappy CG. Way better than Christmas every day at least, go near the top of the list. That'll be $7.95! Here, fortune cookie! Ugh. Oh wow, another 22 minute special. This time it's Halloween themed. And unfortunately, it is not anything worth writing home about. It takes too long to get off the grind, with it taking like 10 minutes for Timmy to actually make his wish that everyone in the world would turn into whatever monster their Halloween costume is based off. It's just not all that interesting. Maybe I never liked it because of how that brought in the Yugo Batemians again, which, like, you already had them this season. But the action at the end with Timmy and friends turning into the giant robot jack o' lantern was cool. Look, they colored Cosmo and Wanda wrong. Boy, I sure hope somebody got fired for that blunder. Like I said, I find it just whatever. But. I do get this weird, nostalgic feeling from watching it again. I vaguely remember watching it one Halloween at my grandmother's house, that time of year where it gets dark super early in the day. So I don't know, it's a weird relationship I have with this one. Any of you guys feel similar ways about other episodes? Let me know. And that closes us out on Season 2. It's weird, usually the second season is the best of many shows. It doesn't have that awkwardness of the first, but the characters haven't got obnoxiously oversaturated yet, making this perfect bland. But most of Fairly Odd Parents Season 2 is just... fine. The highs aren't as high, but the lows are still just as low. Although I think that may just be a result of there being so many more episodes here. The first season is so much shorter that the contents of it are more memorable. Still though, it's nothing bad. Every episode had at least something I enjoyed about it. So I'm looking forward to see if season 3 will be an improvement, or yet another string of meh ones. <laughs> season 3 kicks off with Ruled Out, otherwise known as More of the Seam. It's okay to feel sad sometimes. Ah, where'd the violence go? Timmy's pissed off about how uncharacteristically caring his parents are towards him. I love how much they flip-flop on whether or not they actually spend time with him. It's whatever the plot demands. Anyways, he wishes for parents that couldn't care less, which unknowingly includes his godparents too. I like the idea well enough, but I'm not a fan of how easily he's able to undo the wish just by being disrespectful to them and somehow that cancels like the magic. Seems like they really wrote themselves into a corner, but either way, it's not a big deal. I'm not gonna lose sleep over the logic of the Fairly Odd Parents not making sense at all times. This is an alright start to the season. Hope it isn't the best of what they have to offer, though. Okay, perfect. I love this one. It's a classic. Timmy wants his mum to win a gardening contest, and so he wins for everything in the garden to come to life, which accidentally includes Timmy's old pet hamster who he thought ran away at summer camp. 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 What was I supposed to do while Timmy was away at summer camp? Camp. Camp. Alrighty, put up grapes to cancel out the echo. The Dinkelbergs are fun too, this is the first time they're being used as the antagonists. Just simply being the more well-off neighbors to the Turners that Timmy's dad fucking hates. Everything I touch dies! <laughs> oh, Dinkelberg! Aren't you gonna come over and give my wife a congratulatory hand touch? Timmy's relationship with Eddie is great, him being filled with rage and out for revenge, trying to kill Timmy and his family throughout the whole thing. That's Life is one of the funniest episodes of the show, going at the top of season 3 for sure. Aw oh, fuck, here we go. This episode is only remembered for finally giving us a full version of the Shiny Teeth song that they played in the last Chip Skylark episode, and honestly, it rightfully carries it. It is so fucking catchy. It Will Go Down is the quintessential 2000s track that defined a generation. The boarding is amazing too, I love how they go all out in these musical numbers. Chip Skylark has his teeth stolen from the evil dentist Dr. Bender, and so it's up to Timmy to team up with the Tooth Fairy to get them back before his big concert. It really is just one big excuse to build up to that song, but it's got other highlights like his rival skin Sparky Pants just being a fucking shameless palette swap? Or was he a Nick All-Star brawl? Let's get dental! You know, I never really paid attention to it before, but I forgot that Timmy used to have a catchphrase in these episodes. He'd always say, let's get, and then some word that applied to the scenario. I wonder when they're gonna stop doing that, and if I'll ever even notice. Shiny Teeth doesn't have the most substance in the world, but that doesn't change how good it is. One of the best in the series. Did I ever mention that I fucking don't care about Wild West episodes? Probably. The other ranking videos are getting to the point where they take a full 24 hours to watch, so I couldn't be bothered to double check. Either way, 
they're boring. So I figured I'd get the director of this episode to come and talk about making it. Enjoy! Hey everybody, it's uh, your old pal F here, talking about um, an episode of The Fairly Odd Parents that I directed called The Odd Odd West. Um, boy, The Odd Odd West, of all the ones for Mark to pick for me to talk about. Uh, I, I didn't particularly like this episode when I got handed the, the script, but I also didn't really know what to do with it. That's not to say there's not lots of, you know, cool, funny stuff in it. It just wasn't my absolute favorite, and so I didn't change that much of it, unlike, you know, episodes like Action Packed and Smarty Pants, where I changed a lot of stuff. I didn't change that much in this. But um, there was one character who stood out that I really, really disliked, and that was Doug Dimmodome. Uh, I saw his character, and I just thought, oh, here we go. Another just kind of cookie-cutter, um, you know, Texas oil tycoon type. And I was like, how do I make this guy interesting? And in addition to that, I learned uh, really early on that the more you make Butch Hartman laugh during your rough storyboard pitch, the fewer revisions he gives you. So I was like, let's see, how can I make Butch laugh? And how can I make this character interesting? And I was completely uh, bereft of ideas. So the best thing I came up with was uh, making his hat so tall that it always disappeared uh, off the screen. And of course it, it made Butch laugh and we both got a chuckle out of it. And that's one thing I will say for this episode. I remember sitting and going over it with Butch and he and I, you know, coming up with gags and doing funny stuff together. But he, but we, we kept going back to this um, hat gag and Butch was like, you know, John, if we do this, we're gonna have to commit to this. <laughs> throughout the life of the series and I remember saying to him says who we do it when we want and we don't do it when we don't and uh boy he he really uh he kept going back and forth throughout the rest of the pitch one minute he'd be like okay we're doing it and the next minute he'd be like okay we're not okay we are okay we're not and I'm really happy that he that he did wind up uh going for it because I I do think it's one of those funny gags that's just so stupid and it's one of the few gags that I feel like on the series where we didn't like, you know, we just kind of snuck it in there. We didn't, we didn't, uh, you know, we didn't set it up and we didn't, you know, reference it over and over again later. It was just there for people to notice. And uh, it's, it's those kind of occasions where I get to kind of mess with the audience's head that I really, really enjoy. It's a sign of the apocalypse! Everybody, to the bunker! <laughs> okay, I cannot see why they replaced Edge and Chester's voice actors. They're getting way too deep around this time. Similarly to SpongeBob, I find it interesting how early on they rarely use some of the antagonists that they abuse later on. There it was Plankton, and here it's Crocker. He's been in like four episodes as of now. Those eyes, that hair, that figure. Oh my gosh, it's worse than I thought. He's gorgeous. Cosmo has chosen to host the next fairy con, with him having it in Timmy's bathroom on the one deck Crocker is coming to visit. And so Timmy has to make sure he never finds out that he has fairy godparents. This is another solid one. Go near the top of the list. I like how hectic it all gets by the end. I'm only now noticing, though, that season three made an ever so minor change to the art style. Wanda's skin used to be colored a more pinkish tone, but here it's been made way more saturated and darker. It's so minor that I wonder why they ever did it, it was definitely for the worst too, it suited her better before. I also got a button from this one. Cool. Cosmo and Timmy decide to give Wanda the day off, given how much she has to take care of them. Obviously, everything goes awry. With the two unleashing an army of hyper-intelligent cockroaches on the world who plan on causing nuclear war. This one's alright. I think it's the start of Cosmo and Wanda falling into their more one-note personality traits of being incompetent than the nagging smart one. But again, it's alright. The show doesn't even get bad when that happens, just sort of predictable. You know exactly what's gonna happen in this episode just because of the way the two of them act now, but it's still not bad. It's cool seeing one Decimo again. Going around the middle of the list. Here's one I completely forgot about. It's career day, and Timmy is ashamed of how lame his dad's job is, working at a pencil company. And so Timmy wishes for him to have a variety of cooler jobs. Like a race car driver, astronaut, wrestler, and... No wait, just those three. Gee, thanks, I- oh! 
It's fine. We're at the point where most Fairly Odd Parents episodes are simply just trying to be funny, so a lot of these rank on whichever one has the best jokes. So, as is, I like it well enough. The ending is sweet too, which is a plus. Timmy wants to impress Trixie by directing a Demi Award-winning movie, and needs to decide whether or not to use his magic to create an epic blockbuster that'll win her over, or a small shitty film starring his friends. Everybody knows that comedy is the lowest form of entertainment, next to animation. One thing worth noting here is this is one of the rare episodes where the art style looks kinda off. Timmy is super tiny with a giant head and feet. Even as a kid I noticed that. But this is another really good one, thankfully. I like the simple lesson Timmy learns by the end too. That having fun with friends is more important than fame and fortune. This one's going near the top of the list, although that might just be because season 3 has been severely lacking in stellar episodes. Not to be a critic, but your film stunk! What are you, some kind of critic? No. It's another 22 minute special, this time for Valentine's Day. There are a lot of things I like about this one, but overall it comes together in a way that makes me never want to return to it. Timmy is so pissed that Cupid is choosing Tootie to be his Valentine over Trixie, that he tries to fuck over the world by delegating all the men to one half, and all the women to the other. I really enjoy everything up until that point, but after the two sides are separated, the whole thing just becomes doing the same joke over and over again. Men are slobs who like sports, and women are all intelligent and love shopping and cleaning. Boy, it sure is good no gap people exist in a butch Hartman production, or else this plot would make no sense. If those two jokes on repeat for 15 minutes doesn't sound hilarious to you, then you're probably not gonna get much out of this one. Not the worst thing in the world, but honestly, this didn't need to be 22 minutes. I like the song though, even if Tara Strong is destroying her vocal cords by singing it. Timmy is mad about never being anybody's first choice, and so wishes to be the most wanted kid on the planet. Once again, this has obvious ramifications. It's okay, again, it's pretty obvious where it goes. Being wanted by everyone all the time isn't what it's cracked up to be, but I do think it's funny how far they take it, with him being at the top of the FBI's most wanted list and all the other fairies in Fairy World wanting him to be their godchild, and so they have to have a Texas cage match where the winner gets to be his new godparent. I enjoyed this one a lot. Wasn't a fan of it at first, but they went in a fun direction with it. Fucking loves himself. Cosmo's mother is returned, this time teaming up with Billy Crystal Ball for a TV special about Cosmo's life, all in an attempt to make him seem unfit to be a godparent to move back with her. It's cool getting to see more of Cosmo's past, as a kid I always liked seeing his dad for the only time in the series, and with Cosmo consistently getting dumber and dumber over the past few dozen episodes, it's nice having an entire one focus on why he's important in Timmy's life, that even if he's dumber than a brick, he means well and cares about him. Another solid one, go near the top. I thought you said plastic surgery! <laughs> It's our first sequel episode! Jay Leno returns to combine the Crimson Chin shenanigans with the comeback of Mighty Mom and Dino Dad. Wow! An interview with Butch Hartman! I don't care! I'm too busy being amused by nobody on the staff team, figured calling one of your characters the Negachin was a bad idea. This is terrible! The Negachin took your parents' powers away! After accidentally bringing him and all the other comic villains to Earth, Timmy has to turn his parents back into their superhero counterparts to fight against them. It's a neat concept, I guess it's easy to come up with episode ideas when you realize you can just kick two others and slap them together, but as a result it causes this one to not stand out that much compared to the other standalone ones, but as is, it's okay. Seeing all the different variants of the Crimson Chin at the end was cool though. Another one I completely forgot about, probably because it has a pretty uneventful plot, with Timmy's dad going through a midlife crisis and getting a car which he wanted since he was a kid. It's yet another where Timmy gets sad about his dad having no time for him, with Vicky trying to steal the car then because it's worth a bunch of money, which is worrisome because Timmy has wished that he was the car. Bit of a leap. I actually enjoyed this one a lot more than I thought I would. The magic takes a bit of a backseat, no pun intended, and it's nice seeing Timmy's dad do all this for him by the end. We'll probably be going around the middle of the list. This is one I was always excited to have come on as a kid. I don't particularly know why, I guess, I just liked Edge and Chester. With the two of them having a big fight and leaving Timmy stuck in the middle of whose sleepover to go to. It really is just your typical character trying to be in two places at once plot, but it's neat getting to see more about where they both live and what their families are like. With Chester living in a shithole and Edge living in a fancy ass place but with loser parents. I forgot to block the animal violence! It's good enough, we'll probably end up near the middle of the list, maybe a little below.
Timmy's mom is so pissed off that Timmy and his dad care more about the weather than her that she becomes the new weather woman. What? Is this something men are stereotypically known to care about? I feel my gender, I guess. It picks up a little bit when Timmy makes the wish for anything his mother predicts in the weather to come true, which makes her become beloved throughout the town. Only issue is she now predicts the town will be destroyed. This episode is just kind of whatever. One of the lesser ones starring Timmy's parents. But what are we gonna do with all this goop? Yes, it's been chaos in worst place to live, Brightburg. Timmy just intentionally killed thousands of people. Timmy is pissed off about all the late night excitement he misses because of his small boy metabolism, and so he wishes that nobody in the world would ever need to sleep. This has... obvious ramifications. I like the introduction of the Sandman, Timmy having to talk to him about his wish. It is weird though how they never bring him back, but I enjoy the joke that Timmy really does miss all this cool shit that only happens at night for some reason. Really love the colors and atmosphere it has. I guess it just went in a direction that was something more interesting than... people need to sleep. Wonderful. This one's going near the bottom. For every good joke, there's an equal amount that's just... This world without sleep is great! This world without sleep is not great! Do you get it? The opposite happened. <laughs> Timmy decides to run away from home after hearing his parents say something terrible about him. Think how great our lives would be if we didn't have Timmy! Is the exact opposite of how I really feel! It's one of the rare times I actually like how generic they go with it, with Cosmo and Wanda taking him to a crappy rundown carnival. It works since they're trying to teach him a lesson. Of course they'd take him to the most stereotypical shitty place so he'd change his mind. It's super contrived, they make that same Timmy misunderstanding his parent joke like three times, but the carny stuff makes up for it, this one's okay. I will say most of these episodes so far have ranged from mediocre to alright, but I can at the very least say none of them have been bad so far, we're well, thankfully not at that point yet. But it leaves me not having a bunch to say about a lot of them, but that might be for a certain reason I'll be getting into later. Finally, another non-holiday 22-minute special. This time, it's the secret origin of Denzel Crocker. It's March 15th. The damn Mr. Crocker is at his meanest. And so to find out what happened, Timmy decides to go back to different points in the teacher's life to see what happened to cause all this. This reveal blew my fucking mind. Timmy goes back in time to see that Crocker used to have fairy godparents that he lost on March 15th. And not just any, Cosmo and Wanda. Holy fuck! Harry Godparents flown among us! Not only that, but he only ended up losing them because of Timmy going back in time and revealing his secret to the world. It's just structured really well, the pacing is great, opening with all this intrigue by what happened to him, adding all this depth to his character as well as bringing back the time scooter for some continuity, only for you to realize the whole thing was a paradox, Timmy creating his biggest enemy. Love this one, one of the best of the entire series. The different art for the time years is great, learning more about this seemingly one-note character in the reverse order, topped off with a really cool twist. Super glad to see this one holds up just as well as I remembered. Okay, this is definitely one of the most ambitious things they've ever tried to do in this show's entire history. A full hour and a half long three-part special. Abra catastrophe. I mean, couldn't you tell from the epic 3D intro? We'll cover it in parts, since that's how they for some reason decided to list it on Paramount+. Plus. Also, some of the episodes in this season may be out of order on there, whoops. After a bunch of very on-the-nose movie parodies, we learn about the plot of this special, which I always find to be sweet. It's officially been one year since Timmy got Cosmo and Wanda, which I always liked was treated as some kind of rare occurrence, with most kids blowing their cover right away. And so all the wacky characters he's met over the past three seasons give him a bunch of gifts, including a magic muffin, which allows whoever eats it one rule-free wish. Except you only need to bite it, so you can theoretically get hundreds of these. Part 1 is mainly just setting up this plot, and they do take a while to get into it, honestly. I think it takes like the first 20 minutes for Timmy to actually leave his bedroom. The only real thing they do here is establish how Crocker wants to get his hands on the muffin to take over the world. So it's mainly that battle the whole way through until Edge has sudden monkey friend Bippy comes in and makes his own wish, leaving us on a cliffhanger. As it is, it's fine, but clearly has the issue of being the first act. I mainly like it for the stuff that doesn't have to do with the story, like the song at the start and getting to see how Timmy met Vicky for the first time, ending on them reanimating the start of the Oh Yeah cartoon short too. As a part one though, the pacing definitely hurts it, it's super slow. Again, it takes us 30 minutes for the wish to actually be me, and even then, as we're gonna see, it's all for one big detour, so let's see what happens next. I know we're all dying to know what happened here, and as it turns out, Bippy has wished that the world were ruled by monkeys. You ready for 15 minutes of this? 
Honestly, I think this could have worked if it were faster paced. Like it's a big game of hot potato, with a bunch of characters getting the muffin, and us getting to see how that changed the world to whatever they see fit. So we're constantly seeing the world change throughout it because I don't really get why monkeys was chosen to be the focus. I do like how all the fairy godparents are assigned to monkey kids because of their dominance, with Cosmo and Wanda and I having to take care of Bippy, who just dresses like Timmy. But from this point on, the whole tone changes. We even get a new monkey-themed intro. What a treat! If you don't find chimp puns and the word banana funny, then you're probably gonna think the event kinda falls apart from this point, but things do seem hopeful by the second half, with Crocker finally getting the muffin and wishing for a world where he's the ruler of all. Crocker's been trying to capture fairy godparents for the past three seasons, so him finally getting just one is crazy, with Timmy and Cosmo needing to get Wanda back and stop him. Overall, part two is definitely a step down from the first, but that second half really does make up for it and get you ready for an action-packed finale, with Timmy going back to retrieve all the magical items he was given at the beginning. I also love the attention to detail that Crocker wishes for the same villain outfit that we saw in his fantasy sequence way earlier in the show. So let's see how this ends. I can't believe this is genuinely just a 30 minute long action scene. You can really tell Butch Hartman wanted to make an action show, because the premise for this series does not reflect how cool and epic they try to be at times. Oh, poopy. It really is spectacular, them consistently trying to up their own stakes over and over again. Timmy turning into this magical masked hero and needing to fight Crocker in the desert and space, even on fucking Adams, it's really cool. Did you know this animator was originally drawn to be the storyboard director John Fighton, but when Butch saw it, he replaced it with himself? I mean, wouldn't you do the same? This is a great finale. If the show ended here, I really think it would have a stellar reputation these days. I love the ending. With Cosmo redeeming all his stupidity by saving Wanda by himself, and Timmy having to admit that he has fairies to his parents in order to have them taken away from Crocker. He immediately gets them back, sure, but it still works. So much work went into Abracatastrophe that honestly, maybe that's the reason why season 3 can be so middling at times. I'm sure a lot of the artists and writers were torn between working on the regular episodes, along with this massive event in the background. Not to mention, uh, Scott Fellows began writing a bunch of these episodes, who was also the creator of Johnny Test, so maybe that explains it. But I'm probably one of the only people out there to not absolutely adore this special. I think it could be kind of messy at times, especially during the first part. But as it goes on, it truly does become something spectacular, and is certainly deserving to be at the top of the list. It's the start of summer, a Vicky free summer to be exact, but unfortunately she's not having that. Ruining things with a new radio advertisement, and so Timmy decides to make his own magic radio service that disguises his voice to try and make her look bad. Double T in the morning, man. I'm not a ten year old boy. I'm a man. A big, strong man. Uh, is this considered offensive? It's pretty decent and has a fun song, but it's yet another where all the parents are just one homogenous, mindless being. Those kind of ones always bothered me as a kid, because of how futile Timmy's efforts were. But I guess maybe that's more relatable to a kid, like sometimes it feels like you can't get through to your parents, I don't know. I like the ending though, where Vicky is fucking arrested for saying moron on the radio. <laughs> no, me! I am Double T in the morning! Ground me if you dare! Okay, no, that's gotta be considered offensive. Okay, space died. Totally space died. Now so totally space died. How many more of these can we do? It's yet another Mark Chang episode. This time he has to come to Earth to recruit Timmy to help take on this new group of enemies that are attacking their planet, these cute little bunny things that have an evil plot to take over the world. If you don't find the idea of overly cute things actually being evil all that funny, then uh, you're not gonna get much out of this one pretty boring. I'd probably say this is the worst of all Mark Chang episodes, honestly. At this point, I'm just glad that Mark is no longer considered an antagonist, instead being seen as more of a friend who will pop up occasionally, and it's better off for it. Okay, so remember the episode where Timmy wished nobody needed to sleep? Imagine the same thing, but for... for hearing. We Turners are the best charades players ever! You are the worst charade player ever! <laughs> yeah, Timmy wishes everything was silent. Although they couldn't commit to it because while sure the characters don't speak, they still use the same Guy Moon patented 50 million sound effects at once.
It's actually pretty creative. You can tell they had a lot of fun with this one, trying to use these sound effects to convey what the voices would have. It's pretty effective, especially given all the yelling. I wasn't expecting to say it, but Pipe Dawn is probably one of my favorites of the season. The ending being a callback to the Shreeds joke was a neat touch with Timmy needing to wish things back to normal without saying words. Here's hoping they do more experimental episodes in the future. Okay, this is one of the strangest episodes of the entire series. I can't believe this is real. So remember all the way back in season one where we had a wish too far? Well, how about two seasons later? We have an episode where we're watching the same events play out, but this time from Edge and Chester's perspective, where they almost discover that Timmy has fairy godparents. Yeah, no, really, this is real. I had seen both of these episodes as a kid, but never realized they were connected, so I always just Mandela affected myself into thinking there was only one of them, and it would just be whichever one I watched last. I think they both have more speaking roles here than in the entire rest of the series put together, so it's cool getting to see them for longer, even if Frankie Muniz has gone as Chester by now. Max Goof works just as well. I'm all done for these more out there ideas that have been going on for the past couple episodes. Here's hoping it continues for the rest of the season. <laughs> Sorry, uh, my parents said that. But your parents love me. More Crimson Chin stuff. Although this time, Timmy never actually meets him. It's more like two parallel episodes running at once that wouldn't warrant a full 11 minutes. On one end, we have Cosmo and Wanda sending Timmy from the bathtub to the comic store, not realizing they need to give him clothes. And so he's got to try to get home. Not that it's even a big deal since everyone just thinks he's cosplaying as the classic comic book character Naked Lad. On the other side, we've got your average Crimson Chin story against one of his regular villains of the week. Also shitting. Lots of weird, up-close shots of shit and people inside shit. It's a fine episode. Not that good, not that bad. I'll get out of here, crimson chin, and when I do... Ah! Ah! Gross. Timmy's gotta get a job to fix his V-Cube. Clever name. And so becomes the new ball boy for a shitty Dim's Deal basketball team. I liked that they could only get two basketballers to cameo, so most of the team remained completely silent the whole time. It's decent. Timmy turns the team around by making himself super tall, but then by the end they have to do it without him because, uh, fucking, uh, the rules. One of the most forgettable episodes of the entire series. This is another more experimental episode, starting with Wanda being missing and Timmy needing to recount choose the cause of her disappearance, told in a generic film noir kind of style. I can't believe they went out of their way to reference actual movies like Rocky, Casablanca, and Jaws. They also name-dropped Ghostbusters 2 a while back, I didn't remember any of these references. It's just him going through all the suspects of who could have taken her, only for the big twist that <gasps> it was Cosmo? Except, they already showed it was Cosmo at the start of the episode. Did they really expect us to not be able to tell who this was? <laughs> this episode's fine. I feel like there's only so many ways you can do this kind of plot in a kid's cartoon. It's the same every time. Okay, thankfully, Imaginary Gary is great. I always loved this one. And me and Gary getting ready to beat up the monster in my closet. And me and Gary in therapy. Timmy is sick of having no one to play with, and realizes he can wish his five-year-old imaginary friend Gary to life to be his friend. Although he comes to see that Gary is a massive prick who resents Timmy for ignoring him for so many years. I love his design just being this shitty Timmy recolor. It's like what a DeviantArt kid would draw when going through their edgy preteen fees. This is a great episode. The ending action sequence is a lot of fun too. The visuals and seeing all the creative ways he tries to lock Timmy inside his own mind. Going near the top. Being sweethearts through high school, going to college together, getting married, remaining deeply in love as we go really old together and spend our golden years traveling the world and extending our lifespan with the advanced technology that will be available in the future. Catching fleeting glimpses of my son growing into the confident young man I know he'll be. <laughs> After Timmy's school bully Francis literally steals their house from his family, he's forced to learn kung fu to defend himself. And by learn, I of course mean wish that he was an expert from the get-go. It's unfortunate that what seems like a good episode is made to be incredibly predictable the second Timmy tries to make it a competition, except that for some reason don't correlate it to the rule that explicitly says he can't do that. Now it apparently breaks the rules of kung fu. Even though I'm pretty sure this still constitutes a self-defense, the guy broke into his house. Either way, Kung Timmy is fine. Nothing spectacular, but it's it's fun to watch every now and then.
Timmy goes back to old Dim's deal to see what's up with this witch hunter and deal Dim, who is uh, people don't think is real. This backfires when Timmy is considered to be a witch because of Cosmo and Wanda, and so now he's got to expose Crocker's ancestor of being the real witch. Like the Renaissance one, I appreciate them changing up the background style a bit in the past, but overall, this is one I barely remember. It's super forgettable and not all that funny. Going near the bottom. Thankfully, this season is looking to end on a high note, with I think our final episode ever that focuses on Chip Skylark, as far as I'm aware. What a shame, because they're always the highlight. Oh, it's, it's only, only you. you. Why couldn't I have given birth to Chip Skylark? Because he wants to be the lead alongside Trixie in the school musical, Timmy wishes he could swap voices with Chip who starts to not get dropped by all his labels and needs to get a crappy job selling pizza. Because Chris Kirkpatrick is voicing Timmy the whole way through, it's just nice hearing more of him. Like the others, it's apparent that it's just one big build up to the song, but the song is amusing, who cares? Find Your Voice is a fairly odd parent song barely anybody talks about, it, but I think I prefer it to Shiny Teeth. The boarding is really good too, near the top of the list. Unfortunately, the actual finale of the season isn't as strong, but still an alright time. Timmy goes up to a ski resort where he winds up getting lost off a mountain with Vicky, where she learns that maybe Timmy isn't as bad as she thought. Until the end, where everything reverts. It's okay, the snow setting is a neat change of scenery, but it's not all that memorable. <laughs> And that marks the end of Season 3. I'm pretty sure this is when fans consider the Golden Age to end. Season 4 is kind of similar to The Simpsons Season 8 or 9, where some fans consider it's still a part of it and some don't. Where do I fall in? Well, Season 3's fine, I guess. A majority of these episodes are just... Okay. Other than the specials and the Chip Skylark ones, there's not many episodes here I consider all that amazing. At least compared to season 1 and 2. I think Nickelodeon aired season 4 the most when I was a kid, so I think it's the one I've seen the episodes from the most. Not to mention this is when they go fucking crazy with the special events, so I'm still looking forward to what we have ahead. I don't think we're in the shit yet at least. <laughs> Season 4 begins with an all-time classic. I'm shocked this one didn't come sooner. Okay, it turns out maybe it did come in Season 3, but Paramount Plus might have fucked it up. I don't know. Timmy realizes that Vicky is trying to win the Miss Dimsdale pageant by sucking up to the mayor and Adam West's Catman. Again, this show is Family Guy for Kids. So Timmy has to wish himself to be the third judge to make sure she doesn't win, as winner gets to be mayor for a day. For some reason. Look! My old swimsuit still fits! And so does mine! <laughs> This is a really good one, perfect way to start the season. Catman is super funny, even if it is just Adam West being Adam West. And the ending with Timmy's dad is so good that I think it's why his character started getting stupider. They just kept trying to top this. I actually like this one a lot too, season 4 is off to a great start. Okay Cosmo, let's read your mind. Timmy wishes he could read minds to get the one up on his enemies and friends. I mainly like it for how much of a threat Crocker is, using this power against Timmy by trying to overload his mind with thoughts. This one always stood out to me as a kid for how close he got to succeeding here. The lighting and colors are great too during that last showdown. Mind over magic isn't as good as the last, but still really entertaining. Here's one that I never realized was a 22 minute special until right now, Shelf Life. It sees Timmy realizing he left his summer report to the last minute, and so goes into a bunch of famous books at the library to make it easier. They really focus on Tom Sawyer here with him being the antagonist, stealing Cosmo's magic to escape and change his story, like Sonic and the Secret Rings. Yeah, that's accurate, I promise. He could turn Uranus into... Oh my gosh! We gotta stop him! What? I don't get it! What's the threat? Given the length, I wish they made more of a commitment to doing different art styles for every book, like the Cat in the Hat parody looks super on point, but they don't really do much with the others aside from changing the background styles. It always pissed me off as a kid though because I wanted to see the Summer Carnival that hype up so much, not books. This is one I always loved coming on. With Wanda taking Cosmo to the doctor, she leaves Timmy with a magic copier that brings anything it scans to real life. I mean, everyone knows any episode with Flipsy's gotta be epic. It's also our first appearance of Rip Studwell, the handsome, amusing fairy doctor who is drawn to look like Butch Hartman, who could have guessed? At least he doesn't do the voice for him. 
yet. It's also, also the introduction of Dark Laser, their non-copyright infringing space villain who becomes a central antagonist later in the show. This is another one that's carried from the idea alone, it's super fun. When I first saw this one as a kid, I remember really wanting the copy machine. It really evokes that endless childlike wonder. Hard copies go near the top of the list, I like it a lot. I wish everything was back to normal! Timmy and his family are on a road trip to Niagara Falls, but his parents are falsely accused of being a pair of bandits, because they look conveniently identical to his mom and dad. It's okay, I never really liked these sort of plots, Timmy and I being stuck with the real criminals and needing to try to get them arrested. The only real funny moment here is Timmy just not being able to wish his parents out of jail because not even magic can help with the American legal system. But as is, this is the weakest of the season as of now. They sure got a lot of mileage out of having Adam West in their recording booth, didn't they? This time they've got Adam West playing the Crimson Chin in his upcoming movie, with Timmy coming on to play Cleft. For they're filming the big budget Crimson Chin movie! I'm just pointing out anytime I see his name now. It's cool we get to spend some time in the comic world as well, meaning we get Jay Leno to return too, with one of his rivals, the bronze kneecap, escaping the comic book to the real world to direct the movie and ruin his reputation. Adam West is naturally a joy to watch anywhere, and this is no exception, but for the most part this is a pretty standard one. The movie theme is a fun setting though, one of their better superhero episodes. And the award for worst episode title in any show ever in history goes to... Vicky learns some of Timmy's darkest secrets, and so he wishes he had her diary to get back at her. So, we hired a backup babysitter. Give us the boy. I like the idea for this one a bunch. It's kind of similar to the Switch glitch from Season 2, where Timmy has to learn that getting revenge on someone doesn't make him feel good. Well, okay, he doesn't learn that. It actually gives him grit joy, but... He gets his shit kicked in at the end at least. This is probably my favorite of season 4 so far. Hope this is a sign of things to come. The shitty British character Dunce is pretty great as well. He reminds me of the hunt. Ta ta! Scones, Benny Hill, Big Ben, Yellow Teeth, and all that. I don't want to spend too much time in the power hours since I plan on making a big video about them in the future, but what I will say is. Holy shit. As a kid, these were the most hype things ever that blew my fucking brain. Dude, Nickelodeon was so fucking cool back in the 2000s, letting the Fairly Odd Parents cross over with another popular Nick cartoon, Jimmy Neutron, coming together for the Jimmy Timmy Power Hour, a 45 minute special. The special sees Timmy transporting himself to the world of Jimmy Neutron, and Jimmy accidentally getting sent to the world of Timmy Turner, Jimmy needing to face off against Mr. Crocker in Fairy World, and Timmy needing to help Steve Goddard in Retroville. I'm not a fan of how little both of these characters interact. It's me and Leia what if both of the main characters swapped places kind of thing, but even then there's just something so cool about seeing Timmy done in CGI and Jimmy done in the Fairly Odd Parents art style. Timmy doesn't even look that bad, yeah I said it. Looks about as freaky as the rest of the Jimmy Neutron characters. Funnily enough though, despite never watching his show as a kid, I liked Jimmy way more in these specials. Timmy turns into such a prick in them. But it is at least nice having Jimmy see just how fucking awful of a world Timmy lives in. It helps that both of these series have such unique styles. Not only in animation, but when it comes to writing, sound, it causes this to feel like a truly massive, epic crossover. I also really like when cartoons have crossovers where the main two characters fucking hate each other. Really fun seeing the Regos clash. Also, Jimmy, Timmy, 10 year old boys, magic versus science. It was meant to be. Top of the list. Thanks, boy genius. Uh, don't mention it, average kid who no one understands. God, that line sucks. Timmy is once again sent off to Flappy Bob's Learnatorium. Although after seeing how rough the big kid section is, he wishes he were a baby so he can get away. We find ourselves at the dilemma we've seen time and time again. Timmy can't talk and wish himself back to 10. Oh no. You know, I'm pretty sure we've seen Cosmo and Wanda being capable of making wishes by themselves before. This is one of the better cases of this plot. It's not as unbearable as the synopsis signs and them setting up the license plate stuff early on was solid. Go near the top. I'm surprised it's taken them four seasons to do something this basic. Timmy wishes everything he ever said was right. 
it's pretty basic from there. We just see three cases of Timmy being wrong, then he makes the wish, we see those same exact cases except now he's right, then it starts to cause him trouble, in this case he lies to Crocker and says he doesn't have fairy godparents, which literally takes away Cosmo and Wanda. They take this formula they've done a billion times and make it somewhat more interesting through that conflict. Timmy needs to find someone he can tell he has fairy godparents without them actually believing him. Hello. You just said you wanted to be right, you could just say it to yourself, but I'm not gonna question it. This is a solid one, going around the middle of the list. Can I be wrong again? There's only one way to find out. Pick a wire! Pick a wire! Timmy makes a wish that I'm yet again surprised to have never done before. That being that Vicky would lose her meanness, manifesting it as this tiny little beetle that transfers the badness when it bites someone. It's okay, if you don't think Vicky acting nice is funny, which it really isn't, or nice characters like Timmy's dad acting evil, which again, not that funny, then there really isn't much to it. Don't ask why, but I have to stick this up Dad's pants! Oh, is it Father's Day already? Vicky loses her icky isn't bad or anything, just one of the weakest of the season. Damn, I can't believe it took us this long to introduce the Pixies. They became such a regular antagonist from this point on. The plot is a very funny idea too, I love it when they present the magical world so cynically, with Pixies buying like the fairies and being under new management. Ben Stein is a perfect choice to voice all the Pixies, he's the teacher in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, or if you're me, the tourist guide from Son of the Mask. That's really touching, Cosmo, and... You're fired. Cosmo gets promoted to work with the Pixies to stay out of the way of fucking things up, and I like the examples they use here are real stuff that happened in the show, including them foreshadowing the Atlantis thing for next season. But other than that, this is a fine episode. They didn't do a whole lot with this concept, just Cosmo caring more about his work than Timmy and Wanda, and so he needs to beat the head Pixie in mini golf to get rid of them. Yeah, but it's decent. We're on the middle of the list. <laughs> This is a pretty alright one. Timmy wishes for a boyfriend for Vicky so she can focus more on him. That is until he finds out that the perfect partner for Vicky is someone who would only fuel her evilness. And so now he's gotta split them both up somehow. Done and done! You've got commitment! I now pronounce you man and wife. I like that the only way he's allowed to wish them apart is if he's able to prove that it's fake teen love and not real. It's going around the middle of the list. The toast ending's pretty funny. <laughs> Timmy wishes that everything he said was funny so that Trixie would like him, which is a shame because he's just given her a plant that will kill her. They're, they're somewhat related, I promise. I like Timmy's design with the mullet, that's, that's kinda it. It's pretty similar to the one where he wishes he was always right, but it's not necessarily a bad thing, it's decent. Yep, nothing else to say. Previously on an episode of The Fairly Odd Parents. 100 episodes in and oh shit, I wasn't thinking this would come so soon, but I think here we have the first episode I don't think I've ever seen. Or at least if I have, I've blocked it out of my memory. Which is weird too, because it's another double length episode. Well, was I missing much? Eh, Pat Oswalt cameo was nice. And of course, getting to see more of... The Negachin! So interestingly enough, this is a sequel to Mighty Mom and Dino Dad Meet the Crimson Chin episode from last season, showing Timmy wishing the world were like a comic book with the Negachin returning to enact his revenge. And so Timmy teams up with his... friends, I guess you could call them that, to stop the villain. Maybe it's because I hadn't seen it before, but I thought this one was really cool. I like seeing all the characters as, well, mostly Marvel parodies. But this one was a bunch of fun, it's going near the top. Glad to have finally been able to check it out. Timmy's friends come to the conclusion that Timmy is kind of a prick. Pretty reasonable, honestly. And so they abandon him to form the Anti-Timmy Force 4, leaving him to have to find a new, better friend group, the Power Pals. You can never have too many friends! But I don't have any! Maybe it's because you're too loud! I can't believe they got away with a Cosmo and Wanda being hungover joke. Okay, so I know it's not really anyone's fault how these come out, but did we really need two superhero episodes in a row? They use a lot of the same power types too, like look at this, how were these two put next to each other? It ends with Timmy realizing having super friends isn't really super wonderful. There's a few funny moments, but overall I never cared for this one. I 
After an embarrassing day at the pool, Timmy wishes he was unable to feel any kind of emotion. I love this one. It might be my favorite from the whole season aside from the specials. Just seeing everyone freak out and have Timmy get everything he's ever wanted from his lack of emotion, but can't even enjoy them is a great payoff. I said I'm ignoring you. Stop ignoring me, ignoring you! It escalates with just the right amount of absurdity, too. Him having to do this giant death-defying mission with the FBI the second he gets his emotions back. This is going right under Jimmy Timmy Power Hour. He's not scared! He's weird! He's weird! <laughs> I don't really remember much from a run when this episode came out, you know, being two and all, but I'm sure they advertised the fuck out of it. With no neighbors around the town being willing to hang out with the Turners, Timmy wishes that Cosmo and Wanda would become their new neighbors to get his parents off his back. Obviously, this means that his godparents are spending more time with his regular parents and not him. You know, why have them at all, then? But it's pretty sweet by the end. His mom and dad purposefully being dicks to Cosmo and Wanda so they'll not want to be their friends anymore, so they can spend more time with Timmy. It's so weird how much they flip-flop on whether or not they actually want to spend time with their son, but overall a solid one, going around the middle of the list. Another one of my favorites, it always seemed so monumental as a kid. Timmy realizes he can wish for everybody on the planet to disappear except for him and Trixie. So then she'll be forced to be with him. Kinda of fucked up in retrospect. Things of course go wrong, with the isolation turning Trixie crazy, wanting Timmy to constantly make up for the lack of people adoring her. It's pretty funny seeing Trixie in a way we've never seen before, Timmy finally getting what he's always wanted after all this time, only for it to be a big disaster too. Not as amazing as I remember, but it's definitely a good one for sure. This one has a super fun concept. Because his dad is too busy to take him, Timmy wishes for a bunch of the other dads in time to be his. Basically just having a day in the life of some of the other kids in time like Edge and Chester. Sorry about your car, Dinkelberg! I should have gone before I left! What? Did he just take a shit on their car? Also, I don't know if it's just Paramount Plus, but I fucking hate the colors on this one, and some others too. It's so saturated, the skin tones look terrible compared to early on. Your average grass is always greener story, but it's alright. Here's one I don't think I've seen more than just a couple times. After being blamed for a bunch of stuff he didn't do, Timmy decides he's gonna get back at Vicky by agreeing to stay at her house for the day to fuck up her house for revenge. It's alright, it's fairly standard until about halfway through when he gets stuck with Tootie and Cosmo and Wanda are put out of commission, so now he's gotta find a way to get everything back to normal. The tension of all this going on makes it one of the better episodes of the season so far, I enjoyed it a lot. It's pretty commendable how many different ideas they're able to come up with out of a concept as basic as a mean babysitter. Finally, we're not doing the space dog gag anymore. But alas, it is still a Mark Chang episode. Although this one is interesting, as it's one of the rare times they actually decided to make a permanent change to the continuity and stick with it for a while. Mark wants to avoid his arranged marriage against this warlord princess, Mandai. And so he retreats to Earth to become a schoolboy along with Timmy. And they actually keep that going for a while, which is bizarre. But I guess they just wanted to be able to use him more without making such a spectacle about it. I can't send him back to his home planet to be killed. Or worse, man! Season 4 is really when they start leaning into those, and then the opposite happens jokes. Along with those moments where a character says something kinda quirky and suddenly it becomes everyone's catchphrase for the next 11 minutes, running it into the ground. Which means, when that joke isn't funny at all, the whole episode becomes incredibly annoying. That's not specifically an issue with this episode though, as is it's probably one of the better Mark Chang ones now that they've dropped the whole antagonist thing, you know, considering the whole joke is that they're incompetent. But, it's going around the middle of the list. means is Timmy's due for a good wish. Come on, cheese boy square pants, make us proud! <gasps> More Pixies already, and I actually don't remember this one at all. I think I watched the previous one at my grandmother's house, but had to leave by the time this one came on. Timmy agrees to team up with the Wish Fixers, where the Pixies get to control whether or not his wishes will be bad or not, and punish him for it. It's pretty forgettable, it's just Timmy continuously making bad wishes and Cosmo and Wanda paying the price for it. Hilarious. Ending's pretty funny though. I like this reference, though. All the things listed here are previous episodes. <clears throat> That's all. You can move on. 
Cosmo and Wanda get invited to their high school reunion, where Cosmo has to pretend that he's rich and famous and not with Wanda because, well, that's what he told people. I'm pretty sure this exact plot was done in Family Guy. Again, the show is just Family Guy for babies. One of the weakest of the season. Not terrible or anything. Again, I'm really truly shocked that we haven't had a bad episode yet, but it's just nothing special. <laughs> Timmy wants to get with Trixie, uh, again, and so wishes he was the strongest person on the beach. Cosmo and Wanda taking this literally, with him being unable to even touch her without crushing all the bones in her body. I'm huge! I'm hurting people! And I'm misunderstood! Just like the IRS! <laughs> it's kind of the only real joke. It's one of the worst of the season. I don't really care for it all that much. It's pretty boring. Four! Take the wimpy kid's girl! credits, they go really fast because nobody cares about them! This may be controversial, but I think even more so than ever catastrophe, the most ambitious thing to ever come out of the Fairly Odd Parents has gotta be Channel Chasers, a 45 minute special that sees Timmy trying to leave his life behind and live inside TV. The piecing is thankfully way better than the former, starting on this mysterious futuristic dims deal, with a masked figure having to go back in time to stop Timmy Turner, ordered by the ruler of Earth, Vicky. The mean thing I love about this special is expanding on something that was always implied but never really focused on, that being that when he's older, Timmy is gonna lose Cosmo and Wanda forever, not even remembering he had them at all, leading him wanting to live inside television where he could never age. It's really nice they give this big spectacular event a very character-centered story. The ending is the perfect finale to the show. The whole point of all of this was Cosmo and Wanda acting as his parental figures and teaching him to be a better person, so it's really cathartic to get to see what his future ended up like. It made me genuinely cry as a kid when I first saw it. Now, of course, that's not what we all remember it for. It's for all the scenes of them going inside different TV show parodies, and this thing really is a marvel to look at. For a TV animated budget, they went all out. The way they imitate art styles near perfectly from The Simpsons to Tom and Jerry, to even other mediums like stop motion and puppetry, I really think any animation fan could enjoy this. As a kid, I just wanted it to go on forever. So many butches, I can't keep count. This gag has literally evolved to the point where the big epic moment where adult Timmy sacrifices himself is on top of Butch Hartman's own name. <laughs> Just like Abra Catastrophe was the perfect culmination of Timmy and Crocker's rivalry, Channel Chasers is the peak of Timmy and Vicky's rivalry, getting to finally duke it out in an epic Dragon Ball fight and having his parents finally see that Vicky is evil. Resets by the end again, but was cool. Channel Chasers is the best thing to ever come out of Fairly Odd Parents. No contest. I would be incredibly shocked if anything were to pass it. It's a shame the Fairly Odd Parents theatrical movie was cancelled from around this time. Could have been something truly amusing. Or not. Yeah, you know what, probably not. Catman meeting the Crimson Chin might be a little more impactful if, you know, we didn't already have an episode with both Catman and the Crimson Chin in this very season. This is probably my favorite Catman episode, at least. I like that when he fucks up in public, he always calls on Timmy to be his fucking lawyer. <laughs> he takes Catman into a Crimson Chin flash cartoon, didn't remember that detail, to let him fight crime without getting on other people's nerves. Not the most grind-breaking story or anything, but just fun. Always good to see Adam West doing his thing, going around the middle of the list. Okay, this is a great almost finale to the season. Norm MacDonald, R.I.P., stars as Norm the Genie, who lets Timmy make three rule-free wishes in the hopes of escaping his lamp altogether and swapping places with Cosmo and Wanda. Well, I'm off to destroy Canada. They've had it too good for too long. I think the most fucked up thing here though is them revealing that Timmy can't wish for breakfast past 10.30, the fuck is this, a hotel? Norm is one of the best one-off characters. They bring him back a couple more times in the future, but he's not even voiced by Norm Macdonald then, what's the point? As is, this is one of the best of season 4. Happy to see it. Dude, they went overboard on the specials here. They're also different, too, this being their only attempt at a full-blown musical. Something I love about the specials is that they always have Timmy facing off against one of the many antagonists they've been building up. In School's Art case, it's the Pixies and Flappy Bob who we finally get to see. Hold me! But I don't like you like that! <laughs> but I need to be held! No, she doesn't like you like that! Again, they go all out on the boarding for their songs. I can only imagine the time constraints these background artists are under. I decided to count how many unique backgrounds they had for one song, and guess how many there were? 56. That's not even accounting for all the props. 
The songs too were super catchy and fun. Nothing you'd want to listen to in a public setting or anything, but the show has always had such a unique identity sign-wise that this is definitely the most logical place to go and it works really well. Once again though, send my regards to Tara Strong's throat. Schools like the musical isn't better than the other two specials this season, but it's still really fucking good and one I loved watching every summer. Even if Guy Moon's obsession with wacky sound effects does ruin the tone of some of these songs. Look, I recreated one of the posters you see in the background and got it signed by Butch Hartman. Our relationship's complicated. <laughs> Color me surprised, I really was not expecting to say this, but I think season 4 is better than season 2 and 3. One still holds a special place in my heart for how charming it is, and not every episode in here is a winner or anything, but I think the highs of this season are way better than season 2 and 3. 90% of the episodes here could have been shit, but schools like the musical Jimmy Timmy Power Hour and Channel Chasers elevated a fuck ton. I guess in my head I always treated this show like Spongebob, that after the first three seasons it kinda went downhill, but if things continue like this then, this show might have been a lot better than I thought it was in its later seasons. Let's find out. Season 5 begins with Naked Timmy. Mm, someone's just gonna take that right out of context. What? Well, this is usually the time when you tell me that this is a bad wish. Can you tell this show has been going on for five seasons? Timmy's mom and dad are called out for being such shitty parents, and so after they become more strict, Timmy wishes he would do the opposite of whatever they told him. This, of course, has ramifications when they tell him to be good, which turns into him... Well, yeah, that. It's a fine start to the season, them pushing this to the extreme with him trying to burn Dimsdale to the grind. If anything, it just shows us that, at least for now, season 5 is gonna be more of the same. The show really has been evolving in a natural way so far, you only really notice the changes when looking back and see how much different it was. I am aware this is the last season before everything changes though, so let's see how we get there at least. Timmy and his parents are off to Adrenaland. And so he wishes he looked older so he could get in all the rides. Too bad Vicky is also there and falls in love with him. Yeah. It's okay, but just kind of feels like a mix of the one where they're friendly along with the one where she has the boyfriend. The first episode is definitely better, this one is just okay. This was one I was always excited for when I was younger for the concept alone, with Timmy wishing that he had voodoo dolls of everyone around him, so that he can fuck with them. That's really it. Just a cool idea. Even if it does follow your average fairly odd parent structure, Timmy wishes for something it seems great at first, the wish then backfires and Timmy has to figure out how to undo it. This time, Timmy's voodoo doll winds up in the hands of Tootie, and she starts unintentionally fucking with him, with the doll being flung around to all these different characters, almost killing him. This is a super fun episode, I love it a lot. Definitely the best of the season so far. It's funny, I always looked at season 5 as when the series started going downhill, but if this is a sign of anything, it's... We at least have one good season left. Okay, so, you know the episode where Timmy wishes people didn't need to sleep, but that became a problem because people need to sleep? And remember the episode where Timmy wishes people couldn't hear, but that became a problem because people need to hear? Well, here's an episode where Timmy wishes everyone eat junk food all the time. They get fat, who could have seen that coming? These ones always seemed like such easy episodes to come up with to me. Like if they're ever creatively bankrupt and one episode short for the season, they just throw in one of these simple ones. And I'm sure a lot of kids got... something out of this. Ugh. <laughs> The most interesting thing about this episode is the knowledge that it could never be made today because of all the fat jokes, and that's weird to think about. More Adam West already. I'm telling you, they really liked getting him in the booth. This one sees Timmy wishing that Catman was a kid again, so that he could finally have the childhood his kid self could never have as a child actor. There's not much to it, but it's fun. They skip school to do kid stuff and get hunted down by an assassin who's gonna punish them for playing hooky. It's fine, one of the more forgettable episodes of the past couple seasons though. Probably gonna end up near the bottom of season 5, definitely the weakest Catman episode. It's Tootie's birthday, although it's not much of a party with nobody showing up. And so Timmy, feeling bad, wishes that Tootie could have Cosmo and Wanda for a day to make her feel better. 
I actually really enjoy this one. It's got a bunch of great moments like Crocker once again knowing exactly what's going on somehow, and the conflict is good with Timmy needing to distract her before she tells the world about Cosmo and Wanda. This is my favorite of the season so far, it's great. It's only here we learn that Wanda has a twin sister, Blonda. Would you be shocked to find out Butch Hartman's daughter came up with this idea? An evil twin? What a crazy yet convenient plot twist! I look now more than ever! For how generic and sitcom-y of an idea this comes across, it's still a very fun episode, one of the best of the season so far. The two of them switch places to see who has it rougher, basically the same as the one where Timmy switches with them. You know exactly what's gonna happen from the beginning. Wanda finds out her sister had a hard life, and vice versa. But who cares? Julia Louise Dreyfus gives a good performance as Blonda, even if she only did the role as a fever and didn't want credited. Whoa. The greatest party ever, and I can't remember it. Who the heck is Carly? Back to Mark Chang already, still living his regular Earth Boy life. Hey, ultra disguised Yugo Potamian Prince, hiding from his crazy alien fiance. Yeah, thanks for clearing that up. Mark is pissed off he can't celebrate his homeworld holiday, the five days of Flarg, and so Timmy has to partake in it with him, because he's nice now, I guess. It's just trying to be gross, but in their team Y7 Fairly Odd Parents way. Like the F in Flarg stands for fart. <laughs> I'm Timmy. Timmy? Carly? <laughs> it's fine, near the bottom of the list. Timmy makes a wish that winds up burning Vicky's house to the grind, only for his parents to invite her entire family over to stay. We better stop it! Timmy? Hello? Uh... Gets a lot more interesting when Timmy wishes to turn their place into a haunted house to scare them away when you wear 3D glasses. Again, scare them in their team Y7 Fairly Odd Parents way. Overall, it's a pretty funny one. Nowhere near the best, though, going around the middle. Honestly, I am stunned it has taken us five seasons to get to an episode that is widely considered bad. Fairly Odd Parents has always had a pretty cynical edge to it, being that the entire thing revolves around beating down on Timmy, but this reaches that point of exaggeration that pushes it on being too mean. For once, Timmy tries doing a bunch of good deeds, like, like genuinely good deeds for no personal gain, yet nobody appreciates him for it, and so he wishes he could see a world where he didn't exist, to witness how miserable everybody's lives would be without him. But... No, as it turns out, literally everybody has an infinitely better life without him. And so if Timmy can't find a single person whose life is worse, he'll be sent to the fairy world equivalent of hell. That's when he learns that he was being selfish, I guess, for doing good deeds, expecting Priya's in return. But like, it's not that they were ignoring his good deeds, it's that they were chastising him for it. He was able to graduate high school at the age of five! With a full head of hair? Aw, oh, come on, how is that my fault? It is cool seeing a world without Timmy, like Cosmo and Wanda and I being with Chester, although that brings up the question as to why he doesn't get fairy godparents by default. I just don't like how much it implies the world revolves around Timmy. It's a bit miserable, he literally did nothing wrong. It's not the worst thing in the world, I feel like people kind of over-exaggerate how bad it is, but without a doubt it is the worst episode of the series so far. But by the end of this whole thing, I highly doubt it's even going to be in the bottom 50. I can't do that to Cosmo and Wanda, Mom and Dad. I can do it to Elmer, but I don't really know him that well. Oh shit, this is the one I was talking about way earlier. Timmy's friends and family have begun mysteriously disappearing, at the hands of his previous rivals like the Pumpkin Eater, Dark Laser, and even Superbike. As it turns out, Imaginary Gary has escaped from inside Timmy's mind, to take care of him once and for all, beating him with the kidnapping of his family. It's cool getting to learn more about what happens to all of Timmy's unwished wishes, him fucking up so frequently that they have to transport all his villains to the Bermuda Triangle. Love all the references to past episodes, with Timmy realizing he can use his unwished gadgets to help them. School. This is what I was talking about like an hour and a half ago. They remember that he still has heat vision, I can't believe how much continuity they put in this show. This is mostly one big nostalgia fest, but I don't really mind. They tie it all together in a natural way, with Gary even bringing back some stuff Timmy never wished away like the Sphinx from Abercatastrophe, and him realizing the only people who still like him is Mark Chang and the fucking Finding Fathers. I like this one a lot. Go near the top. Cosmo's been having trouble with his gland and has got to find a donor for a new one. My figgigly gland is fine! No, it's not. 
Cosmo's fagigly gland is far from fine. Glad Butch didn't want it becoming too questionable as to whether or not the character Rip Studwell was a reference to him, since he now voices the character Grid. Completely forgot this ended up being another anti-fairy episode, with them having to break anti-Cosmo out of prison so they can do the transplant. It's okay, they don't do a whole lot with this. The entire thing is pretty much them trying to break him out of prison. I feel like they could have done something a lot more interesting with anti-Cosmo and Wanda. They feel super underutilized in this show. Damn, Norm the Genie again? Apparently he was voiced by Norm MacDonald here too, I always thought they replaced him after the first. So much of this season has been continuations and sequel episodes. Really makes this feel like a living world compared to early on where every episode felt so disconnected. Crocker's relative from Canada sends him back the lamp that trapped Norm, and so now the two of them want to team up to kill Timmy. It's cool seeing the two work off each other, Norm wanting to do things quick and easy while Crocker wants to set up all these elaborate plans, Norm getting more and more sick of them, eventually just straight up teaming up with Timmy to murder his teacher. I have a suggestion. <laughs> Nothing spectacular, the previous Norm episode is infinitely better, but this was still a decent one. Glad Crocker had the foresight to just continuously wish for three more wishes over and over, I never got why nobody ever tried that. Okay, what the fuck, season 5 has a ton I like. Timmy's big giant teeth are finally getting loose. However, Jordan wants to painfully rip them out of his mouth so he can use them to propose to his girlfriend, the Tooth Fairy. All these prolonged shots of Timmy having his teeth pulled gets a little uncomfortable after a while, but I'm glad they don't go overboard with it. It's mainly about Timmy having a heartbroken Jordan keeping Wanda and Cosmo all to themselves in Timmy's treehouse, leaving him neglected. So let's get mandibular molaractic. This over with? Oh fuck, they acknowledged it. I can't believe they couldn't get Gilbert Gottfried back as Dr. Bander, so they literally just had just had Bush Hartman do an impression of him. Either way, this is another one I like well enough. Cool getting to see a new side of Jordan at least. You can tell they're really starting to like using him. Hassle in the Castle is one of my favorite episodes of the entire show. I always loved it coming on as a kid. Timmy asks Cosmo and Wanda why they've never let him inside their castle. You know, the fucking one inside the fishbowl. It's such a random background detail you forget they live there. When he sneaks in, it reveals it's this massive place filled with endless rooms. Timmy getting pissed off to see they have portraits of all their god kids except for Timmy. So much happens here, it's super entertaining. Him bringing out some of the previous god kids to see how they got their portrait on the wall, not realizing he's in the Hall of Infamy. I wish they explored their old god kids more in the show. There's endless possibilities here. We didn't desert you! You abused our magic, took out Archduke Ferdinand, and plunged the world into World War One. Even manages to end on a really sweet moment between them, revealing they've had an entire room dedicated to Timmy inside. I love this one. Top of the list. Speaking of the many returning characters this season, here we have Remy Rides Again, the grand return of Remy Bucks Aplenty. His mind has been wiped of what happened, him apologizing for everything and wanting to be Timmy's new best friend. Of course, he has an ulterior motive here, using the magic of money to make it so Timmy doesn't realize he has no need for godparents anymore so they'll get taken away. This is a solid one. Again, I think I prefer the other one to this, but it's cool seeing Remy again at least. These sequel episodes thankfully don't feel as tacky and cheap as you'd expect them to be. They're at least doing something new with them. It ends up with him getting his fairy godparent back, so I'm shocked they never brought him back from this point on. Hey, this is recording, Mark. I wrote this before watching the rest of the season. He, he comes back many fucking times. I don't know what I was on here. Tony Sirico from the goddamn Sopranos guest stars this time as Wanda's dad, who wants to get her away from Timmy because of how much of a prick he is, probably to join the family business of... <clears throat> trash collection. With them coming to get rid of all the magical garbage Timmy has been wishing under the house for years. What's so important you drag me here for my very violent, I mean, important business meeting? Within this one season, they've seriously began ramping up the jokes about Cosmo hating his wife. Every joke they tell with him now is either he's stupid or he hates Wanda. It makes their relationship so much more miserable and well less charming compared to earlier, just for the sake of a cheap laugh. I feel like this one doesn't really do anything with the idea. It's mainly just Timmy redeeming himself and getting rid of the garbage, instead of really doing anything interesting with Wanda's dad. I think I remember them bringing him back later on, so let's hope they do something better with it.
Timmy learns that he's a famous celebrity in Fairy World, with them broadcasting his life to the entire place as that reality show. For how much of a shark jumping concept this is, I actually think it's really funny, like their version of the Poochie Simpsons episode. This Simon Cowell fairy starts wanting to make all these minor changes to the series, like making Timmy's hat purple and getting rid of Edge and Chester, even replacing his mum with the mother of the Brady Bunch. One of the best of the season, I like this one a bunch. I don't know any of you kids. You're in my spot! Although, I do find it incredibly ironic and sad how they make so many jokes here about the executives wanting to make all these bad changes to the show just for ratings. You know, right before the series got stuck with doing that exact same thing until the end of its run. I don't care for this one at all, sadly. Ooh, a rabbit! That's original. Boo! That kid's balloon is right! Timmy wants to make his parents' outside show more spectacular than the Dinglebergs, and so wishes to become a real magician, pissing off his rival magician, Mr. Bickles, who's been like, a small, recurring character I never cared enough to mention. Watching it again, I don't think it's as boring as I remember it being as a kid, but it's still nowhere near the top for season 5. It just becomes another superhero thing instead of sticking to the magic. Wait, what the fuck? I completely forgot that brought Remy back again. Uh, see, this is what I was talking about earlier. R riding Mark didn't realize that. A bunch of god kids are invited to Cupid's House for a massive Easter egg hunt, the winner getting 30 seconds of rule free wishes, with Remy planning on using it to wish away Cosmo and Wanda forever. It's just a big collect a thon episode, but it's a ton of fun, seeing them using their time scooters to race through time and collect everything on the list. Okay, I'm pretty sure for real this time, this is the last we see a Remy, and if that's true, this is a pretty good standoff. Hi, once again, recording mark here. No, it comes back again. <laughs> Nothing was ever as disappointing to me as a kid than waiting for the Fairly Odd Parents to come on, only for it to be the Crash Nebula special. So, this is an entire 22 minutes where Timmy is watching the fictional Crash Nebula series, although it's his origin story, showing how he became the superhero. Fun little backstory here, this was not originally conceived as a Fairly Odd Parents episode. It was actually produced all the way around when season 3 was in the works, acting as a pilot for a full Crash Nebula TV series that Nickelodeon never picked up. I guess Butch Hartman wanted to throw it in as part of season 5 to maybe get audience feedback to convince Nick to turn it into a full show. Didn't work. Oh look, a little Danny Phantom. That's fitting because... The show is just a worse Danny Phantom. Following Sprig Spivak going up to school in space to learn how to be a hero. It's clearly got a super high budget and a lot of effort was put into this. The animation and style is amazing, but there's just something about it that always fucking bored me. I think I just never really care all that much about space stuff in general, and this character doesn't seem interesting enough to carry an entire series. I can't listen to him without hearing Johnny Test. Probably because he's voiced by Johnny Test's voice actor. In conclusion, I am not shedding a tear over this pilot not being picked up. Sorry, Butch. Timmy's mom sells their home so they can live in Demido Makers. Basically just like that Spongebob episode with Tentacle Acres. Except here they go way more into the conspiracy angle, with it turning out that everybody in the town has been moving there after being hypnotized by the milk that's supplied by Doug Dimidome. Yeah, Doug Dimidome, owner of the Dimsteel Dimidome and developer of Dimido Makers. I feel like there's some, for lack of a better term, magic that's lost when the world they live in is super wacky and supernatural with like fucking hypnotizing milk and shit. Makes Cosmo and Wanda's magic not stand out as much, but that doesn't mean it's bad or anything. I understand it's kind of necessary to do that with a show after so long. As is though, it's a fine episode. Got some funny moments in that pull that whole zombie atmosphere off well, but meh. Okay, yeah, I was right, they did bring Wanda's dad back. I just, just didn't realize it was so soon. Her dad has been fairy napped, and because of that, Wanda is called upon to take over the family business. I like the twist that he was kidnapped by Cosmo's mom, so she would be brought in to replace him, but I don't know, I think a lot more could have been done here. Oh. Wanda makes the whole thing girly, because she's a girl. Don't you think she would embrace this and become ruthless? I don't know, it seems so lazy. Cosmo, wake up! I'm alive! You are? There go my dating plans! This is still a lot better than the last episode featuring him, though. Just weird to end it with both of their parents suddenly wanting to fuck. Jason fucking Bateman guest stars as Timmy's older brother, Tommy. I like that nobody... Not even his parents question this. This goes awry when Timmy gets pissed that his brother is just such a nice guy that he forces him to do all these good deeds. The horror, what a prick. 
They've got a really dumb loophole here too for why they can't wish him away. Because Tootie loves him now, that's bullshit. But still, it's an alright episode, around the middle of the list. Finally, yeah. someone to play soccer with and watch cartoons. Here's yet another I haven't seen in a long time. Timmy has to fix Mark Chang's fake a fire before Mandai returns. Yet again to force him to marry her. They've had her here as a villain so many times, but they've never done anything cool with her. Thankfully, the creative idea more than makes up for it. With Timmy hiding him by wishing his entire school was like a Where's Wally book. They could have went a lot further with the way they redesigned the school here, but it's still visually creative enough to make this one stick eye. Toilet, toilet, toilet. Hippo head? If you go in me, you die. It's super fast paced and fun. I like this one a lot. I love the fucking title card to this one. It's amazing. Geography homework's impossible. Where's America? All I can find on this stupid globe is Yusa. This is a pretty relatable plot, too. Timmy having his dad try and help him with his homework. You ever have your dad try to help you but get confused with what to do and so you try to help him in return and then he gets mad and yells because you asked for his help? Just me? Timmy wishes his dad was super smart, so this is a rhyme when they really start leaning into him being a dumbass. With his dad being so smart he catches on to the fact that his son has fairies. Cool seeing a more competent side of him. Pretty good episode. Okay, more Remy. I'm gonna stop predicting when they end now. It's all good though, Timmy and him are cool. Except, no. He convinces him and all their friends to join the Fun Academy, which turns out to just be a military camp. They even bring back the villain from the episode where Catman was young. They're really building their own little universe here, aren't they? I don't usually care for these military kind of school settings, but I actually like this one. Something, something new, you know? Season 5 really has been the most consistently decent season so far. Oh see, this is the Atlantis episode I was talking about them foreshadowing last season. What a weird reference. Because Cosmo at some point in the past sank the city of Atlantis, Timmy has got to show the people why that was actually a good thing. Atlantis is a cool setting, but it takes them so long to get into it. By the time they set up this premise, there's only like four minutes left. So Timmy just shows them it's good that Atlantis was sunken because Earth sucks. The ending joke where they're convinced of this because of the state of Hollywood aged very well. Although mostly our diet consists of crabs, starfish, and the occasional underwater squirrel. <gasps> this is one of the weakest of the season, what a sham. Here's another super fun concept, with Timmy wishing for a device that allows him to swap places with whatever he touches. Love that they get right into it here, there is no setup. They clearly had a lot they wanted to do. Cosmo and Wanda are out of commission for a lot of this one, taking care of his mother, which is a pretty fun B-story even if it only does consist of one joke, that his mother now likes Wanda when she's sick. Body swap episodes are always neat to me and this is no exception. Him accidentally swapping places with Crocker and needing to find a way back. One of the best of the season. I like that Timmy's dad remembers Crocker from the CosmoCon episode. Ever heard of Cuphead, old man? Don't let Timmy suck on that pacifier too long or he'll get huge, horrible buck teeth. Bye. Instead of Vicky taking care of him this time, Timmy is being babysat by his granddad. And after seeing this terrible Captain Planet parody, he wishes for them to be in an old school Fleischer cartoon to have fun so he'll want to stay with him forever. They do a great job committing to the style here. I love all their designs and seeing all the characters reimagined in that kind of style. And the old timey cover of Icky Vicky is great. This is one of my favorites, always a joy to watch. I always felt so bad at the end when his granddad starts talking about their adventure and Timmy's parents think he's gone senile and say they're never gonna have him over again. So sad. <laughs> Future Lost, though, I never cared for. It's just like action-packed, but instead of being an action movie, Timmy's in the future, right in the middle of a robot uprising. Way better than I remember it being. I like all the new designs like Robot, Cosmo, and Wanda, but the robots taking over the world thing was never something I cared about. I like his team up with Crocker, though. My dreams were shattered years ago. How many years ago? How old are you? Okay, and that. That is one of the best jokes in the series. I think it's so fucking cool that Nickelodeon let them not only make a Jimmy Neutron Fairly Odd Parents hour long crossover, but went on and let them make a second one the next year. Oh dear, this universe makes my hips look fat! What universe does it? 
This was always my favorite one out of the trilogy. Not only because Jimmy and Timmy actually spend time interacting this time, but also because they're still fucking he at each other. Us actually getting to see them fight this time. Again, though, it's weird because despite liking this series way more, I always wanted to see Jimmy win. Timmy is such a prick in these, it's like he doesn't register that the people of Jimmy's universe are actual real people. Timmy and Jimmy both just so happen to be throwing a Friday the 13th dance, and both want to ask Cindy out as their did. At this point in Jimmy Neutron's run, they heavily started leaning into them liking each other. I don't know what else to say that condenses this into just a couple minutes, I could go on forever, but it's just so fucking cool. Love how they bring in more villains this time around as well, with the anti-fairies teaming up with Professor Calamitous, even if his fusion with Jorgen at the end looks atrocious, yuck. This is the best of Season 5 so far, cheating I know, but it's amazing, I love it. Ah. Hi Mrs. Neutron. That's terrible. This is oddly one of the only episodes to not open on a title card. Also, in other news, Timmy the Barbarian sucks, it's so boring. Jorgen is telling a story about Timmy being an epic barbarian, trying to retrieve some chalice. Faster, dirty one! And comb your hair! And nag, 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 nag. Yeah, they got really lazy with their characterization around this time. The art is good, but if you know anything about me from these ranking videos, it's that I really don't care for these random what-if storybook kind of episodes. And what are you doing with your ear? Get off your neck and put it back on your head where it belongs. I also always hated when they started making all these jokes about putting Crocker's ear on his neck. Like, you know for a fact that was not intentional. Butch just fucked up in the design. <laughs> Timmy seriously injures Crocker, and so they have to get a substitute teacher, Miss Sunshine, who initially seems like the complete opposite of him, and everyone loves her. It's a great twist that this was all her intention. She's actually a huge bitch, but acted nice so they'd want her to stare. Turns out she's a fairy hunter too, what oh Doesn't feel as tense knowing that Timmy at any point could just, you know, wish things back to normal. I suppose at this point in the series they've given up on having excuses for these plot contrivances. But it's okay, she isn't that memorable of a villain. Probably around the same level as Mandai. This one's kind of forgettable. Damn, not even a second in and there he is, it's a new record. You can't do that, Butch. Once again, I love how every one of these specials focuses on a different villain. The Anti-Fairies got theirs in the Power Hour, and this time it's Norm the Genie, coming up with a plan to have Cosmo and Wanda quit their jobs as Timmy's godparents so he can become one and escape the lamp. He does this in a super clever way, by becoming Chester's genie to convince him to distract Timmy for the day, while he tricks Cosmo and Wanda into becoming pissed off at him. They don't really do a whole lot with Timmy here, his whole arc is that he's begun taking Cosmo and Wanda for granted, using their magic to combat his laziness like getting dressed and going to the bathroom. It's a pretty interesting idea I'm glad they try to explore, it results in a lot of sweet moments near the end too, when his plan actually succeeds and Timmy has to show how much he cares by sneaking into Fairy World to get them back. I always like the shot of them walking back to Earth using the rainbow so they can spend a bit more time together, it's sad. Oh yeah, it's uh, called Fairy Idol for a reason. What a fucking marketing trick, that shit's barely relevant. The whole American Idol parody is over and done with by the time there's still like 15 minutes left. The song is super catchy though, I love it. It's just too bad they couldn't get Norm Macdonald back. This is for sure the weakest of all the 45 minute specials we've had so far, but it's still pretty good. I actually own the VHS for the special, which is neat because it was the last one they made, I think. This is right when VHSs stopped being produced, so it's pretty expensive. Uh, we can do anything as long as we're doing it for some idiot human what rubbed our lamp. You can't do that, Butch! I can't believe we got two Jimmy Timmy Power Hours only a couple months apart, that's crazy. Being the third part of the trilogy, there is something a lot less special about it. I love how at this point all the characters have become so acquainted with each other that there's no importance put on them meeting again. Jimmy is just looking through dimensions like, oh look, there's Timmy. Are you nuts? Have you gone completely mental? You wanna hang out with me, the, the two of us together? Duh, maybe? Okay, sure. I really like that moment. There isn't even a real problem going on. They're so bored with each other that they decide to create their own supervillain that can actually challenge them. Surely, voiced by Jeff Garland of all people. They're such assholes here, it's wonderful. You don't even care that there's barely a plot. It's just fun seeing them do stuff like go inside Timmy's comic books, and the ending is visually great with them in this white void where everyone has a 2D drawing and a 3D plan. It's cool that they bring Edge and Chester into it too, considering the previous two were very Jimmy Neutron heavy, although I'd argue they have the worst designs in 3D. Also, you can really tell Jimmy Neutron was reaching the end of its run around this time, because 90% of this thing takes place in the Fairly Odd Parents universe. Overall, it is the worst Jimmy Timmy Power Hour, but that's like being the worst Jimmy Timmy Power Hour. At the end of the day, you're still a Jimmy Timmy Power Hour.
Gotta say, I was shocked to see how much I actually enjoyed Season 5. I always thought this is when it was in this shit, but no, a majority of these episodes were pretty alright. Some of them were even really good. The highs weren't as high, but the lows weren't really as low. We only really had that one episode, it's a wishful life, but even then, I don't think it's as bad as people say it is. Season 6 is where things change, though. This is the last season that I actively kept up with. It's weird, I'm watching some of these episodes for the first time in years that I only ever watched at her house because I'd never feel like rewatching them again. And it gives me this weird, creepy, nostalgic feeling of it being like around Halloween time where it's really dark early in the day, so it's like 4pm and it's cold in Ireland. And I'm just sitting in my grandmother's house doing my homework and watching Fairly Odd Parents. I don't know, I'm rambling, but it's, it's a weird nostalgic feeling. Point being, uh, she died at around season six, so I wasn't watching Fairly Odd Parents at her house anymore. So, uh, yeah, thanks for asking. All right, here we go. The moment everything changed. So, from what I can remember, the Fairly Odd Parents and Jimmy Neutron were both up for cancellation. But with the company who animated Jimmy Neutron going out of business after the Amp Bully, the Fairly Odd Parents was picked up again, with Butch wanting to do something massive to draw interest back in the series. And it resulted in the most watched episode in the show's entire run, with almost 9 million viewers. Dude, this was big. My mum watched it with me. Cosmo and Wanda suddenly want a baby out of nowhere, which will be the first fairy child in thousands of years. But with some convincing, Timmy wishes they would have one, leading to... This. I like that they bring in the Pixies and Anti-Fairies, who also just want to take the kid for themselves, but overall, this thing feels super dragged out in retrospect. I loved it at the time, but it's without a doubt the mark of this series' eventual downfall. They just got way too comfortable in trying to replicate the success of this one. Like, really, it's a fine special. And Poof isn't even the worst thing in the world, it's a BB, they don't do much. But it's more about what Poof represents. Also, this is when Cosmo's voice started getting way too high-pitched. I think it was fine up until now, but it's gone too far. He's become pretty insufferable. Wow, I can finally hear myself! Man, I sound like an idiot! Do I always sound like this? Not always, unfortunately. <laughs> I love that they didn't even bother reanimating the intro to accommodate for Poof being here, that seemed so obvious. So Cosmo and Wanda are worked to the bone trying to take care of Poof, and so Timmy decides to babysit him while the two go out and enjoy themselves for a bit. Pretty standard, probably the most obvious idea they could have done with this new baby stuff. Also, they've really started leaning into the cartoony slapstick with this show now, which is strange because the art style doesn't land itself towards that very well. It's cool seeing Dark Laser again at least, but like... He's just a Darth Vader parody, did we really need him coming back so frequently? And it's only gonna get worse. Still though, this is an okay episode on its own. Really highlights how little storytelling potential Poof provides though. Okay, I'm at least glad they didn't have another Poof episode along with the last. Shows that it won't be all about him now. Timmy's sick of getting such shitty haircuts, and so wishes for a cool stylish hairdo that could never be cut. You need a catchphrase. Something you say all the time, like, uh, what could possibly go wrong? Dad's barber will give me a great haircut. Nothing can possibly go wrong. Ugh. He accidentally wishes for it to have a personality, too, which results in it having a mind of its own and trying to take over the world. How did we get here? Once again, it's okay. I like the colors at the end. The purple sky looks cool, but it's for sure one of the most forgettable episodes of the entire series. Timmy has to go to the doctors to take care of his sore throat. <laughs> they did not want to keep track of Poof in this episode, they got rid of him within the first minute. Turns out Vicky is volunteering there and wants to rip out his tonsils painfully, so he's got to try and escape. It's better than the last two, but nothing anywhere near the best of the last couple seasons. Ah, full moon! Darn it, honey! I know I dropped my foot long around here somewhere! <laughs> Hope you find that shit hilarious, because it's gonna become his new catchphrase from now on. Ugh. Timmy's parents aren't taking him to see the Dim Steel Pirates baseball team, and so he wishes he was at the game himself, with Poof accidentally wishing them onto a real pirate ship. It's cool seeing a seaside town version of Dim Steel, but not much really happens. The characters mostly just stand around while Poof wishes for the situation to get worse and worse. Can Poof grant this wish? It'll be great! for him. Why not? What could possibly go wrong? Wait, is that really another catchphrase for him now? You made fun of that exact line like one season ago. It's just nothing special. It's the Fairly Odd Parents characters 
with pirates. That's it. Oh shit, I actually like this one. I always forget it came from this season. Pretty sure it's the last appearance of the Pixies too, so it's sort of fitting to have them as the villains along with the anti-fairies again. Competing against the fairies to see who's the best. Also, the winner gets to be Timmy's godparent, there's that as well. This definitely wouldn't have worked as a full-length special, but I'm at least glad they gave it double the time to have fun with the story. The Scott Hamilton cameo is funny too, it always blew my mind at the end with the live action moment. Why am I having this dream? Because I need a famous gold medal co-host and Brian Boitano is busy. The Fairly Odd Olympics is the best of season six. Hopefully this means things are looking up. Interestingly, I noticed in the opening Scott Fellows is now listed as an executive producer and not Steve Marmel, who I think used to be there. Again, creator of Johnny Test makes too much sense when you think about it. You could replace this whole episode with Johnny Test characters and it would feel the exact same. Timmy wishes he had a cool talking car like in this TV show he likes, but ends up finding a mystery to solve when Cosmo's mother is nowhere to be found. I find this one to be pretty boring, I don't really care what happened to her and it's mainly just one big car chase. But the writing has such a slow piece to it, with characters constantly just giving exposition, that it results in there being no flow to it, ruining any kind of tension. But the show has kind of always had that issue. The ending is such a shitty twist too, just that near the bottom. With Cosmo and Wanda being so busy with Poof, again, they give Timmy a wand to use for emergencies only, with it having a 10 wish limit. It's pretty fun seeing how much Timmy is able to stretch what is and isn't considered an emergency, with him immediately running out and needing to fend for himself for the rest of the day. One of the best of the season so far, but even then, nothing special, it's just okay. I will say I really like the ending though. The whole thing has been Cosmo and Wanda getting Poof ready for their first family photo, so I love that they include Timmy in it too by the end, that was nice. Remember what I said about them really liking to use Crocker later on? This is only the beginning. Timmy gets a device that allows him to combine objects together, with Crocker sneaking in and accidentally being combined with... Cheese powers. The whole thing hinges on you finding the word cheese funny. It's not. Also, is it just me or is the animation getting really good around this time compared to earlier? I don't know if they got a bigger budget or they just started refining the style more, but I don't know, some of the simplistic charm is lost in that, but still looks good. The machine that lets Timmy combine with stuff is a fun idea, but I wish they didn't use it as an excuse to focus on Crocker again. Timmy's been having trouble with technology for a whole couple hours, and so wishes for a world without it, sending everyone back to the Stone Age. I just wish they did something with it that wasn't a Liam Flintstones parody, considering, you know, they've done that in an episode before. They even call him the CM Neum, Timmy Turnstone. Timmy learns that technology is actually a great thing because at least it's better than living in the Stone Age. Wonderful. It's the same string of two or three jokes over and over again, where certain things haven't been invented yet, or it's him getting injured again and again. It's just lazy, there's nothing going on. For the second time in the series, which is surprising honestly, we've got another Christmas special. After nobody got what they wanted for Christmas, Timmy wishes that every kid in town had a magic letter that gave them one free wish. Everything going awry when Vicky causes them to multiply and everyone gets unseen with their wishes. Santa would never leave the North Pole and give up on Christmas! I've given up on Christmas! I had never seen this one before and was actually enjoying it up until the half-web point where Santa and his elves come to live with Timmy. I always hated that trope. It barely even feels like a Christmas special after, especially since Santa has appeared in plenty of regular episodes before. This one is pretty unremarkable, but not the worst thing ever. The song is okay too, but definitely one of the weakest of the show. I can't imagine Christmas without you. You're the greatest, most jolliest Christmas hero ever. Oh fuck, I have seen this one before. You ever have that thing where something seems completely alien to you until you hear a single sign bite that reminds you you've already seen it before? Just me? Okay. Back to Mark Chang. It's finally been one year since he arrived on Earth, before he's called back to his hometown to take over as king while his father is under threat of assassination, and so Timmy tries to find the attempted killer while the king takes over Timmy's place on Earth. This is a neat setup, but it's a little anticlimactic to immediately reveal it was Mandai, yet again, for like the fifth fucking time. Feels like it ends way too soon, they just bring Vicky in to see the dead, but it doesn't feel as if anything all that cool or interesting happened to get us here, just another boring space fight, one of the weakest of the season.
more Dark Laser. Again, I don't know why they like him so much. He's barely their character. He worked so well as an occasional appearance, not as a mean antagonist. I take the pixies or anti fairies over him any day. Especially considering that present him as being so incompetent, with Timmy easily stopping every attempt of his at taking over the world. Saying all that, I like this episode. <laughs> he tries to bring Timmy over to the dark side and so gives him one of his evil suits for the day. I like Timmy's evil design a lot, even if it does just become a retread of Nega Timmy. Although I think this one's a lot better. Near the top. Boy, a shirt. Oh shit, yeah, Poof is here. I almost forgot. He's barely done anything. Really bounces! Remember how we tried this with Timmy? He never bounced back. Poof is trying to learn how to shapeshift despite showing no signs of struggling at it before, and accidentally winds up being discovered by Timmy's parents, him not needing to treat him like he's his actual baby brother, while trying to find a way for them to give him up. I actually kind of like this one. Might be too soon for an episode about exposing Poof to humans, but what else can you fucking do with a thing? This is a solid episode. Timmy's been working Cosmo and Wanda to the bone. Again. And so Jorgen punishes him by sending him to Wishing Well, a retreat that teaches kids how to stop being such selfish pricks by doing menial tasks for themselves. Okay, I don't know what's going on right now, but I actually kind of like this one too. I enjoy the way Timmy works off the other two kids there, this dorky guy and emo girl. Makes me wish they would stop bringing back all their previous characters so much and experiment more with one-off ones. This is one of the best of the season, honestly. Smart idea too, I'm shocked I've never done anything like this before. Timmy's dad is making him wash his car, which is the same one from that older season episode, that was a nice touch. He winds up wishing for a car wash outside their house, but only issue is it works on anything, so people start using it to become younger, with Cosmo and Wanda becoming teenagers and Poof disappearing, which is a bad thing, I guess. Only one thing to do at a time like this! Destroy the car and win dad back! Uh... Yeah. I wish they didn't try and up the stakes so much by having dinosaurs and cavemen come back and stuff. Seems like a lame excuse to try and make it seem more extreme and action-packed. But it ain't a bad episode or anything, it's decent. Season 6 really hasn't been as terrible as I thought it would be so far. Bless you, Butch Hartman, for coming back to write such an okay episode. Wanda is... Yet again, pissed off that she's being run ragged with poof and so they invite all the fairies they know over and wish they were babies so he can socialize. I'm in love with Jack. Flop Jack, that is. They really want you to know he's gay. Just commit to it. This is another alright one. Poof's edition really hasn't been as bad as you think it would be, and hey, it looks like they've come up with at least a couple fun ideas to have with him. They use a lot of paper towels, spend too much time alone in their rooms, and say, don't bother me. I'm just gonna take these paper towels up to my room alone, so don't bother me. Really needed that masturbation joke in there, didn't ya? Timmy does the impossible and gets Vicky fired after his parents catch her destroying their property. It's weird, it suddenly switches to being from her perspective, struggling to get another job and winding up becoming mayor of Dimsdale somehow, with Timmy needing to stop her. It's weird how naturally of a switch up her character had. Early on, she was just a bitchy teenage girl, but now she's a straight up supervillain, enslaving the town and trying to kill Timmy. I think that change happened after Channel Chasers. It was so gigantic and monumental that you kind of have to keep topping yourself. Her becoming an evil spaceship riding overlord and Timmy needing to wish her back as a babysitter. Kind of an easy fix, but oh well. It's a fine episode, I guess, around the middle of the list. Timmy is pissed off about how lame the Crimson Chin comics have been getting, and so jumps inside the comic to see what's up. Apparently, he's lonely. Timmy needing to help his relationship issues by wishing for the love of his life. Only issue is, now he's pissed off that the book has suddenly become about him just doing romance stuff all the time. And so now he's gotta break them up by turning her into a villain that looks like a Danny Phantom character. This one's not that bad, actually. It's a cool concept. It's weird how the Crimson Chin has been the most consistent thing about this whole series. Near the top. Ah, uh, works for me. What do you mean, you'd fuck it, dog? Fitting to follow it up with a Catman episode now, they sure love their superheroes. Timmy lies to Catman and says he only has one of his nine lives left, and therefore has to try and find something safer for him to do so he stops hurting himself. I like them building off the lawyer joke from a while back by showing that Catman also calls on Timmy to be his personal doctor. Never go anywhere with strange men. Got it! <laughs> This is another pretty alright one. Season 6, honestly, has not been anywhere near as bad as I thought it would be. Sinky's tube! Like, keep running, man! 
The Turners are tight on money, and so his mum turns their place into a bed and breakfast, which opens Tammy up to sharing his heist with his enemies like Mr. Crocker, Dark Leaser, again, and Tootie, who we haven't seen in a while. We're probably just dreaming! This is a neat idea. Honestly, I'm glad they just combined all these episodes into one so we didn't have to take up a separate episode for each of them staying at his house, because you know they would have eventually done that. Much like the rest of season six so far, it's okay. Didn't overstay its welcome, which I'm thankful for. I'm still the king! You think you're the king? I'm the king! Collapse. It's Timmy's birthday, yet he's still only 10. But he's having a hard time celebrating as he knows it just brings him one year closer to losing Cosmo and Wanda. Well, and Poof, I guess. I like how they're revisiting this concept from Channel Chasers and applying it to how it affects him celebrating getting older. That's a, that's a really neat idea. Wait, you came up with that? This is a joke, of course it wouldn't be that nuanced. It was too good to be true. Instead, it's that Jorgen is coming to take away his fairies today. Which is strange considering Channel Chasers stated he would only lose them once he's 18, not 11. I mean, I mean 10. Like, I thought you lost the fairies when you didn't need them anymore, not because of some weird age limit. But hey, they brought Chip Skylark back to sing a Shiny Teeth remix, so that makes up for it, I guess. And here's a song from me, and it's royalty free. So the whole thing is just him trying to convince Jorgen that it's not his birthday and stopping his party. Took what could have been a really good episode and turned it into one that's just fine. Timmy's mom wants to do all this shit with him, keeping a close eye on him at all times while he's trying to throw the most epic party of the year. They were really trying to make that whole she worked as a secret agent gag a thing, but it kind of falls flat every time. But the rest is, much like every episode of season six, okay, I really don't know how the ranking for this is gonna look. When every episode's okay, none of them fucking are. I think if Timmy's mom didn't flip flop so much, the sweet ending would be a lot more emotional, but I don't know why I meant to care about her when she spends every other episode being an oblivious bitch. Why did I write bitch there? Okay guys, unfortunately, despite having another four seasons to watch, I think this is where the Fairly Odd Parents peaked in scope. Not quality necessarily, but from what I can remember, this was the last time they had a massive event. And fittingly, it's their biggest yet. The Wishology. Now you may have seen my whole video on this trilogy from like a year ago, but if you haven't, all you gotta know is this was their attempt at a three hour long Fairly Odd Parents movie, which is bad advertising because it's really just three separate movies all with the same villain. They took heavy inspiration from the way the original Star Wars trilogy was formatted, so that's a good frame of reference. I loved this a lot as a kid. They were my favorites out of the whole series for a long time because of how giant in scope they were. But I was disappointed upon revisiting them to realize that they are a fucking slog to get through. I would not recommend going through them one after the other. Give it a week or a month or a year or just don't watch them at all and just have someone on the internet feed you the information instead. How many hours are we into this? Anyways, the big beginning starts incredibly similar to Ever Catastrophe with a bunch of movie parodies until Timmy wakes up in a world where nobody remembers his name. Uh, I've had weirder mornings. No, not that one. As it turns out, this mysterious entity called the Darkness is after Timmy as he's the chosen one, with Timmy needing to find an ancient white wand to put a stop to it. As a beginning, it works well, the intrigue that's set up with nobody knowing Timmy is very interesting, and the piercing's all pretty good, and the kiss cameo at the end was even integrated well. If this were a standalone special, I would say it's another solid one, but the only issue is, Timmy defeats the Darkness, but we still have two hours left, with Brendan Fraser arriving as the true chosen one. So I guess we gotta see what happens next. The exciting middle part, in my opinion, is where the wishology starts to fall apart. The darkness returns, J just returns. Turns out there's a second wand Timmy needs to retrieve, with Cosmo, Wanda, Poof, and Jordan getting kidnapped and thrown into a cell with <gasps> all Timmy's friends and family. They're gonna learn about magic. Again? And so now it's up to Timmy to round up Mark Chang and a bunch of his enemies to try and rescue everyone and stop the darkness. 
again. There's some minor nitpicky stuff I could highlight, like, I'm not really a fan of Vicky, who is just, you know, a normal teenage girl going on this space adventure and barely questioning it. Like, she'd even be that fucking big of an asset anyway. It also seems like blowing your load to have Timmy casually reveal to Crocker he has fairies. Like, the prospect of him finding that out doesn't seem as impactful when you know this has been revealed to him in, like, five other episodes. But I guess that's why they treat it so nonchalantly, but at this point, it's like, how many more times can we do this? How many more times can he fucking learn that he's fairies? just comes off to me like it makes the world feel so much smaller in a way that all these characters have to revolve around Timmy in some way, shape, or form. I will say, seeing them all interact blew my mind as a kid. It felt like the series peaked here with the finale of Timmy and Trixie finally kissing and him sacrificing himself, but for some reason it's not really set up well. You know, there's still a lot here to like, but I can't help but feel the piece and kind of ruins it, with them doing the same running gags and phrases throughout the whole hour and feeling a tad directionless, just like we're doing the big beginning, but a different take on it. Let's just hope it picks up with a finale. I mean, I've watched it before, so I know already. After like a 10 minute build up to Timmy finding out he's inside the darkness, which is trying to keep him trapped, he's thrust into the final showdown with the darkness, where he, Cosmo, Wanda, his friends, and Brendan Fraser all have to stop it from taking over the world, along with defeating the darkness's robots, which it has for some reason, why robots? As they also start trying to take over the world for themselves, turning it into a robot utopia. Timmy stops the robots and finds out the darkness only sought him out because it knew that Timmy was the only one who could help it turn from the darkness to... The yellowness. Come on, you were so close to just being straight up Kingdom Hearts. Shut up! The final ending feels like one big 45 minute finale, which I guess that is what it is, but it leaves this whole thing feeling like it was dragged out for an eternity. Aber Catastrophe did that same thing in its third part, but it was one big action sequence between Timmy and Crocker. It felt more intense, more personal. It treats these three specials like they're different movies, so we have to have the big Act 1 setup all over again, whereas Aber Catastrophe just fucking picked up where they left off. It's like the writers were desperately trying to fill this three hours rather than having an idea that would take three hours to execute. It's also just missing anything for Timmy to do. He has no arc. Ever Catastrophe struggled with this too, but Channel Chasers, Schools Like the Musical, and Fairy Idol, I felt all benefited from including something about Timmy's character, whether it be learning to accept growing up or even something simple like realizing he's selfish and takes people for granted. I don't know, the Wishology overall is fine and a marvel for sure. I can only imagine how difficult it was to produce this in the one year Nickelodeon demanded. Probably didn't leave much room for writing. It would have worked as a decent finale to the series, I'll say that much, but as is kind of boring. And that season 6, gotta say, wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Maybe I have a stronger opinion on it because of that, and it is still the worst season, but a lot of these episodes would have fit right at home in with season 4 and 5. Not that much has changed other than the animation and the inclusion of that uh, poof. Get ready though, I know I keep saying this, but season 7, that's where everything changes. Because we're going to get a new fucking antagonist introduced and they're going to fucking abuse the shit out of them. We're going to see them in every other episode. Get ready, a new main character. Just, just get ready. Here we go, for every fairy there's an anti-fairy to match, and so it's here we learn, and unfortunately see, that anti-Wanda is pregnant with anti-Poof, who is then never called anti-Poof ever, instead being called Foop, for no real reason, why break your rules now? It's story time, father! Tell me more of my new arch enemy. You know that's Eric Biza, the current voice of Bugs Bunny? Humble beginnings. Foop is evil, but also a baby. That's his personality. He'll say something evil, but look incompetent through being, you know, a baby. Lots of storytelling potential there, I tell you what. Because of this new threat, they also have to make Poof a little more cognitive, and so now he's gonna become a cool action baby like near the end of Wishology and battle with Foop. I'm sure a lot of people find this cute, like a little baby doing action stuff, or at least Butch thought it was cute, but not for me. It comes off so lame, why would you focus your Y7 series targeted towards boys around babies so much? This special isn't terrible, just incredibly boring. It's just one 22 minute build up for their fight. Foop would have been fine but forgettable as a one-off antagonist, but I'm just not excited about what's to come. <laughs> 
Okay, I'm pumped for this one. When I met Butch last year, this is an episode he specifically brought up in conversation because of how apparently good it was. Uh, one of my favorites is Add and Dad. Did you ever see that one? Timmy's dad is too busy working all the time. He's also not a pencil pusher anymore, I guess. And so Timmy wishes he had multiple clones of his dad to keep him company. It follows a pretty predictable through line from there. He gets overwhelmed from all the dads wanting his attention. But overall, it's a pretty non-spectacular one. I will say, though, I noticed they have a lot more scenes where they try to shade the characters, and I appreciate the extra effort. Makes the darker scenes and close-up shots look a lot better. Add and Dad is just okay. Sorry, Butch. We love our Timmy dolls! Hope this monkey can fly a plane! What could possibly go wrong? Okay, you're just doing it on purpose at this point. Timmy's going to the Squirrely Scott's camping trip. I'm glad, in retrospect, they've barely done any of these Scott episodes. Issues arise, however, when they have to share their camping trip with Timmy's mom and her troop. And so they have a contest to see who can get to the top of the mountain first. What are you gonna do? Disguise yourself as a girl? They'll never fall for that! Hooray! I got knee socks! I haven't mentioned it before, but they make a ton of gad jokes with Sanja. Stay classy, Butch. Also, this is Sanjay, by the way, never mentioned. Never been a fan of the generic boy versus girls episodes? There is some unspoken mandate out there that states everyone must be written in the exact same way every time. The boys are cocky and have trouble the whole way through, while the girls are sweet and kind and have an easy time the whole way up. The ending is a little more interesting, with the animals going rabid and attacking the girls while Timmy's dad saves them, but it doesn't save this episode from being pretty, uh, you know, freaking shit. <laughs> Poof wants entertainment and so wishes Timmy and Vicky were a cat and mice like Tom and Jerry. Doesn't come off that original when you remember Channel Chasers did this exact parody with Vicky and Timmy, except there, they at least attempted to replicate the style. Also, is it just me or is the show slowly losing its simplistic charm it once had? That goes without saying, but I'm not realizing how different the writing has become, just the setups, you know? Back in its early days, we'd see Timmy facing an issue most kids would have, then Timmy would make a wish to try and fix it before realizing it was more trouble in its work or some moral like that. And I don't mind them trying to switch things up, but the wishes seem so secondary now. It takes like half the episode for Poof to even do it. I'm just not realizing in the last episode, I don't even think Timmy made a single wish. We are watching them run out of ideas in real time. Well, Timmy, you want an all-expense-paid stay at Crocker's Military Academy for one. What the fuck happened to her voice actress? Fun fact, did you know her voice actress is blind and had to read her lines through Brielle? That's neat. Anyways, Crocker wants to send Timmy off to military school so he can attempt to capture his fairies. Again. And so Timmy has to control his sleeping parents like puppets to decline the invite. What is the wish here? Season 7 hasn't been terrible so far. Again, the show really has been a lot better than I expected in its later seasons, but this stuff is just so forgettable near the bottom. We've got to get this bottle in Poof's mouth! Which one? Crocker wants an heir to Eden in his plan of taking over the world, and so he needs to find a child. Ugh. Creepiness aside, he winds up in possession of Poof, not realizing he's a fairy because everyone in this show is an idiot now. Even Timmy at this point, he starts putting missing posters all over time, but like, Poof is a fairy, you're willingly exposing that. <sighs> whatever. They somehow managed to pull it together and make this a decent episode by the end. I actually don't mind it at all. The ending is sweet. With Crocker and Poof bonding before he accidentally finds out they're a fairy, deciding to let him go back home. Wow, he wasn't completely one note for a second. Best of the season either way. Wasn't expecting a Freaks and Geeks reference, I thought I only watched that show. You're wearing underwear! Cosmo and Wanda take Timmy to a cool Greek god party happening in the Clydes, just cause he wants to. After destroying the place, everyone now has to come to party at his house, and so he's gotta make sure they don't break his parents' priceless collectibles. This is another decent one. Even if Wanda's more important role in it highlights how strained her voice has become, Cosmo and her voices have become way more high-pitched and whiny and I can't stand it. Freaks and Greeks is going near the top of the list, surprised they hadn't gone into Greek mythology before. Isn't that the bully from Danny Phantom? Like, isn't it? 
You look it up, I'm not Googling. Then he really wants to watch a new movie about a boy turning into a fly, but isn't allowed to. And so instead has Poof put his head on the body of a fly so he can go watch it. Unknowingly, Poof also put the fly's head on Timmy's body, and now the tongue is after him. It's okay, this is yet another idea that's been done a million times, but it works. The animation is great, the backgrounds and lighting are both stellar here. If there's one thing I can give these later seasons, it's that they look good, that's something. Mutilated, frozen, or burned at the stake. Timmy is sick of how safe Cosmo and Wanda's wishes have gotten to accommodate for Poof. Why didn't we get all these Poof-influenced episodes in the season where he was introduced? And so Timmy wishes for a temporary fairy, which ends up being Jorgen. And so Timmy has to... <sighs> Do I even need to explain what happens in the story? You already know where it's going from that idea alone. He is too dangerous. Remember when Timmy, like, went to school and stuff? And you have to do what I say! I wish you were wearing nothing but a baby diaper! <sighs> okay, so Crocker goes to a therapist who uses hypnosis to make him no longer believe in fairies, which completely reforms him and for some reason puts his ear back on his head. Looks better on his neck. This would be a good thing, however all the magic in fairy world goes away because they have been harnessing Crocker's belief of fairies in order to use their magic. What happens when he dies? Why would you make a society, an ecosystem that revolves around not letting anybody know you exist, while having your primary source of power coming from people being aware that you exist? So what happens now that Crocker stopped believing in fairies and won't spaz out anymore? Isn't that considered offensive now? Can't you not say that anymore? Do better, Timmy. This episode sucks. There's been like five of these in a row making the same joke about Cosmo shitting himself. Who is writing these? After being chastised for being, well, an idiot, Cosmo sets off and unintentionally becomes a superhero for Dimsdale. We miss you! Yeah, and it's boring without you around. And British! I'm surprised at how little they've done episodes focusing on Cosmo and Wanda as the leads. Makes this one stand out a lot more, but it's another one of those tropes every cartoon has. I usually don't mind that, not everything needs to be completely original, but this one doesn't do a whole lot to stand out from the others. It does exactly what you think. Timmy and Wanda realize Cosmo adds fun and chaos to their life again, while Cosmo realizes that being a superhero is fucking hard, who cares? The ending is fun, but that's about it. Timmy wishes that his dad was a good magician for the school's talent act, which results in Mr. Crocker thinking he's a fairy godparent and taking him on a tour across America to share his magic with the world. I saw Trixie and Francis in the background of this one for a few seconds, and it reminds me how we're never gonna see them have any real plot relevance anymore, just empty background husks of former characters. I think how much they drive home the fact that Timmy's dad is actually called... Timmy's dad is pretty funny in this context, even if they've made that joke a million times, but overall though, this is one of the better ones of the season, I actually didn't mind it at all. Timmy's grandpa and grandma are visiting for their Yaksgiving holiday, and they're totally gross, ew. Did the choir just say yak attack? We did! Timmy wishes they never left their home country, which rewrites the future, leaving him in the town of Eustinkistan, where apparently inside hasn't even been invented yet. His granddad looks terrible, I hit the two whites in his eyes, it makes him look like my old avatar, but at least I was 15. Timmy Turnip is a shit episode. They do fucking nothing with this new future, we spend the whole time behind one background there, it's so boring. There he fucking is, it's the man himself. When did Timmy's voice lose its raspiness? He sounds so much older now, I hate it. For his music class in school, Timmy wishes he were a talented musician, mainly for the purpose of being famous and loved, with his dad getting pissed that he now lives in his son's shadow. This is another fun one, I like the visuals a lot. I love the posing of these newer seasons, they get a lot more creative with it. As well as how far they go with showing Timmy's increasing ego, best of the season so far. Yeah, the Timmy 2-pack was the highlight though. Twice in one episode, damn. NFT is awesome! What a fiend! Timmy saves Vicky from being crushed by a steamroller, what the fuck? And so now she's banished from her evil babysitter organization. Yeah, let me think 
about it for a minute. I hate that they established that. The idea it's a bunch of bitchy girls is fine, but to imply this has been there from the start of the series is really annoying. This isn't that bad of an episode, but we've already seen Vicky being nice to him, like twice already. Did we really need it again? Look! Vicky and the Browns are stuck! Looks like there's only one thing to do! has the chicken poofs, which turns him into a chicken along with anyone he interacts with. Running throughout the time to avoid the doctor, who of course is just Butch Hartman again. Why does every poop episode have to revolve around the characters chasing him throughout the town in some way? It's really not that much different just by making him a chicken. I like seeing more of Rip Studwell, but all this does is remind you he's yet another character that revolves around telling one joke over and over. This one's going near the bottom. The word chicken is not that funny. It's Valentine's Day, and Timmy wants to use one of Cupid's arrows to help him get a date with Trixie for the school dance, one of the last episodes featuring her. Sanjay doesn't have a date! <laughs> Timmy! Meet my date, Kimmy! They think him being gay is really funny. Oh, hi, Veronica. Bye, Veronica. It is just Cosmo fucking up at shooting her the entire time and hitting somebody else so we can make a couple hilarious jokes about them loving something random and epic. Makes it feel like the plot never gets off the grind, just meandering around here for ages. Not a great episode, but but hey, at least it feels a little more in line with the older seasons, at least. <laughs> Dana Carvey guest stars as Cosmo's secret agent brother, who's just a Liam James Bond parody. Feels dumb to base your entire character around finding the word schnozmo funny, but hey, I guess this is the same show with a character called Blonda. Honestly, for one of these later episodes, I actually kind of like it. He's a fun character, being this freeloader who's always trying to scam his family. This one's going right above the middle of the list. Wasn't as bad as I thought. Timmy wishes for a super cool pencil that never runs out. While going to his dad's work with him, I guess he works at a pencil company again. With it promoting him to a position even above his dad's, becoming his new boss. You know, wouldn't a pencil that lasts forever be a bad thing for a pencil company since it means folks would only need to buy one pencil? Whatever. This is a good idea for an episode, but by the time this happens and Timmy gets the promotion, there's only like three minutes left. Nothing happens other than he fires his dad, but immediately his wish backfires off screen and so he has to hire him back. Wonderful. Pretty weak. I actually remember this being one of the last episodes I ever watched of the series on TV when it first aired. Timmy wants to make his dad proud by helping him win a soccer game, but because he can't wish to win a competition, he has Pooh sneak inside his head to control him without anyone knowing. I look at this the same way I do something like Kung Timmy. We're just watching Timmy do a sport, but you know, it's fun and visually different, so I appreciate it. Near the top. Poof is sad that nobody wants to play with him, despite just about every episode having to accommodate towards him in some way. And so he decides to go up to Spius, hanging out with the Yugo Batinian Queen, where they can get anything they want. You know, because everyone's afraid of the nice things, we're still doing that gag. This is one of their better Spiesalian episodes, honestly. They're doing more than just telling one joke with them, with Timmy and Co needing to come to the planet to convince her to give Poof back. <laughs> Silly women and their emotions. I like it, this is a solid one. Having less and less to say about these. Poop has miraculously escaped from prison, oh joy! Now he wants revenge on Poof, wanting to have him put inside an evil playpen that'll send him far away once inside. Who actually likes all this BB shit? It's just one of those episodes where a character keeps blaming the bad stuff on the protagonist and we're meant to care that they're getting in trouble, I just, I just don't. At least it ends with the promise of Poop being gone forever. Yeah, right. Timmy wishes he could be the teacher's pet like Edge Air, with Poof accidentally turning him into a literal pet, with Crocker taking Hamster Timmy down to his key for testing, with him planning on fusing himself with a bunch of animals to help him get fairies or something. Yeah, I know! It's almost like I could reach out and poke this kangaroo! This one's alright, but again, it only reminds me of how different the stories are approached now. 
Like him wishing to be the teacher's pet does seem like something that would have done in like season two or something. But it's like we get to see this classic plot approached from their modern writing for the series, where it's more about the action and adventure over Timmy learning some lesson. I don't know, I just wish they had a better balance of that like season four and five did. Also, what the fuck with the random Remy Bucks of Plenty name drop? That came out of nowhere. Didn't even show him. <laughs> Timmy learns how hard it is to be a mum when he switches brains with her for a day. Turner, welcome to Shea Francis. Today's specials are the broken leg of lamb and the cracked ribs. They couldn't even bring back his original voice actor. Turns out being a mum is hard, who could have guessed? This is an okay episode, I like the stuff with his mum more than him honestly. Going around the middle of the list. You know I'm not exactly impartial towards Ireland references, so maybe it's just my bias in saying this one? It's not too bad. Crocker, who might as well be the main character by now with how often he appears, decides to switch up his obsession from berries to... leprechauns. It was that easy for him to change it. I captured a leprechaun! Wait, maybe I should say something more Irish! Shiver me timbers! He winds up catching Cosmo, thinking he's a leprechaun, who gives Crocker a pot of gold to buy anything he wants, and so they've gotta get it back before the leprechauns he stole it from kick their shit in. His mind doesn't reset by the end, so I guess they're just cool with him having certain proof magical creatures exist. Cool. While on their trip to Hawaii, Timmy wishes his parents were great surfers so he gets all the social points around the beach. Dude, you can't come to our luau. It's like reserved for surfer dude. What the fuck is that design? I wish they didn't take it to such an extreme. It goes in a weird direction, with Jorgen coming into the picture to warn Timmy that because of his wish, his parents are stuck in limbo. He wished for both of them to be the best surfers ever, and so they'll forever be locked in competition to see who's better. The idea of a wish paradox is actually really cool. Just wish it were handled in a more interesting way. Probably could have done something more fun with the Turners going to Hawaii. Timmy's parents start to hear Cosmo in their highs and think he's a ghost, creating their own ghost hunting business to capture him. Pretty sure Butch has another show for this same concept, but whatever. Just a worse version of the one where they become superheroes. They're dumb and stupid at their jobs, but Timmy helps them succeed. Yippee. Should we look for ghosts in Mr. Crocker's house? Nah, just blow it up. <laughs> I fell in and out of sleep while watching these, and it auto-played like the next 20 episodes, so now I gotta sit through them again. Perfect. Timmy's dad is exposed for being an idiot. This is news, I guess. We learn that he dropped out in fifth grade, and so in true sitcom fashion, he joins Timmy's classroom to finish school. What happened to these shots of the school? They used to be fucking packed, now it's a goddamn ghost town. This episode sucks, it has no direction. He just fucking leaves again right away, and then does one task to pass. I think Timmy's dad has had so many good moments early on, that that I think just sticking him in an episode saying dumb stuff just automatically makes him funny. So there's a big contest between the fairies and anti-fairies, with anti-Cosmo trying to steal Jorgen's grandmother's famous briny recipe. It's nice seeing the anti-fairies again for one of the last times, but I wish they used them for something cooler than a bake-off. The rules are so contrived too, apparently it's always been a thing where whoever wins the Bake Off gets to have godchildren. Yeah, that's always been here. This is a fucking boring one. The fake costume gag was fun and set up well, but that's about it. What is this? A good Fairly Odd Parents episode? What are the odds? Timmy's mom finds out him and his dad have been throwing away her cooking for years because of how shit it is, and so Timmy wishes she were a five-star chef. That's a great idea. Reminds me of the one with his mother's garden, the hamster who died while he was at summer camp. 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 Damn, remember those jokes? I missed that. This is a really good episode, though. Top of season 7. If you enjoyed the older seasons, you'd probably like this one, too. Got a really good twist at the end as well, where Timmy swallows his pride and actually eats his mom's food for once, only to realize it tasted good the whole time, even though it looked like trash. The Turners are headed to space on a rocket ship. I looked away from the screen at that part. Either way, they end up on Dark Laser's ship. 
He tricked them into coming up so he could keep them trapped in a human zoo, just like the Simpsons episode. Just as bad here, too. It's the same tired jokes we've been seeing time and time again. They make a joke here where Cosmo figures out the plan immediately, and Wanda is like, Oh, wow, that is so not like your character to be smart. Then he says something dumb in return. But it's not that surprising for him to say something smart when you made that same joke in the Fly episode and like 50 other times. Fun visuals, but this plot is just nothing. It feels like these ideas come from what would make the most enticing special trailer the week before it airs. Timmy hasn't gotten an invite for Trixie's costume party, and so he gets one of Mark Chang's fakeifiers, now called an eye fake, so he can have a red costume, so she'll have to fall in love with him. And then I said, the aristocrats! <laughs> <laughs> Did they really reference that? Do not look up Aristocrats joke, it's horrible. <laughs> some of the costume gags are funny with how they disguise some of them, but it's really just Timmy's ship-shifting thing fucking up in front of her a bunch and needing to fix it. It's okay. Jorgen is sick with the hiccups and needs to find a relative who can oversee his duties, where it's revealed that Cosmo and Jorgen are actually distant cousins. Liam. <laughs> at the very bottom. Remember when Jorgen was an antagonist and not just their friend? It's similar to the Pixies one where we see Cosmo in power, but they focus more on Timmy, which I like. Him being a jerk and taking advantage of Cosmo to make rule-free wishes. One of the better episodes of the season once you get past the plot. Look, it's the magic disappearing headband. <laughs> Timmy tries to scare Poof with a horror story, and so to get revenge on him, Cosmo and Wanda tell him if they stay in the dark too long, they'll turn evil and try to eat him, right after he wished all light in the world would go out. And so now he's gotta make it till morning without dying. Like five nights at Frick. The whole gimmick here is that 90% of the episode takes place in complete darkness, us only seeing eyes for a majority of it, and your mind filling in the blanks with all the sound effects and descriptions. And I picked a bad time to smear my naked body in cat food! Dad's naked? Reminds me of the one where Timmy wishes there was no sign. I like this one a lot, actually. Makes the odd time that do show us what's happening a lot more impactful. Light Side is one of my favorites of the season. Nice to see them try a gimmick like this again. Someone please make an edit of the crying child addressed as Timmy. <laughs> Timmy's dad gets the family stranded on a deserted island, and so Timmy has to just sit around wait for his dad to get him back home, it's not really the focus. I actually have nothing to say about this one, it's just fucking uninteresting. It's just us seeing everyone meander around doing beach and jungle stuff until the plot demands they wrap things up. Throw in a giant bomb to up the stakes, oh wow, don't care. Timmy's parents are also in like every episode now, what the hell? His dad is so sick of dealing with the modern age, and so they become farmers instead. Damn, season 7 is just sitcom central. But it's not a total loss. I borrowed these clothes from a sleeping munchkin. Uh, at least I think he was sleeping. He wishes his dad's farm was good, but is pissed that he has to do all the work, eventually destroying the place by mistake while Cosmo, Wanda, and the other one look for their wands. One of the worst of the season, just gnawing. Crocker's got his own talk show where he talks about monsters being real, with him heading to Timmy's house to find some. Apparently monsters just love this stuff! I'm gonna be a star! By the way, I'm not calling you daddy. Just a bunch of disconnected gags based around him being in a house full of monsters, then getting his own show where he's still just getting attacked by monsters, until we reach 11 minutes and the credits roll. This is a pretty terrible episode, I'm so sick of Crocker. Too much Crocker. Okay, so it's time for Poof to go off to Spellementary School to learn how to use his powers. And oh boy, Foop is in his class, just our luck. Cool, Leprechaun Kids! Faith, Bagura, here's your lunch money! God, that sucks. They put a lot of effort into the unique designs and school setting just for 11 minutes, which is commendable, but it's just more fucking baby shit. Poof is not that interesting of a character to carry an entire episode by himself. Everyone likes him and he hates Foop. That's it. This Star Wars parody is so lame and dated. We find out at the end of every school that once the bell rings, everything resets. What sticks? It's a literal status quo machine.
This is another one Butch told me was his favorite, with them devoting an entire episode to the running gag about Timmy's dad hating Dinkelberg, Mr. Turner trying to prove that he's evil. This is like that My Leg episode of Spongebob, they know this joke is funny between fans, and so they think just saying it over and over again for 11 minutes straight will create the funniest episode in the series. I like the ending where it's revealed that Dinkelberg pretended to be a supervillain just to let his dad think he was right, he's just a genuinely nice guy, although it does ruin some of the magic to have him be aware Timmy's dad hates him, but either way, this is a super mediocre way to end what has been a painfully long season. <laughs> Season 7 wasn't the worst thing in the world, but it was a fucking slog. Remember when we watched season 1, you know, back when the show was good, and it only had 7 episodes in their first season? I'm pretty sure season 2 and 3 had under 20 as well, why do we need this many? I guess there was some scheduling conflict going on around that time. I know from the way Butch describes it, Nick were very on and off about whether or not they even wanted the show to keep going at this point. And so, we have weird issues looking back, like the entirety of our next season, Season 8, which consists of only 5 five episodes, but every single one is a special event. Oh, don't even worry, because then we get season nine, which is fucking 52 episodes. Either way, season seven, not terrible, but I can see the fucking quality thinning. I can see it. So, remember that spectacular Spellementary School episode from, oh, what was it, two episodes ago? Well, Len knew you wanted more. And so here we have Love Triangle, a 25 minute special where we see Poof and Foop fighting over this new girl. Take you all night to come up with that one? Fortunately for me, I have a very strong immune system. Would not be surprised if, much like the Crash Nebula pilot, this was some lame attempt from Butch to see if there was enough interest in maybe making this a full spin-off series. There wasn't. Hey, I can at least see how Crash Nebula could have been a show. This is just pure shit. How did six people write this? It's the same three or four running gags repeated throughout the whole thing. This is not a good sign of how these upcoming specials are gonna turn out. That no one understands. I've already made a whole video about this 45 minute special before, so let's not beat around the bush. It's horrible. It's Timmy's one millionth wish and all of Fairy World is celebrating. Thought Timmy was encouraged not to make pointless wishes, but oh well. After about 20 minutes of build up, we learn about some horrifying truth. That Timmy secretly wished that everybody would stay the same age forever, so he would never lose his godparents. 50 years ago. When did you make this wish? 50 years ago? This is just ripe for those shitty fan theory TikToks like, is Veronica actually a fairy since she has pupils like Cosmo and Wanda? No. A bunch of characters had that. Dumbass. Oh, did you know in an episode they revealed that Fairly Odd Parents took place over the course of 50 years? It's dog shit. Also, I like that Crocker shows in this episode that he casually just has proof fairies exist. Why wouldn't he show that to someone? Isn't that what he wanted this whole time? He even remembers that he lost them back in season three. Where have you been? Everyone knows it was the day I lost my fairy! How do you know this? Also pretty sure this is the last time we see Jail Leno was the Crimson Chin. God, this one's depressing. It's just the most boring, stretched out piece of shit ever. You can tell how little they cared about the show now when they introduce a land where all of Timmy's previous wishes are banished to, and there's like two things. Come on, that was such an easy attempt at fan service. Everyone gets old, and Timmy needs to find a way to get everything back to normal. Cue 20 minutes of old people jokes. Did you know that old people are old? Remember Channel Chaser spending its whole hour establishing Timmy accepting growing up and losing his godparents? Us seeing that growth by witnessing the great future he has as Alec Baldwin? All undone, I guess. For a marketing stunt. Cool. It doesn't even make sense! The big deal is that every wish needs to be accounted for, but Foop finds Timmy's secret wish through a document listing it. So it was accounted for then! This is my least favorite episode of the whole series by now. Bad setup, a bad song, a bad piecing, bad ending. I hate that Foop is the antagonist again. Such a cheap special, I despise it. So, remember that episode where Timmy wished for a bunch of clones of his dad? Well, Butch Hartman loved it so much he gave it its own 22 minute sequel. The dads want a mom, and so come in and beat Earth because they need moms like that one movie.
We've come for the creature you call Mom! No! You have a perfect civilization! Why would you want to add a woman to it? Hey, remember that one episode where Timmy had a bunch of people who wanted to kill him, and so he just made a bunch of clones of himself for them to have? Do the same thing. Invasion of the Dads is the most forgettable special of season 8. Thankfully, that doesn't mean the worst, just has nothing special about it. Didn't really need them to revisit this idea. So, because everyone's life revolves around Timmy in some way, Vicky, Crocker, Dark Laser, and of course, Foop, all team up to try and stop Timmy, calling themselves the Losers. Nick Tando mentioned a great point in his series retrospective, where when all these villains know each other and get together over their mutual hatred for Timmy, it makes everything feel so small. Timmy being at the center of the universe kind of ruins that whole average kid thing. Again, where is the correlation between a Darth Vader parody and just a girl? Why would they ever get along? Call in to say, I love you. Tell us again why you had to dress up to make the phone call. I literally almost vomited there now. Oh my god, talking about this episode. They are incompetent, that's the joke. The implication that Vicky is the only one able to rival him and succeed makes everyone else feel so pointless. Where's the tension? Why would I ever care about any of these guys as threats from this point on? Me it even worse because Vicky barely even appears in I. Where's she been the past couple dozen episodes? She doesn't even appear in this one until it's over halfway through. The special sucks. Why doesn't Crocker act surprised seeing Poof? He's a fairy, he wants that, that's all he wants. Okay, this is an episode I hear a lot about, people saying how it's actually really good. It's not. Like, it's not bad or anything, the idea is fine, but it's mostly brought down by the writing. Timmy's parents find out about Cosmo and Wanda, and the other one. And so Timmy has to make sure Jorgen never finds out to try and see if he could integrate his family life with his fairy life. Got a lot of nice moments. Cool seeing Timmy finally having a perfect family. And the ending where his parents accept having their memory wiped, that was nice. Even if the implication is pretty fucking shit. Oh, so you're telling me there's literally no threat of Timmy exposing his secret to the world because he's able to just wish that they forgot? Great. Also, the loophole that you can tell anyone about your fairies unless Jorgen finds out sucks. Seems like such a shitty way to have this plot make sense. Boy, I bet they really wish they hadn't been so specific with the rules early on, or they could have gotten away with all of this. But the first half ruins it all. It's just shitty investigation jokes with his parents and exposition. I don't care, his parents have gotten so unfunny, they're too brain dead. If this episode were 11 minutes long, it would have been a lot better, but as is, it's not bad, I can see why people like it, it's just too little too late for me. Really? I thought I was the only one who liked nuts in my lemonade! <laughs> Timmy, I love these nuts! What can I really say about Season 8? It was a bunch of pretty bad specials and one or two ones that were fine. This does mark some kind of turning point for the series, however. Next season is when things get really shameless. Other than one or two episodes, I've seen basically nothing from this point on, so... Going into uncharted waters, wish me luck. Oh my god, it's finally widescreen! So weird seeing all this extra spies! And poof now in the intro! It's just too bad that this is when they introduce, you know, another mean character. Okay, so now we're at the point of inexcusable shit. Butch Hartman had the bright idea to introduce a magic dog to the Fairly Odd Parents to be the fifth mean character. After seeing everyone have a pet, Timmy wants one too, like a spoiled brat. And so he gets Sparky, this ultra cool, snarky, motorcycle riding dog who talks with a very, very annoying voice. Speak! What do you want me to say? I know a lot of words, because I just ate a dictionary. The whole thing is just about him getting the dog and it messing things up, and Timmy needing to apologize for chastising him for ruining the time. Glad we have a new idiot character who can do no wrong, just what we were missing. Also, just want to reiterate, after all this, it is super jarring seeing the show in HD now. The colors are way too saturated, and the extra room really highlights how much dead space these backgrounds result in. Cosmo's voice has also gone up an octave. If you go on vacation, would you mind if I go to an abandoned amusement park and investigate a haunted roller coaster? And they curved out the edges, oh come on, why? Paramount Plus for some reason didn't make sure these episodes were uploaded with fucking audio, and so it's completely silent, great. 
I want to think that shows just how few people have decided to watch this to even realize that. Anyways, Timmy wishes that his dad were replaced with Dinkelberg as the Squirrely Scout troop leader. Remember when Timmy looked up to his dad? It's okay, it follows the same formula as Superbike, where Timmy realizes he should sacrifice his own happiness to make his dad happy instead, just in a much worse way. We'll probably end up around the middle of the Season 9 list, it was shorter than the last at least. Cosmo gets stuck inside a genie lamp, which makes his dad think he has a genie now, and so now he has to make wishes for him. Once again, it's fine. The whole amnesia plot with Cosmo is a lame, but the rest is okay. One of the rare cases I don't mind his parents interacting with magic. Mr. Crocker finds out that Timmy has gotten another fairy, you know, the dog, and so he's coming over to Timmy's to try and find Sparky. It's like their mindset when creating a new character for the show was something as lazy as, perfect, now we can have an episode where they meet Crocker, then we can do one where they meet Vicky, then Mark, then, uh, the only thing that can make this worse is a large sewer worm. <laughs> Boy, these jokes sure write themselves. I'm noticing now that they keep trying to find more and more ways to get rid of Cosmo and Wanda's wands for the sake of conflict. Usually they gotta rhyme that with the rules, but it feels like in every other episode now we have to shove in some reason as to why they can't use their magic. This time it's revealed off screen they were just put in the dishwasher. This episode's terrible. I'm sick of them just thinking Crocker can carry an episode on his own without coming up with something interesting for him to actually do. What happens when you mix whites with colors? What? Our holiday fruitcake came early this year, and it's huge! I'm not a fruitcake! I'm just a little different. What is with all these jokes now? Thank God we're back to a somewhat grinded episode for once. I'm glad they remember Timmy goes to school. He realizes Steph is graded on a curve, and so wishes everybody was way dumber than him to make him look better by comparison. Actually, I like this one. Not anything compared to the classics we used to get, but it makes me wish we got more episodes with Timmy just doing kid stuff. I forgot Edge and Chester were even here. Somehow Poof is now two years old, which has turned him into a spoiled brat, and so they have to wait for it to pass within the next 12 hours. Only issue is... Poop comes over to try to team up with him and teach Poop how to be evil. I don't care about Poof or Foop. I think I've made that clear. Can I just ask what the fucking point in Sparky was beyond the initial reveal episode? He barely does anything in any episode where he's not the star. He just sits around occasionally reminding you he exists. And when they focus on him, you barely remember Poof exists. They can't handle all these characters. This episode isn't the worst thing ever, but it's gonna be near the bottom of the list. I have no desire to ever watch this again. You know, if there's anything I can give these later seasons, it's that the title cards have picked up in quality a lot. They used to just be mostly crappy model sheet edits. Ugh. Oh boy, we're finally at the point in the series where Timmy has his own smartphone. Who needs fairies when you have an iPhone? Timmy wishes for one after seeing everybody else having one. What 10 year old has a smartphone? Oh god, that's sad to think of it. <gasps> it has that early 2010s humor like, <laughs> There is an app for everything! And they don't take long to establish that the thing is actually evil and wants Timmy to throw his life away using it all the time. The dynamics are getting all out of whack, talking about Trixie texting him party invites and Edge was invited too, like what? It's like we're seeing new writers come in who don't even know or care about the established rules. It feels like a weird new show. Timmy realizes how much trash is around Dim's deal, and so wishes that the animals living in it would be smart enough to put the trash away themselves. I don't get why Crocker is trying to see if fairies exist in it. You know, he's trying to find out if Timmy has fairies, despite him literally meeting and talking to his fairy dog a couple episodes ago. Nothing reset by the end. Guys, you gotta poop them back to normal! We can't! Cosmo threw out our wands during Litter Day weekend! Yep, of course he did that off screen. Another bad episode. Timmy makes it okay to litter, and so the animals try to kill him, and they just lazily throw in the Yugo Batinians at the end to fix their problem out of nowhere. Just, just nothing. Sparky has become a hit internet celebrity from his epic feel videos. 
Pretty sure you're not supposed to reveal fairies, but alright. Timmy wishes his mom would make a hit internet video. Which, of course, Mr. Crocker finds, and believes that she's a monster wanting to capture her. Once again, I just don't know what I meant to get out of this. Is there any kid out there who would respond better to this than the originals? I don't mean to be so, the stuff I grew up with is better because I don't get it anymore as an adult, but it just comes off so lame. Even as a kid, I would have hated this. Alright, who in the fucking staff loves Spoop this much? Jesus Christ. Spoop is given a scary godchild. Thought they didn't get god kids. He's taken care of Vicky. You know, not a child. One of my former owners was a clown. Either that or he was just a guy who liked to wear makeup on Saturday nights. Why? I get the thought process and wanting to give Vicky the same kind of magic powers that Timmy has access to, but they did that in ways that made a lot more sense early on. Like with the wristwatch or even channel chasers. It was always her finding his stuff, not getting her own. If anything, I wish we had the same episode with a new kid instead of Foop and Vicky. The world is always influenced by Timmy's wishes in some way. So what if Timmy's life started getting shaken up by some random kid who was wishing just like him? Like Remy, where'd he go? This comes off as such a lazy episode. It's not terrible or anything, but it's exactly what you think it is. They try capture him. Again. They get help from Crocker. You did this already. I hit this. Sparky versus her dog Doidle. You know, the, it was right there. They probably don't even remember she has a dog. God, I hate the way they rounded out everyone's feet now. I liked how pointy they were. It's such a small change, but it makes them look way worse. The show had such a literal edge to it in its early seasons. It's so sanitized now. We're spellementary school with Poof and... Foop having to take care of an egg. Again, we're just at the point where it's a bunch of generic sitcom plots. They just gotta make sure the egg doesn't break, with Foop doing just that and replacing it with an evil one. Hijinks ensue, except no, the episode ends after he does that wonderful. They keep making such a big deal about Foop being bad during Spellementary School and getting punished for it, but I thought it was a school for honing your magic. He's an anti-fairy, what do you expect him to do? Chechu Betcha starts catching wind of everything Timmy's wishing for, and so he's seen as crazy and fired, with Mr. Turner becoming the new anchor, ruining the time in the process. This is one of the most forgettable episodes of the series. Who cares about Chechu Betcha? You can't just now, nine seasons in, want to do something more with your character who has only ever consisted of the same gag repeated ad nauseum. He talks like a news anchor, that's it, please laugh. <laughs> Okay, that is the greatest out of context title ever. I like the episode where Timmy wishes he was emo. What? You will love her! Love is an empty emotion in this black hole we call life. Timmy wants to try a bunch of different personalities to impress his crush. Not Trixie. Who's Trixie? Timmy likes Missy. You know, Missy, she's always been here, what do you want to buy? Wait, is that Trixie from the episode where Timmy turns into a girl? Probably didn't even know that and just saw the model sheet land on. I don't know, I feel like they've lost that cynical edge they had early on. This whole world beating down on Timmy. Now it's just written like any other baby show. I don't know, it's hard to describe, but if you watch it, you'll know what I mean. I've always liked you. Do you like me? <laughs> Anyways, it's just Bedazzled starring Brendan Fraser. It's fine, but doesn't feel like the Fairly Odd Parents. There's been a buildup of fairy dust from Timmy's wishes, and so he can't use magic anymore until he gets rid of it, sending his parents off to the fairy spa while they clean. This episode sucks. One of the weakest. Just nothing to say about it. Timmy feels bad for his dad leading such a boring life, and so wishes he was a cool secret agent. Imagine action-packed, but if it didn't commit to the style and starred a much worse character. I liked it when Mr. and Mrs. Turner were just too obsessed with each other to pay attention to Timmy. That's why he got fairies. Not that they were bumbling oafs. That's not specific to this episode, it's just been on my mind for the past couple seasons with how often they're being featured now. This is a decent episode compared to the rest of the season, but nothing compared to even the worst of the early stuff.
Cosmo gets a device that swaps Sparky and Wanda's brains. Right around to when Mr. and Mrs. Turner get invited out to the Bucks of Plenty Country Club. My jaw dropped when we saw fucking Remy and his parents again. I couldn't believe they remembered him. It's all just taking decent ideas though and doing nothing cool with it. Remy has like three lines. Timmy just tries to make sure everyone stays on their best behavior before he gets kicked out of the club and has to disguise himself to get back in. I like the ending where he defends his mom and dad. This is one of the better ones of this season, even if that's not saying much, but I wish they'd return to some plots with Timmy's rivals that aren't the same four characters over and over. Wanda and Sparky don't even switch back by the end. Timmy's dad's boss is coming over for dinner, but after being impressed by what's his name the dog, he wants to take Sparky for himself, Timmy handing him over with the intent on having him poof home when he's not around. That was a nice thing you two did for your dad! It was no big deal, Wanda. Besides, what could possibly go wrong? By the time he actually gets him, there's only like four minutes left to do anything with it. Not that it even picks up by then. I like his dad feeling guilty for giving away his kid's dog, but that's about it. No, you just had some orange chicken on your cheek. Ooh, did you just talk? No. Okay. 31. It's always about the fucking parents, Jesus. No, he literally wandered the streets bawling his eyes out. Probably because he was dressed as a man-woman. <laughs> What? Timmy learns that one of his ancestors was involved in the finding of Dim's deal, and so wishes back to see his great-great-grandfather to write a report on him for school. He changes the past and makes his family rich, which unknowingly turns the rest of the time to shit. It's fine. Wait. Is that? Cosmo creates his own board game called Cosmonopoly, and everyone shrinks trying to play to chase Timmy's dad who fell in it. Timmy, it's not like if we don't, someone's gonna throw the game in a wood chipper. Listen up! I usually like episodes about characters playing board games, it's more common than you'd think. But this is just nonsense for the sake of nonsense. It's got fun visuals, but with it being Cosmo's game, we have to just hear him talking for majority of it. And by god, it makes me want to put my ears through a wood chipper. <laughs> Remember that episode where Cosmo became a superhero for the Tarn? Well, now we have an episode where Sparky becomes a superhero for the Tarn. Really makes me realize that there's literally zero difference between the two of them. This is just an incredibly worse version of that episode, where they're seen as a hero for a bit, but then ruined the Tarn by accident. And that one wasn't even that good to begin with. I'm running out of adjectives for shit. Timmy wishes Sparky was a human so he could get into places only humans can, but it's sad when everyone else wants to hang out with him too. And so Jorgen punishes him for this by turning Timmy into a dog, giving him one hour to fix things. Oh no! There's a dining room table in the road! I'll swear to hit that guy in the cowboy hat instead! I hate that they can't unwish this because Sparky loves being human. So lame. This is a neat idea, I guess, but they don't do much with it. Just Sparky giving up his human form so Timmy can live. I feel like if they just set this switcheroo up earlier on, it could have been fine. Instead of leaving it to the last couple minutes, there's no time left to do anything. Dog Day Afternoon from Season 1. Timmy turns into the dog like two minutes in. That gives you a whole like nine minutes to do fun stuff with that. Here it happens like seven or eight minutes in. There's no time. Okay, this episode has to be good with a title like that. Timmy wishes that Mr. Crocker could just disappear, which accidentally turns him invisible, not giving him the chance to catch Timmy with his fairies despite already having met them multiple times. <gasps> you can talk? No. You're just hysterical from having seen a ghost. You've made this joke a million times, I get it, you don't care. The issue is they can't undo it because magic doesn't affect invisible teachers, that's the quote. This is a shit one. The episode where Timmy turns invisible was much better. Sorry I'm late. No point in getting dressed anymore when you're invisible. Ah! The title's making a lot more sense. Timmy's dad befriends Mr. Crocker and they make a deal with each other. If Crocker kills Dinkelberg, then his dad will give him Timmy's fairies. Just mixing and matching characters at this point. Crocker realizes Dinkelberg is actually a nice guy, and Mr. Turner is incompetent. So, you know, exactly what you think would happen happens. I'm sick of Crocker, I'm sick of Mr. Turner. I got so tired of these at this point that I went back to season one and watched a few of them, and Jesus Christ, it is night and fucking day. Remember when this show was about Timmy just learning life lessons and growing up? I know you couldn't do that forever, but just something in that VN. I hate this. A 
Oh wow, they've come back to that Timmy duplicating himself thing, just like in the Oh Yeah cartoon short. That's cool. No, like genuinely. And tax loopholes are closed to reduce the deficit. I threw that in to keep it real. So the Planet of the Dads return again. With Timmy going up there for a Take Your Kid to Work Day with President Dad, making clones of himself so he can be with all of them. I like where they go with it, honestly. All the Timmy's realizing they don't get fairies and wanting Cosmo and Wanda for themselves. So basically, it's just the same episode as the one that introduced the dads with them wanting a mom, but with Timmy instead. I feel kind of bad leaving all those Timmy's back on the planet of the dads without fairies. How can I make it up to them? I have a better idea. Nobody interrupted you. Why'd you say it like that? Was also shocked to see them bring back the villain from the Skipping School episode. It's weird, this felt like it could have come from like season 7 or something. Still nothing amazing, but better than the rest of this shit. Top of the list for season 9. When did this become about me? That's what I'm saying. Crocker is looking back at some of his biggest regrets on home video, and realizes that his home security recorded him having fairies as a kid. Thought he already knew that. Like, he literally said everybody knew that. But here they show that Jorgen took them away when he turned 11? You had a whole special about this. I got a rock. That's cause you're a victim, man. People pick up on that. Not only that, but he apparently had Sparky too. What is this? This is just dog shit, mind the pun. Him trying to figure out what Sparky's trigger word is that'll help him relocate his old fairies who live with Sparky. I hate this one. Do these unfunny Crocker episodes all you want, but don't go back and change what happened in the older ones. The word underpants is not that funny. Remember when I said the approach for these new characters was, Great! Now we can have an episode where they meet this character! Sparky meets Catman. Oh no, Catman thinks he's his arch nemesis. Because Cat. Here's the shite! I caught a rug and a little something else at Reuben and Saul's bris! Really needed a circumcision joke, huh? Catman also just lives in a retirement home now, it's kinda sad. It is nice seeing him again though, it's been a long time in retrospect. He was in like every other episode at one point. Although, I gotta say, he's not even voiced by Adam West anymore. Wasn't that like, the whole point of his character even existing? It's not bad, but it feels like a caricature of his former character, who was already a caricature of Batman. Going near the top of the list, but that's because the rest has been so fucking bad. Mr. Turner, of course, wants to start a neighborhood watch group to find the person who robbed their house. This group consists of him, Timmy, and Mr. Crocker, because of course. Timmy's dad and Mr. Crocker have, like, the same outfit. Wait a second, so does Cosmo. This guy's a hack! Everyone wants to get rid of his dad after being a nuisance throughout the town, with Timmy taking matters into his own hands to try and help him find the robber. By that point, it isn't that bad, but that's because it actually has a direction that isn't just them aimlessly driving around. This one's shit. Surprise, surprise. Timmy wishes that his family could be perfect to rival the Dinklebergs and win an award. My name is Avalanche now. <gasps> He's so perfect he talks. I like the design Timmy has during this, it's pretty funny, but the rest is just whatever. He realizes that being perfect is hard work to keep up with, and they just quit. Great. Wait, where the fuck did Poof go? Sparky falls in love with Dinkelberg's dog, but Timmy's dad won't allow them to be together. It's always the same characters doing the same shit. Timmy wishes his dad liked the dog, which makes him in love with the dog. And now Cosmo and Wanda can't undo it because true love. But, you know, if you want to talk about the rules, pretty sure there was one that also stated you couldn't wish people would love stuff. This is just terrible from the concept alone. I didn't need a bestiality episode. Timmy's dad has a woman meeting with him, Timmy, Mr. Crocker, and Cosmo. Nobody cares he's here. Nope, I'm a fairy! Ha! Good one! Your friend's a real card turner! <laughs> Timmy wishes all the women in the universe would disappear for a day. Remember the Valentine's Day episode where they did the exact same thing? They realize they need women to live because all men are idiots and slobs. We already did this, and it wasn't even good then! Oh wow, Jorgen's back. It's been a while since they actually focused on fairy stuff. Ooh, 
Oh, hello. Who's your beefy buddy? This is Jorgen. How many times can we do this? Timmy wishes for a money tree that results in Jorgen being fired for breaking the rules. Pretty sure he's done that plenty of times. And so they try to find a new job that he likes. Again, sitcom. Even at its peak, The Fairly Odd Parents was never that funny of a show, so these ones just trying to be silly gag after gag always bore me. It's nice seeing one Decimo again after forever, but that does not save this one at all. Crocker finds one of Sparky's snacks which has magic in it, and so orders a million of them, with Timmy and Sparky trying to figure out how to bake that many. It sucks. What do you want me to say? Like, no, seriously, it's bad. It's just, it's just fucking dreadful. There's nothing I can say about it. It's creepy seeing Crocker without his glasses. That was the only one thought I had watching it. And, and Timmy's dad inflation. That, that, that too, unfortunately. You know, I started watching the later half of the season with a couple friends, and it made it so much more bearable, just being able to laugh at how much they didn't give a shit. So Crocker makes a device that turns him into Timmy, but accidentally also fuses with his mother, trying to pass off as Timmy's future self to scare him. Cosmo and Wanda's DMV B-plot is pointless and unfunny. I'm just, I'm just so sick of it. It comes off so fucking lazy. Remember Vicky? I remember Vicky. Remember when Crocker was like, Timmy's school antagonist, and Vicky was his home antagonist, and then they had all the fairy world villains? I remember. Cosmo lost his wand in the park, and so they have to get it back before Jorgen fires him. But oh no, Crocker overheard and wants to find it first. So, Turner does have fairies, and one of them lost his wand. He already knew they existed. If you want to do this so much, so badly, then just make it canon that he find out they're real, so they don't need to do this every time. Kill me. I like the little Scooby-Doo parody, but that's it. It's just one big wild goose chase where it keeps flying away and they have to catch it. With a bunch of different people grabbing it and making their own wishes, just filling out 11 minutes. I don't care. You know, I was at like season 8 and thinking to myself, you know what, I really haven't been all that negative so far compared to other ranking videos, but they are more than making up for it here. You know what's the worst part? This episode's 52 seasons long. Vicky, thank God, wants to force Timmy to help her become an actress. Once again, it's just a bunch of disconnected gags about her wanting to reenact movie scenes with him getting injured in the process. This episode is boring and not very good and is going near the top of the list for season 9. Because by God, it is something different. Also, I didn't mention it till now, but they end most episodes now with a little black screen gag, but it's always just them repeating a Liam joke from the episode. You know, wasn't funny the first time. Timmy's parents flush the fish down the toilet. Timmy along with them. Just poof us back home. Sorry, Timmy, but we lost our wands and poof lost his rattle when we were flushed. Yep, of course you did. Ratman comes to help them. It's just Catman, but he's a rat. It's 4 a.m. I'm falling asleep. Please help me. Glad to know season 9 ends with 7 double length episodes in a row, just what we needed. So Poof has finally graduated to full on fairy godparent. So now he's taking care of Mrs. Crocker. Thought it was, thought it was just kids. What do you mean fairy god person? Don't you mean fairy god kid? No, the council has decided to appeal to a new demographic. Perfect logic. I don't know why this needed to be double the length. She just keeps making wishes to fill a void in her life. Overworking Poof and so Timmy needs to try get her to break the rules. He did it. Crocker gets transferred to Spellementary School and disguises himself to steal the kid's magic. Just what we needed, more Poof at school stories, love it. I thought he graduated last episode. Also, Poof goes through Pooferty here, where he begins to learn how to speak. Great. I want my so lame, he just sounds like an older Timmy. I got a bunch of things to say. Mom, no more strain beats. Dad, stay away from the oven. They take ages to set this thing up. Like, do we really need to spend five minutes to establish that Crocker suspects Timmy has fairies again? The rest is just Poof learning how to talk so we can warn them about Crocker. Stop trying to make Spellementary School happen. It's not going to happen. 
A lot of these longer specials are going near the bottom solely for the fact that it's the same shit, just double the length. So, you know those shitty Simpsons and Family Guy episodes where they just tell three random non-canon stories strung together with a theme? Just what the Fairly Odd Parents needed. I've talked in my other rankings about how much I hate these anthology type of episodes, and this is no exception. I don't get why every show needs to do this after so long. It comes off so desperate for ideas. Me too! I'm starving! I'm suing! Pretty sure that is the final speaking role Edge and Chester have in this show, and that wasn't even Edge's voice actor, it was just some guy. They sit around the campfire and tell three scary Y7 stories. Spooky. The scariest thing about this episode is that it took four people to write. Oh, okay, actually I like the idea for this one a lot. With it being their anniversary, Cosmo and Wanda go back to check out some of their previous god kids. I remember asking for this ages ago. Obviously, you know, being season 9 and all. They don't execute on it super well. Timmy interacts with the timeline and ends up screwing up the future. In this case, just a bunch of stuff gets uninvented like the wheel. I wish that focused more on the kids themselves instead of just setting up how it creates conflict later, but this is for sure the best of all of season 9 we've seen so far. It's nice getting to see more of their past. Even then, it's just, just fine. Cosmo can't remember whether or not he turned in one of his tests, which means he may not be even allowed to be a fairy godparent in the first place, and so they've got to find proof of who stole it. Weird to put two past episodes in a row, but I like seeing Cosmo and Wanda in their fairy academy. It's something new that actually makes sense. Honestly, I liked this one even more than the last. Where have these been all season? So, remember like three episodes ago where we saw them telling three random spooky stories? I bet they do the same exact thing, except now they're retelling three fairy tales like what every single show ever does. They tell such classics as Cosmorella, The Three Little Fairies, and Snow Wanda and the Seven Fairies. Great. Oh yeah, Poof Talking has been carried over to this one. He just casually speaks in full English now. Get ready for that. Anyways, no. Because we needed yet another character, Foop introduces us to Anti-Sparky, so that the Turners will get so pissed off that they'll want to get rid of him. They then unleash a bunch of anti-pets onto the world, and Crocker needs to help them fix things because, of course, he does. How about something a little bit more traditional, like an anti-dog? You know, man's worst friend. I love how this is just a worse ripoff of Family Guy's Norm Macdonald death. You know, uh, with that, on brighter news, Sparky's gone. No, really. After receiving such backlash from fans for being annoying, they decided to silently remove him for the next season without any explanation. Not shedding a tear. Sparky! I thought I'd never see you again! Nope. Now you'll never see him again. That was the worst one. You, you probably tell by me not doing the YouTuber voice, but that was fucking dog shit. I feel like every time I'd watch a new one, I'd turn to my friend and say, what happened in the last one? And we could all just not recollect what the plot was. The laziness here is at an all time high, and I usually don't like using that word when describing people's writing on, on work like this, but it just is. It's either Crocker or Mr. Turner or Sparky over and over again, and it's fucking mind numbing. I'm done. I'm done with it after this. I'd been so curious about how bad the show was for years because I just refused to watch these seasons, so I'm glad to just, just have, in my mind, just have solid evidence that shows their fucking dog shit. Would you be surprised to find out that, uh, the worst is yet to come? <laughs> Okay, so this is undoubtedly the biggest change made to the show in its entire run. When Butch was asked to introduce a new character for the 10th season, we got Chloe Carmichael. This perfect girl who has to share Timmy's fairies because of a fairy shortage. Yep. She's brilliant, motivated, and won the Nobel Prize for niceness. In other words, she's the polar opposite of Timmy Turner. Thanks for making that obvious. Chloe is perfect. Everybody loves her except for Timmy. You may be asking why she even gets fairies then, since, you know, they're for miserable kids and all. Especially during a shortage, you want to make sure you ration those well. Well, it turns out that sometimes when she tries to help people, she messes up. 
starting to see why you have fairy shortages. You give these out to everyone with a fucking sob story. This kind of character makes me very worried for the upcoming CGI reboot. Nickelodeon had like a giant leak recently, and one of the things that got released to the public was every single episode description from season one of the new show. And the main character comes off like just a reskin of Chloe. Like, I don't know, kids just are kind of bratty at times. But that was fine because it was about Timmy learning to grow up. I'm sick of these perfect main characters who just want to spread love and peace across Earth. It's so boring. They also redid the intro to accommodate for her with really terrible sign mixing, and they just reused clips from the episode instead of doing something unique like the old one. This is depressing. Sophie! Duck lips! <laughs> It's just 22 minutes of Timmy being a spoiled brat and not wanting to share, and getting continuously punished for it. He's literally told, accept it or die. Also, uh, again, Sparky's gone now. And guess what else? So is Poof. Yeah, nowhere to be seen. Wonderful. One step forward, a million steps back. At least we still have Foop. They knew they couldn't write episodes without him anymore. New character. You know what that means? Now we need an episode where she meets Catman. Hillbillies are awesome! They park on the lawn, never have to brush their teeth, and they can take their own cousins to the school dance! At this point in the series, Timmy has become the type of average kid who just wants to sit on his phone all day and play apps. Great. It's Cosmo and Wanda's anniversary, so Cosmo's gotta make her a gift while they visit Catman's retirement home for his anniversary party. It's just Chloe bumming around with them all day and chasing after Cosmo. It's so overstuffed. They bring Timmy's dad into it. They bring Crocker in as a superhero. There was no focus here at all. Oh yeah, in the first episode of the season, Chloe made Timmy's dad rich. They for some reason have decided to stick with this throughout. Timmy wishes to make his dad mayor for the day. He does exactly what you think. Turns the time to shit. Hilarious. You know, usually there was like a point to these wishes. It wasn't generally just wanting to do something for the sake of it. Really makes this stuff feel so directionless. And Chloe adds nothing here, she's just another voice of reason. Sparky was another Cosmo, and Chloe is another Wanda. Yeah, keep trying, I'm sure it'll work out eventually. Also, I love that in the credits, they still kept in the pictures of Sparky the dog. My god, they did not care. <laughs> Timmy is yet again afraid of his dad screwing up their Squirrely Scout trip, and so Chloe joins to help him out. It's just the same as the one where Dinkleberg does better than him, and the one where Mrs. Turner just does better than him. I miss when we went like seven seasons without one of these camping episodes, now we get one a season. They can barely even come up with one idea for these, why do they keep revisiting it? You know, Butch Hartman always said they got rid of Edge and Chester because they wanted to do new stuff with other new kid characters, but all these new ones have boring designs and no personality. Everything I liked about this show has been gradually stripped away season after season until we have this strange shell of its former self. Oh my god, dude, I'm just realizing we are on episode 268 right now. Can you imagine when that was like a third of the way into the Simpsons video? Holy shit, why the fuck did I do that? Apparently Timmy and Chloe share the same birthday. Wonderful. And so they work Cosmo and Wanda to the bone competing for the better party. He's become such a spoiled baby. His character was meant to be growing up and being better, not turning into more of a child. Oh my god, there she is! Someone find the model sheet! This is the best episode so far, at least the wishes are visually creative. So Chloe wishes that her favorite cartoon characters, the Fair Bears, would come to life. Again, Baby Show. I like the one with the bad Christopher Walken impression, but I hate their designs, they're so ugly. Your smile turned upside down. Maybe you should wear the happy hat too! They try to have this big twist where it's revealed they're actually creepy and evil, getting furious at Timmy for being a brat. Neat idea, and I like that it mainly focuses on a Timmy and Wanda pairing, but it takes way too long to get into it. Especially just randomly bringing Crocker in to fix everything by the end? No thanks. Are you excited for these amazing characters to return later? I am. So, remember that hilarious loser episode from season 8? Well, then knew you wanted a sequel. Well, bye sport! We're off to the fairy world Iwan store to line up for the new Iwan! 
Bond. It's actually weird seeing Dark Laser again, it's been a long time. But each of these characters have been used ad nauseum. Remember when they would introduce new villains? It's just the same thing, except Chloe is here now. Also, Timmy's just brain dead at this point, he can't even dress himself or walk without his fairies. That was seen as like, you know, going too far in Fairy Idol, you know, that beast, the whole plot around him being too reliant on them. Just gone for a cheap gag, cool. Chloe is person of the year and has so much stuff to do that she can't see the nurse about her rash. So now she needs to find a way to de-stress before she, like, dies or whatever. She wishes to be a slacker, but the town is destroyed without her sensible self around. Mm-hmm. That's all I have to say. Hey, if you want me to say more, then might I suggest you watching the episode? Yeah, that's what I thought. Timmy's dad wants to find this elusive fish to win the fishing tournament. There's no Chloe here at all, which makes it feel a lot more like a season 7 or 9 episode. Although it makes me wonder- oh wait, never mind, I was writing this while watching, she just showed up. I like the little back and forth rivalry going on with Timmy and Cosmo versus Wanda and Chloe. Her trying to protect the fish and him trying to get it. This is probably the second best so far, honestly. Timmy and Chloe seem to work better when they're at each other's throats. Their strong personalities don't actually work terribly against each other. Mr. Crocker gets a bunch of these endangered Crockeroos and wants to use them to take over the world after Chloe wishes there were way more. In unrelated news, a small man and woman with green and pink hair are being chased by a skeletal pirate! So, uh, you saw him, huh? This is a lame idea. There's no reason for them to look like Crocker at all. They don't even share his personality. They just knew people liked Crocker and that he had a funny design, and so thought it would be a good visual. It's not. Again, I'm also so sick of them doing this missing wand shit with Cosmo and Wanda in every episode. Oh no, they buried their wands off screen. Now they can't wish the crockeroos away. Oh no. <laughs> Mr. Crocker, again, gets the fairy flu from Cosmo. And so now he has temporary magical powers. I can't believe it took them 10 seasons to bring back the fairy flu from season 0, although I imagine it is 100% just a coincidence. It's just another going inside someone's body episode to look for the sickness. You know that plot every single show ever is done? Some crazy person out there, please make a tally of all these generic plots and watch shows I've ranked so far that have done it. So far we got Simpsons, Spongebob, and now the Fairly Odd Parents doing this. Oh boy, a 22 minute special, I missed these! So Cosmo and Wanda decide to spend the night at Chloe's as booby birds. Cuz booby. I want them to be flightless booby birds! Flightless what now? Flightless boobies! Do you find the word booby funny? No? Well congratulations on getting through grade school. We also meet her parents for the first time, who are also perfect and wacky, so enthralling. So what if like... Her parents were super strict in making sure she's perfect all the time, and she gets Cosmo and Wanda to give her some reprieve from having to uphold these expectations so much. But I guess then if they did that, then not every character could be wacky and random. I understand that would be going too far, Butch. Her parents take the boobies back to the rainforest, and so Timmy and Chloe have to use their wands to find them. This is another decent one for what it is, just wish Crocker wasn't the villain again. The anti-fairies are having their evil power sucked away because of how nice Chloe is, and so Foop disguises himself as a kid to try and turn her evil. I'm super irritating! You certainly are. You're the worst! Everyone hates you. You said it, not me. Her design is fucking hideous, why is the moth pushed to the side so much? This episode's shit. He turns everyone on Chloe, oh no. Lame mind control aspect is also dumb, and Foop just randomly gives up at a certain point because the episode needs to end. Why did they go from having like one or two writers to five or six? Does it really take that many people to write an 11 minute cartoon? I feel like your idea, no matter what it is, is gonna get muddied going through so many people. There he is, there he is! Oh, I missed that. Chloe doesn't believe in aliens, and so Timmy takes her to meet Mark Chang. But after 40 minutes of drawn out gags, she exposes Mark to the world. As an eye, they've gotta get him away from the government. This episode is fine by season 10 standards. Ending sucks though, it's so contrived. Now all the humans know about Mark, but agree not to make a big deal about it. Cool, there's another rule, just, just gone. Mm -hmm. 
Vicky being in the opening theme makes no sense anymore. She's barely tertiary at this point. Dark Laser returns again, 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 again. Uh. Where after saving the life of Flipsy, he promises to protect Chloe and Timmy from danger. I hate that they make this about his relationship with Foop and Mr. Crocker again. Crocker's plan was never to destroy Timmy specifically, it was to get his fairies and take over the world. Foop is a fairy. Where's the Abracatastrophe Scope team up? Why does every character need to be incompetent? This one isn't terrible, it just could have been done a lot better. With a title like that, I thought it was gonna be about Timmy's mom. You know, Timmy's mom, remember her? Where the fuck did she go? But nope, it's actually about who else but Crocker, with Chloe wishing she could invent a holographic girlfriend for him. Her design is atrocious, but I do like them doing a Crocker version of the Vickies and Love song from ages ago, but that doesn't make it any better just because I can recognize some audio. Follows the same formula of that one too. Timmy gets sick of them, although this time he has way less of a reason to be annoyed. These season 10 episodes have improved, but it's not saying much. Her turning into a monster makes no sense by the end. <laughs> Chloe and Timmy both have jobs the other wants to do, and so they wish to switch places. Yeah! There are strangers with wings in the garage! Of course there are. You know, usually they would do this to show each other how hard the other's life is, but here they just get annoyed at what they're doing to each other's bodies, but at least they're able to reverse it through. Oh! Funny story! With my mind blown and all, I confused our wands with the garbage! Of course you did. It makes no sense. Chloe is pissed that Timmy's used her body to eat a bunch of burgers, but they switched in the first place so that he could do a burger eating contest for her. This one sucks. It's a shame. I usually like these plots. Well, it's Danny. Cool. Timmy and his dad enter a film festival, and so Catman comes to star in it, titled Nuts and Dangerous. Do the thing where Timmy took Jimmy into the Crimson Chin comic book, and he got his own superhero persona, but with Chloe. And then Timmy gets jealous that her character is more popular than Cleft, but then, I don't know, she finds out that she's only being pushed so much in the comic for, like, and so Chloe gives up her role because she doesn't want to just be liked for being a girl. I don't know. This one is whatever for the most part, but I actually like the ending where his dad apologizes for putting Timmy through everything. Very out of character. Totally Chloe! You're fired! Oh. Hoagie time! Pick one joke to end on, you don't need fucking 40. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention it last episode, but the Fairly Odd Parents has now been officially moved from airing on Nickelodeon to airing on Nicktoons. And if you know anything about Nick, it's that's where they send their cartoons to die. It's like when Cartoon Network airs their stuff on Boomerang, no hope. So while the show was relatively popular, even in these later seasons, from here the ratings nosedive. And as we're gonna soon see, Butch went into full-blown panic mode, trying to keep this sucker alive for as long as he possibly could. More Fairy Con stuff. You'd think it would focus on Chloe going for the first time, but of course not. They're not the main characters, Crocker is. I like that he shows he has physical proof of Cosmo and Wanda existing. Do I even need to say it? This episode sucks, I'm sick of Crocker, they have done nothing interesting with him in like a hundred episodes. Hi Timmy, hi Chloe, hi weird kids with wings. Is that like me bashing my head? Chloe really loves this movie, The Hungry Games. 2017 was built late for that, wasn't it? Either way, Timmy wishes that Dim's deal would turn into the setting of the movie, so she can fuck around for a while and do nothing. So, what if Timmy is sick of being seen as a kid and juvenile, and so he wishes his life were more serious, but because he's a kid, his only frame of reference is those crappy teen dramas like Riverdale, so we see him live through a Liam CW version of the show and he's trying to break out of it? I don't know. It's spring break! With Chloe wishing the Turners and the Carmichaels were both camping at the same place. Their parents' ideals clash with nature versus technology. You know, Timmy's a lot less average when his parents are literal billionaires rolling around in this ginormous RV. This one is boring, I don't care for it at all. They should have gotten to the point a lot sooner than eight minutes in. So, remember that episode where Timmy wishes he was older at the carnival? Well, now it's Chloe wishing she were older at the carnival. I imagine this episode has a lot of fan art. We've been making vines like all the cool kids are doing these days. 
<laughs> okay. That's the wrong kind of, uh, uh... Oh, wow, look, that's episode one, Older Timmy. That's really cool. Distracts me from how this rule makes no sense. Because Chloe wishes she were older, they'll lose Cosmo and Wanda. Even Timmy, who is still a kid. It focuses more on her being a parent with her mom and dad becoming 10, and her realizing how hard it is to take care of kids. This is also when Timmy's dad somehow got more brain dead, having the literal mind of a child. I hate her parents, but this is overall the best episode yet. Mainly because it's bumming off an older idea, but I like the twist at the end that her parents now have Cosmo and Wanda, on the concept of Timmy getting to sit back and watch someone else go through the wishes he used to make. They really are making up for the absence of Catman here, with him living with Timmy. And so Chloe and he disguise themselves as villains to make him look good in front of his ex. I'm history! <laughs> well, that was an epic fail! That's not even what the plot ends up being, they completely divert by the end, with him finding a wand and turning into the real Catman, him having to fight an actual villain who's just a lame Mickey Mouse parody. There is so much going on here, it never takes a break, it's attempting joke after joke with no room to breathe. That's typical for this series later on, I'm aware, but it's like each other dozen idiot characters are fighting for screen time at all times. Going near the bottom. Okay, so, wanna know what's worse than one Crocker? I bought two Crockers. Yep, they added in his nephew, who is just a kid version of him. He's already in every other episode. <laughs> Hello, Tony. Now they have an excuse to just involve Crocker in the kid episodes, with him learning how to make friends, and Timmy and Chloe trying to be nice to him. Now he's got to choose between his new friends and capturing their fairies. This one is fine overall, but I hate the concept. Did we really need another Crocker? It's just the same character with a higher pitched voice, just dreadful. <laughs> Aw oh shit, here it comes. So, from what Butch told me, Nickelodeon wanted to cancel the show with the previous episode. What a finale, I know. But this is around when Butch was working on Bunsen as a Beast, which was done in Flash, and so he convinced Nickelodeon to let him make around 10 more episodes if they switched to Flash animation because of how much cheaper it is. And the result is this. I like Flash animation, it can look really great, but this was clearly rushed and done on a shoestring budget. The original was so fast-paced, focusing on strong posing, but now it's way too bouncy. There's too much secondary animation, it all looks tweened. It's an eyesore. You're the scout leader! This is a good hearing aid! I can hear Scooter's talk! You're not wearing a hearing aid! The writing got worse, I don't know why that happened. Because of the lack of budget, the first four minutes of this episode takes place over one backdrop. Either way, there's another squirrely scout meetup, and this one takes them to space, so they can plant a flag in space. It sucks, and it's only gonna get worse. With me at the controls, nothing can possibly go wrong. I'm even donating my toys to charity, including my favorite doll, Gender Neutral Jessie. I love you. It's summertime, with Chloe going crazy when her perfect planner side starts to clash with her side that just wants to be a kid. Thought you weren't allowed to do that. This one's terrible, one of the worst. Nothing happens, there's no central focus at all. Just trying to do wacky fun stuff with her feeling bad the whole time. Who gives a fuck? They made a rig for Baby Crocker, but not Edge or Chester. It's basically just a school version of the evil cute alien one from a long time ago, with Chloe wishing the school's pet rabbit was free, with it actually being a monster. It's trash, I've got nothing left to say. Does anybody like these episodes? <music> Chloe introduces Timmy to her Keel Patch Kids collection, with her trying to steal the last one she needs from Timmy's dad. Where the wedding of the season is about to take place between Tommy Tomato and Princess Pineapple. I gotta say, it's a pretty weird scene. Not really. Remember when his dad wanted to fuck the dog? It's bad, surprise surprise. Best Flash episode so far, but that is not anywhere near a good thing. The weird Christmas Carol parody at the end is very dumb. And put on your flower girl dress, we're having another wedding! No words, seriously. Timmy and Chloe turn into mermaids to go to Atlantis for a school project, with Cosmo and Wanda losing the power in their wands, and instead of finding a way to fix it, they have to stop the Atlanteans from killing Mr. Turner. After a whole bunch of nothing, that is. I don't know why his dad needed to take this episode over, it's terrible. Running away again! Don't forget to call Beef, not Park! Oh, 
Okay, so that happened. Erm, um, so, uh, that just happened. She sure does. Chloe wishes she were the hall monitor because of course she does, and lets the power go to her head. Why is there some mandate that states every single hall monitor episode needs to follow the same exact plot? It goes exactly how you think it would. She learns not to let it go to her head. That's it. That's all. Crocker's mother is leaving for a bit, and he's told he's not allowed to take Foop or Dark Laser over, and so he enlists Timmy and Chloe to help him learn how to have fun. He just casually talks to Cosmo and Wanda here. Oh, you're coming, all right! It's just a bunch of people crashing the party like Timmy's parents, and then Foop and Dark Laser come to destroy him for not inviting them, but right as they come, everything is solved through the use of words. Hilarious. I just don't get it. The piecing is seriously off. Every episode now takes like six minutes to get into the actual plot, leaving there no room to actually do anything cool or funny with it. School is cancelled for the day, and so Chloe starts freaking out that she's not learning anything. Wow, that's a whole new level of Carmichael Cray Cray. Ugh. The park set reminded me of when they did a crossover with Bunsen as a beast around this time, but... Sadly, it's considered part of Bunsen and not fairly odd parents. Sad times all around. Just go watch my video on it. Spoiler warning, uh, it sucks. Garzone, I'll take Frank Sinatra's car with low fat guac. Whoa, floating customer. Mm hmm. Mr. and Mrs. Turner are going on a knitting cruise to renew their vows, taking Timmy and Chloe with them for no reason. Wanda and Cosmo are going to do the same, except Cosmo is going to let one Decimo do them instead of him, because what is his character? It's dreadful, what'd you expect? Seeing Cosmo and Wanda get their own B story made me realize how severely underused they are now, they're just here to grant wishes. It even just becomes another Catman episode by the end, it's just random things happening now, it never focuses on one character, it's one of the worst here. We see Tootie, Trixie, and Edge for one single shot of this one, which stunned me, even if they are literally just copy-pasted PNGs from their model sheets and don't move or speak. It's the best we get now. It's the Dim's Deal talent show, although 75% of the thing takes place before the talent show. This whole entire episode literally takes place within one room. They are running out of assets. It's... drumroll please... bad. This is the worst episode of the show. They were so close to ending it, but they had to throw this right in at the last minute. It has the most shit wrong with it. I don't know how Butch Hartman could look at this and think it's fine. Chloe's babysitting Timmy, and his dad for the day, he literally wears a helmet. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Poof returns. Gets to meet Chloe, Cosmo doesn't even recognize him. Poop is here because of course he is. Although he's not even a villain, he's just chilling with them for the day. Oh, uh, let's see, Timmy's dad is just casually around the fairies and never questions it. Vicky comes in as the villain halfway through and is threatening everyone, including the fairies, with a chainsaw in front of Timmy's dad. Scratch that, also threatening his dad. This episode literally has zero plot. It is the definition of no substance. If you want any idea of how Fairly Odd Parents is in the later seasons, or just think I'm being too harsh right now, sit down and watch this episode. Go, do it, now. All of this just brings up the question, why was this one 22 minutes? I brought some friends home. Well, one friend and one harbinger of doom. It's gonna be huge. <laughs> it's the return of the Fair Bears. Of all the things you could decide to rig. This time they're teaming up with Mr. Crocker to take Timmy Dine and get them back home. That is after half the time is taken up with more Scott stuff. It's just nothing, I don't get it. Why bring them back at all to only feature them for like three minutes? They don't even meet Timmy until there's two minutes of the episode left. Oh wow, I can't believe it ends with a perfect 300, that's nice. So, the final episode of the entirety of the Fairly Odd Parent sees both of Timmy and Chloe's parents not letting them celebrate their friend anniversary together because they're oh so different. And so Timmy wishes that... Wait, no, there is no wish. The last episode of Fairly Odd Parents doesn't even have Timmy wishing for anything. I think that says enough.
In a few videos in the past, I used to say that if I were to sum up the Fairly Odd Parents in any way, it would be that 15% is really good, 15% is really bad, and the other 70% was just okay. And while I still stand by that, I used to phrase it in a very negative way, like 70% was just okay. But now, if someone were to ask me, I'd say 70% is okay. There's a huge difference, I'll have you know. Sure, not all these episodes are fucking bangers or anything. And when revisiting the show, I really do just check out the same 10 or so episodes every time, but the other ones that I haven't revisited since I was a kid are still pretty good for the most part. Season 1 is without a doubt my favorite. It's only got 13 episodes, but there's just some indescribable charm they never managed to recapture. But even then, season 2 through 5 are all pretty good too. Season 6 is okay, 7 is fine. Really, majority of this show isn't bad at all. At worst, it was just serviceable. But those last three seasons, man, what happened? The show has always struggled, with Nick threatening to pull a plug in it over and over again. So I imagine when it came down to the later ones, they just brought together a team that couldn't recapture that same magic and turned it into any other kid's cartoon, abusing the same two or three fan-favorite characters time and time again because they don't know what else to do. And that was extremely painful to watch. It hurts to know that these last two seasons take up a third of the show's entire run. But where does it all rank, though? That's what you really want to know. So let's do it, starting with the worst at number 300. Number 300, Certifiable Super Sitter, Fancy Schmancy, Goldie Crocs and the Three Fair Bears, Nitwits, Tardy Sauce, Crockin' in the House, Hair Razor, Dad Lantis, Space Cadet, Dimsdale's Got Talent, Chloe Rules, Summer Bummer, The Keel Patch Keeper, Fairly Odd Fairy Teals, Dimsdale Teals, School of Croc, Return of the Losers, Animal Crockers, May or May Not, Spring Breakup, Married to the Mom, Fairy Con, One Flew Over the Crocker's Nest, A Sash on a Rash, The Hungry Games, Blue Angel, Clark Laser, Cat and Mouse, Witch's Wish, Chip Off the Old Croc, Timmy's Secret Wish, Love Triangle, The Big Fairy Share Scare, When Losers Attack, Timmy Turnip, Dad Overboard, Spell Elementary School, Pledging a Doom, Girly Squirrely, Whittle Me This, Odd Pirates, Fairy Odd Pet, Man's Worst Friend, Fairly Old Parent, Scary God Couple, Love at First Bark, Desperate Without Housewives, Gone Flushing, Dustbusters, Let Sleeper Dogs Lie, Anchors Away, Force of Nature, Liam Ducks, Weirdos on a Train, Turning into Turner, Snack Attack, Dog Gone, A Boy and His Dog Boy, Catastrophe, Hero Harmed, Two and a Half Babies, Croc Blocked, is great. Viral Vidiots, The Bored Identity, Turner and Pooch, The Terrible Twosome, Jerk of All Trades, App Trap, I Dream of Cosmo, Stage Fright, Nuts and Dangerous, Marked Man, Lamb Before Timmy, Merry Wishmas, Anti Poof, Teacher's Pet, Formula for Disaster, Polter Geeks, Please Don't Feed the Turners, Croc Talk, Farm Pit, Booby Trapped, Cosmonopoly, A Perfect Nightmare, Turner Back Time, The Wand That Got Away, Dinkle Scots, Country Clubbed, Finding Emo, The Fair Bears, Fish Out of Water, Crash Nebula, Parenthoods, Dimsdale Days, Birthday Battle, Timmy the Barbarian, Hurricane, Cheese and Crockers, Nine Lives, The Boss of Me, Mycecapades, Balance of Flower, Temporary Fairy, Planet Poof, Tick and Fick, Old Man in the Sea Minus, Squirrely Puffs, Super Zero, Tons of Timmies, Dumbbell Curve, Invasion of the Dads, Power Pals, The Temp, Mother Nature, Oddball, It's a Wishful Life, Five Days of Flarg, The Past and the Furious, Betty Bye, Which Witch is Witch, Something's Fishy, So Totally Spaced Out, Wishy Washy, Birthday Bashed, King Chang, Stupid Cupid, Chicken Poofs, Operation Dinkleberg, Dabra Cadabra, Beach Bummed, No Substitute for Crazy, Open Wide and Set, Ah, Odd Squad, The Masked Magician, Go Young West Man, The Fairy Beginning, Odd Odd West, Mission Responsible, Just Desserts, Future Lost, Dread and Breakfast, The Gland Plan, Vicky Gets Fired, Cosmo Rules, Manic Mom Dad, Love at First Height, Double O Schnozmo, Crocker Shocker, Beach Blanket Bozos, Too Many Timmies, The Fairy Flu, Lights Out, Flyboy, Crocker of Gold, Meet the Odd Parents, Dream Goat, Super Humor, Smart Attack, Frenemy Mine, Talking Trash, Space Tide, Totally Space Tide, A New Squid in Time, Heal to the Chief, Twistery, Odd Jobs, Freaks and Greeks, Added Ed. 
Poof's pledge. It's I forgot to record this one. The really bad day. Truth or consequences. Party of three. Scott's honor. Nighty night. Wanda's day off. Smarty pants. Fool's day art. What's the difference? Big Wanda. Momni present. Super poof. For emergencies only. Fairly odd baby. One man band. He poofs. He scores. Tim visible. Engine blocked. Where's Wanda? Snowbind. Inspection detection. Scary godparents. Pixies Inc. Moving day. Back to the norm. Gendered spirits. Transparents. Hex schemes. The zappies. Wish fixers. Last clone. Christmas every day. The end of the university. File bald. Vicky loses her icky. Who's your daddy? Tiny Timmy. Chin up. Wishing well, food fight, bad air deck, crime wave, the grass is greener, microphony, love struck, the crimson chin meets mighty mom and dino dad, Catman meets the crimson chin, Timmy's 2D house of horror, nega Timmy, mighty mom and dino dad, lights, camera, Adam, fairy friends and neighbors, the big superhero wish, Kung Timmy, this is your wish, home wrecker, Mr. Right, operation fun, Fairy Fairy Quite Contrary, That Old Black Magic, The Big Scoop, Ruled Out, Nectar of the Odds, Sleep Over and Over, You Do, Action Packed, Most Wanted Wish, Hard Copy, Baby Fierce, Teeth for Two, Presto Chinjo, Oh Brother, Blondes Have More Fun, Just the Two of Us, Mind Over Magic, The Big Bash, Remy Rides Again, Movie Magic, The Fairly Odd Olympics, Escape from Unwish Island, Boy Toy, The Odd Couple, Ms. Dim's Deal, Shelf Life, A Bad Case of Diary, Uh, The Big Problem, Pipe Darn, The Fairly Odd Parents, Wishology, Where's the Wand, Timmy TV, Birthday Wish, A Mile in My Shoes, Deja Vu, Imaginary Gary, Dog's Day Afternoon, The Switch Glitch, Superbike, Chip Off the Old Chip, Cosmocon, That's Life, the good old days, genie meanie miny mo, hassle in the castle, a partnership, the same game, information stupor highway, jimmy timmy power hour 3, the jerkin' eaters, power mad, emotion commotion, the jimmy timmy power hour, shiny teeth, fairy idol, the boy who would be queen, the boys in the band, the secret origin of Denzel Crocker, Abracatastrophe, A Wish Too Far, Father Time, Schools Like the Musical, Jimmy Timmy Power Hour 2 and Worlds Collide, Channel Chasers. I'm glad to say I've come out of this having a lot more respect for this show than I once did, which is a lot coming from me because, you know, this is like my favorite show. But I feel like I only ever find myself being nostalgic for the same six or seven episodes, always thinking in the back of my head, was this thing ever that good? But coming out of this video, I really gotta say, I appreciate a lot of what this show tried to do. It really was like no other thing airing at the time. It was the perfect case of being at the right place at the right time. And well, yeah, it is a shame what happened to the show in its later days. Like, that honestly has been some of the worst I've ever had to do for one of these ranking videos. It was not, it was not fun. But it's nice to at least see that the show stayed at a pretty high quality for a lot longer than I remember it being. And while I can't say my expectations are high for this upcoming reboot, I'm at least interested to see them try and take this idea in a different direction, because by god, did we get it by the end of this series that they ran out of ideas. Either way, thanks for watching another one of these. If you want to check out my podcast episode that went out today where I go more in depth about that big long ranking list you just saw, and um, yeah, thanks for watching. Who knows what I'll do next, maybe Phineas and Ferb or regular show or... All the DreamWorks movies, I don't fucking know. I'll get there when I get there. For now, I'm just going to enjoy not having to watch copious amounts of, of TV for a long time. Uh, bye.